Hello everyone, I'm Rohit and I'm going to start a new series called Servizna Application Developer. A lot of people ask about this series. Uh, they have completed the Servizna Admin series and now they are looking for Servizna Application Developer series. I thought to be create a Servizna Application series with a lot of um, scripting scenario and then configuration scenario. So I have built this um, series for you guys. So if you need any documentation, any scripting help, you can go to this my website and then uh, find out this all this documentation. So you can go to this snowexpertrohit.com. Um, uh, here you can find out this service application developer and you can find out all this documentation. So first thing I'm going to talk about that um, service now application developer or service now developer is in on demand right now. It is true like uh, service now developer is on demand right now. Um, they have a lot of requirement for the service now developer and then uh, people might not know from where they should start their journey, right? So first thing is that there is some prerequisite that if you are trying to service the developer, there should be some prerequisite. The first thing is that you should complete the service now admin series or admin courses. I have created a service now admin courses for you guys separately. You can spend six hours, seven hours, and then you can understand the service now application uh, admin courses. There you'd have a what is the service now, how we can use the service now admin. Uh, what is the least form configuration other stuffs there it's a dedicated for the admin so i would recommend that go and check that maybe uh, if you want to go further study you can check others admin and courses apart from my courses uh, there are a lot of information available in youtube a lot of courses are available you can go and check there so if you have completed the service new admin courses you might be uh, completed or you might be know about the csa certification csa is the um, service now system administration certification which is very um, helpful for a admin person who started their career so you should complete the CSA certification and also if you want to start a service now developer you should know or have basic scripting knowledge it might be C, C++ or Java any of this language but you should have a basic understanding how script written or how it works so you might have knowledge in JavaScript, C, C++, whatever is that uh, scripting uh, language, but it, you should have a knowledge on that. Now, what will get a benefit from this course? So if you have completed this course, you will understand that how ServiceNow script works, where we can use the ServiceNow script and which scenario we should use the what type of script. So these things you will get that. And also you will get some application. There is a ServiceNow application developers uh, certification um, for the developer. I will get some help from uh, for the there also. Now let's talk about that. Uh, what is the uh, certification journey? So there is a now learning platform. Um, now learning. If you search in that Google, you will get the now learning. You should have an account there, and you should complete that. Welcome to service now. Then service now admin fundamentals. If you completed this, you will get uh, some cert uh, certified system administration. Uh, courses if you completed that you will get a voucher and you can give the exam for that CSA and then every year there is a Delta exam there you can give them after that you can give the service now application developer um, um, courses completed that and then you can get the voucher and you can give that um, certified application developer so this is the certification process now in this cert uh, service now application developer there are certain type of scripting objects are available so let's say that uh, a user open a form or a user uh, interact with the uh, other stuff right so a form right so that is the client side and let's say that I'm trying to save a data so that is a server side right so depending on which type of interaction you are doing um, you will need to be decide that which type of script you should use that there are server side script objects are there client side script objects are there what is the objects objects like a component like a business rule UI policy UI action if you are uh, gone through that my admin courses you understand what is the business rule, what is the UI action you understand right so similarly um, depending on the situation and use cases um, you are going to build or you are going to use this object let's say that you want to present a button so you are going for the UI actions now this button will be click when somebody click that button there will be a pop-up that will be client side effect if button is clicked the state will be changes that will be server side action so we are going to discuss that further uh, one by one but um, depending on your use cases you should use that so there are multiple um, you know uh, objects are available so you can see there are very familiar is the business rule uh, UI action ACL schedule job script include uh, script action 
client script ui policy ui action these we are going to use in our upcoming session so we will understand that how we can write the code there based on which situation we are writing the script there so now we should understand that what type of script we should uh, write that you know that where to write but now we should know that uh, how to write or which type of language we are going to use that service now is built under javascript so service now have some predefined classes that can use to uh, deal with the service now operation um so you can use the javascript depending on situation also if you want to do some operation like if you want to create update delete you can use the service now scripting api called glide record so this glide record glide aggregate there are multiple uh, api are available glide record glide aggregate glide record secure those are the uh, some service now special uh, function or class you can say uh, that you can call and then you can do or you can achieve your uh, goal the very familiar uh, api is called glide record using that glide record api you can actually uh, create update delete um so basically you can do the card operation uh, depending on your use cases so for the demonstration purpose in our upcoming video we are going to create a custom table and on this custom table we are going to do all the scripting all this operation um so uh, so that you can understand better uh, so let's see how we can do this operation but uh glide record glide uh secure these are the um service now predefined classes that you can use apart from that you can use the json that parse json dot stringify uh like you can use even javascript code um split uh those code also you can use depending on the situation so we'll discuss that um in our upcoming video till the time thank you very much have a great day Hello everyone, I'm Rohit, and in this video, I'm going to talk about that Glide record. Glide record is a very important function in your uh, developer journey. So, if you are trying to uh, build your career in as a developer, you should know that what is the Glide record and how it Glide record works. So, Glide record is a service now special class that help you to create, update, read, and delete. So, you know that. For a developer, it's very important that I can create a record, I can update a record, or I can delete a record. So these impo uh, these information, like we call that cart operation, is a very important for a developer, right? So we should know that how we can create, update, read, or delete. So how we can do that? I'll show you in the service now instance. So this is my service now instance. In this service now instance, I open the background script through the background script. So background script a type of script that help you to run a script uh, to your system to check that the script is working perfectly fine or not so or maybe if you want to update certain record you can do that through the background script so using this background script we are going to create some record first then we will do all this operation through the uh, glide record so first you can see that uh, in this using the glide record we can basically insert the record we can update the record delete the record right for that we need a table so in certain table we are going to insert update delete right for that we are going to use the incident table incident table is a common table or very basic table for a service now where all these incident related data store so for that i'll open that incident table So this is our incident table. In this table, first we are going to insert a record through the script. Okay. So to insert the record to this particular uh, table, first we have to declare a var, and then we have to declare the variable name. So let's say that we are declaring the variable name called gr. So gr is nothing but at that moment a variable, and that is declared through the var keyword. Var is a keyword. Using that var keyword, we are declaring a variable called gr. And now in the gr we can store any information so for the timing we are going to call a class called uh, glide record so this is a uh, service now class so glide record using this glide record class we can insert we can update we can read we can delete that okay now in this glide record it needs a parameter that is called table names the first parameter you can see that pop up is coming called key of tables so we need a table name that needs to be passed so that it we can do some operation so table name is called incident so you can see that we are in the incident table so we can put the table name equal to incident now after that we'll put uh, some semicolon 
Now what we want to do that, we want to insert a record or we you can see right now 78 record is there, we want to create a new record. For that, what we'll do, gr dot, there is a one method called initialize. Why we are using the initialize? Using the initialize uh, that clear up all these junks value, so we'll just use the initialize. So this is a uh, method. After that, what we have to do, we have to be map. So what does it mean by map? So when you are creating a record manual, you can see, I'm going to create a record. You can see, we can put the short description, we can put the description. So one more information uh, for you guys, I am using the uh, SNUtil plugins, Chrome SNUtil plugin that automatically pops up all these uh, field backend name. So sub, sub category, the backend name is sub category, service offering, service underscore offering, these are the backend name. This automatically pops up through my that uh, uh, special uh, plugins called SNUtil. So now what I want, I want to create an incident with a short description, let's say test 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'll copy this uh, field name. So this is my field name, short underscore description, and then put the gr dot short description why i am putting the gr dot short description gr i am putting because i call this function or i call this class through the gr variable now i can pass any variable let's say that i want to pass that test insert okay so this is a string field so we can put that now what else we need Second information, you can see the caller. So if you are creating an incident, the caller and short description two fields are mandatory. So we already set the short description as a test insert. And now we should set a caller. So we put that gr dot, and you can see the backend name is called caller underscore ID. We'll copy this field name here and put some value what value we should put that if you see that in this case short description is a free text we can put anything called test one two three four but in the caller we cannot put anything because it will give you a error or it's saying that invalid references right as it is a reference field we should select and you can see we can point to a user table we can point to user table and we can set some value right so these are the user record Abel, Tutor, Avram, Lincoln. So let's say I'm picking any of these uh, user for the time being called uh, Alien. And then I need to be passed the CS ID of this record. Instead of uh, this value, Alien uh, Morton, we should put the CS ID. So system, when you are writing a script, system is looking for a CS ID, not the display value. So we'll put that value here and then these two field value set like we are setting the short description we are setting the caller after that what we want we want to set this value now we want to insert that so if i put the gr dot insert what will be happen it will be insert a record now let's understand one more time so first we declare a variable called gr where gr equal to new glide record in this new glide record we declare a table name or we pass a table name called incident table and then after that we declare a initialize method using the initialize we are clearing that gr object now after that we are setting to field value called short description and caller after that we are calling another method called gr dot insert using the gr dot insert we are actually going to insert a record to a particular incident table now what it will return right let's say that after inserting that we want the uh, incident number how we can in uh, you know um, know that which record got created for that we can put that gs dot info normally gs dot info function help us to print anything so let's say i put that incident number and then space and then concatenation using the concatenation method i want to put or i want to print the incident number to print that, I'll put the gr object again, or I'll use the gr object again, and then put dot, then I'll put the number. So number, why I put the number? Because this number is a field that is present under this incident table. So I can do anything. I can put that number, I can put the short description, I can put that state, anything I can do that. So I'll put that one more object called uh, 
number and then I want to know the state. So I'll put the gr dot state. Now what will be happen? We use if we use the gr dot state, it will give me that value equal to one, two, or three, something like that. Because if you see this is a choice field and this choice field label is a new in progress on hold resolve close, but their backend value is one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. So this will return me that uh, you know. This will return you the backend value, but if you want to know the label, we can use the dot get display value. Using this method, we can actually print the backend value. Okay, so this is till now we are declaring a ob uh, object, initializing, setting the value, inserting, and printing that. Let's run that script. What will be happen if we run the script? Right side. I will show or I'll get the information, this information, the incident, whatever is created, their number and their state. And then in backend, I should be able to see a new record has been created with caller and then short description. So right now, 78 record is created. So if I run that, uh, 79 record or a new record should be created. So let's run this script. After running the script, you can see that certain things are triggered. Um, let's skip that part at that moment. At the bottom, you can see that script return the incident number called 10075, the state in the new state. Let's refresh that and see. So if I refresh that, a new incident should be created. That is the new 10075 with the test insert. And then caller is set called this particular Aaron Morton, this user got set. If I open there, um, you will be able to see that the state is a new state. So this way you can create a record. So if you want to create a record, simply uh, you can use this script. Using this script, you can create a record. As a developer, card operation is again very important. So you should know that how we can create the record. Now this script, I can write any of these other options. We'll discuss that. But for the demonstration purpose, we just write in our uh, background script. Now, next step is that how we can retrieve that. So let's say that you created a record and there are certain update happen. Let's say that test uh, update description. So now I want to, I have a incident number and using this incident number, I want to fetch uh, or I have a CCID of an incident. I want to fetch this incident short description. I want to fetch this incident state or impact, anything, right? How I can do a read operation. So in previously, we see that how we can create the operation. Now we will see that how we can read the operation or how we can read the um information so this is the incident to read this incident there are various options available we'll go one by one the first thing is that let's say that what you have so you have a in i want to fetch a single incident call 10075 that incident we have or maybe i have the CCID of this incident i want to print this incident description this incident uh, maybe uh, state and then assignment group. So these three things I want to inf uh, print that or I want to fetch that through that incident CSID or incident number. So let's do that. So I'll clear this object and then again I'll use that VGR equal to new glide record. So this glide record, this glide record function is going to be used for all this card operation. We'll use this GR. Now we have a options called GR dot get and using the GR dot get we can pass any incident CSID. So let's say that we are passing this incident CSID right click, copy CSID and then paste this CSID here and then we are putting or we are printing this information. Let's say I'm printing that information called GR dot number. So if we print this or if we run this script, what will be happen? It is going to print that incident number. Let's understand what we have right. We have declared called v where gr equal to new glide record. And under this glide record, we have a function called get. This function by default take a parameter called csid. And so once we pass this csid, it is going to be point to a particular incident called this incident csid. And after that, if we want to print any information from this incident or from this record, we can simply put that gr dot that field name.
we want to print the number so we'll put the gr dot number after that we want to uh, print the state so we'll put concatenate that let's say that we'll concatenate and put the gr dot uh, state and then if we want to put that assignment group so we'll put the gr dot assignment group here is the thing if you see that assignment groups again it's a reference field it's not is um, you know uh, uh, not as um, state forward uh, single line string so we put that gr dot assignment group dot get display value so using this display value instead of getting sys id we will get the actual value now if i run that what will be happen it will print the incident number incident state and then incident assignment group what which incident the the sys id of this incident let's run that now we can see incident number 10075 the state and then uh, here you can see that assignment group the state we are seeing the two because uh, this is a drop down field the back end value is the two if we want to print that uh, actual label you can put that again get display value this method and that can return us the actual back end label so in progress okay now what will be happen if we don't know this society we know the number right we can also pass this number also so we'll copy this number and then paste here is it going to run no it is not going to run it needs two parameter right now we have to be pass the field and then we need to be pass the comma and then we can use this number so by default if you don't pass the field name it will take the sys id if you are if you have any specific case where you want to pass this number or maybe caller you can pass that field name our case we are passing the field name called number and then number and then we are passing the number what is the number 10075 i want to find out that number 10075 and i want to print their information now instead of number i will put that description because i know the number so i want to print the description i want to print the state i want to print that and assignment group let's run that and you can see test description in progress app engine admin so this will return us a setup record that is for the single record now let's say if i print something which is wrong what will be happen if we run that nothing is printed because it does not exist now here could be a scenario that if this number does not exist i want to print some information how you can do that to achieve that we can put simple a if block under this if block we can say if this record found print this one so we will declare under if block else if that function if that function does not return anything or if does not get any record we will simply put that uh, record not found okay so what we are doing we put additional extra field called if so if this record found print their record information if not found simply say this record doesn't exist let's run that it's saying the record not found because this one one does not exist and then if we remove that and then run that this is the exact correct number incident number and if we run that it will give me actual record so this way you can use the if block using the if block you can actually um, get or you can print the information okay now this is for the single record now if i want to print list of incident record um list of incident number basically that their state is in in progress or um, any of this condition so this is for the single record how we can print the multiple record let's say that i want to print all these incident who all are in progress right now you can see that uh, 28 incident are in progress how we can print their information in that case you cannot use the get method we just have to remove that and then we have to put a special thing what we have to do we are again using the glide record and in this glide record we are going to put the gr dot at query 
using the add query we can put some query what is the query and if you see the pop-up it's showing the name comma value we need a first field name and their value so what is our field name our field name is the state so we'll copy this field name called state and then comma what is the value we are expecting so we'll copy this query or maybe we'll open this incident what is the backend uh, name for the in, uh, in progress the in progress backend value is that 2 so we need to be passed the value equal to 2 so we are looking for such incident they are in in progress states so we'll say that in progress incident so we are looking for incident who which state is in 2 and then we'll put the gr dot query so what will be happen we just we are just pointing to the which table what should be the field and after that we are querying so once you query that i just need to print those information right so what we'll do we'll put that while loop under this while loop where what we will use that gr dot next so what what does it mean by that i'm saying that print all this information until this have this information right now i have 28 incident right so i need to be pre i'm saying that using the gr dot next i'm saying that print all these um incidents until its end so wherever the next means that if the next object is available print that okay so to print that what we'll do we'll use the gr dot info and here what we want to print we want to print uh, incident number and their short description maybe we we'll put the gr and the number field so we want to print the number and then we want to print the gr dot short description so that we can print the short description and if we run that what will be happen 28 incidents number and short description will be print in our right side let's see if we run that you can see all these incident number and their short description are printing now what will be happen i don't want uh, all these in, uh, i want to uh, print this state equal to in progress and then priority equal to high so i want to add two query so instead of 28 i want to do more filter what is the filter i want to do state equal to in progress and priority equal to high so in that case we'll copy this field name and use one more additional filter let's say called gr dot add query and then what we can do we can say that priority and what is the priority we are expecting we are expecting priority equal to uh, maybe uh, high so high is the priority its value is 2 so we'll set that priority 2 and then run that what will be happen in that case it will print not 28 it will print the 5 record so let's run that and you can see the 5 record printed so this way you can query you can filter you can do more information now let's say that uh, this is not a correct method but for demonstration purpose i'm just showing you that i want to know that uh, record count so how many record i am able to fetch that for that we can put that called gs dot um, info and then i can say that record count count space and then concatenation how we can print the record count to print the record count we can use the gr dot get row count using that we can get specifically row count so how, how much we are expecting or how much incident we have five so we can run that and you can see record count is five which is printed right now so this way you can narrow down the filter you can do more filtering so this is we call the priority okay now next thing is that let's say that you have a many options like um, you know you have a long big query you don't want to put a in the add query the another method is that instead of add query you can use that called gr dot add encoded query using the add encoded query you can simply put that instead of one by one all this you can simply put there for example this is the filter we have set there we can right click on that query 
and then click copy query and then simply paste this query so this is saying same state equal to 2 and priority equal to 2 so using the single line also you can do that using that add encoded query instead of all this one by one field you can combine into a single field or single line let's say 10 or 20 or maybe 5 7 fields are there instead of add query you can even use the add you can even use that encoded query and if you run that you will be able to see the same result so this way you can do filtering so that's it for today if you have any question let me know in my comment section thank you very much have a great day hello everyone in our previous video i talked about that how you can create a record i mean how you can insert a record to a particular table like incident table and i also discussed about that how you can get or how you can read the data through the script now in our today's session we'll talk about that how you can update a record and then we'll also discuss about that how you can delete a record so let's go back to our background script here we are going to write some script that we can update a record let's say that i want to update this short description test insert to test insert two or three how i can update that to update this record first I need to read the record or I need to get the record and then I can update the record so to do that or to get the record what we can do I last day I talk about that we can use that glide record method using the glide record we can do all these operations so I'm putting that again and then we can put this if block so we discuss in our last day and then here we can directly pass this CSID if you are trying to update and if you have this CSID so we copy this CSID and then paste here and then also I talk about that how we can print that so you can put the gs.info and then there you can put that uh, call gr.number to see it's actually working or not it actually able to fetch or not so we'll click the run script and you can see uh, it is printing the incident number now the question is that how we can update the record let's say that I want to update this short description to update this short description you need to copy these uh, uh, the field name so in backend field name is short underscore description we'll put that gr dot short underscore description and then we can put the new value so let's say that we can put that called test insert 2 here and once you done so this is the way you can map that right so you can map this value and after that what you can do you can put the gr.update function using the gr.update function you can actually update the record so let's save that or let's run this code and you can see that it's update one record or one incident and if I refresh that it should be update with the new value so you can see we are able to update that okay now let's try to update that uh, this incident state to new to in progress so we'll copy this CSID here and then go and paste this CSID or else we'll do through the name so we'll copy this incident number and then we'll put call number so we, I talk about our last video that if you want to put any other fields you need to be specified with that field name so we are putting the number and the number is this one so in, instead of CSID if you want to use other field you should pass these two parameter first parameter is the field name and second parameter is value now we want to update that state so we'll copy this value called uh, you know that field name called state and what is the value we want to set in progress now to set this in progress what is the backend value we always have to use the backend value to update that so this is the label uh, uh, you can see the label uh, is uh, a new level is one and then uh, in progress is two so you have to use the two so we'll put that as a two and then simply uh, update that gr dot update function let's click that so you can see that it run that and then if I see that here you can see the state got updated to in progress through the script so you can see this way even we can update that so the first step is that we have to get the data and then we have to update the data now let's do one more round of string so what we are trying to do that we are trying to find out that in progress incident and then we are trying to update that uh, planning 
So I have total six incident. This six incident, what do we want? We want their state to a uh, new state. So what we are trying to do that we are trying to set a filtered call um, or maybe what we can do that we can set their assignment groups okay so let's understand the requirement what do we want we want to find out that incident is in progress and then priority is planning and um, so those incident we are trying to find out and their assignment groups we want to update that okay so let's do that I'll right click then copy query you know that last time we use that add encoded query so instead of get method what we are going to do that we are going to use that add encoded query as you know that the get method is mostly used for getting the one record so we are going to get multiple records so what we'll do we'll do that gr dot query I show you last day after that what we have to do we have to type that while loop under this while loop we can put the gr dot next this is also i explained the last day and here we can run this so what we are doing we are putting to the incident table finding out all this um incident which state is uh two and priority is five and what we are trying to update i should update their assignment group with a specific value so we'll copy these assignment groups and then paste here so gr dot assignment group what should be the value value should be a ref as it is a reference field we should put some csid so let's open this uh, uh incident and then if i want to set something let's say i want to set uh, their groups as a uh, application development if i want to set this value so i should pass this csid so i'll copy this csid uh, right click copy csid and paste here and here we go so what we are doing we are going to query to the incident table with the state equal to true to priority equal to five and we are querying we are doing a while loop and then we are putting that gr dot assignment groups equal to application developer and then we are putting the gr dot update method to update all these record the six record so let's do that and remember that we are running the while loop it means that it will go each and every record and update one by one so i'm updating that or i'm running the script and you can see that it updated two records and some record it could not be updated because of their have some uh, uh, might be issue let's see so you can see it's added or updated two record let's other record it couldn't update because of maybe some restriction or business tool is running or other uh, things is running which is preventing but the the this is the way we can write the script to update that there might be a scenario there is some uh, uh, trigger rule business rule other things are running which is actually preventing us to update that so this way basically we can update that now what is that in this case uh, you can see that uh, we are actually doing while loop and updating one by one instead of that what we can do we can update all this record in a single shot okay so what does it mean by that so let's say that i want to update um, these two record um, let's say i'll clear this their value here and then i want to set all this value to be application developer something i want to set that okay but what will be happen let's say that you are trying to update the thousand record what will be happen system will run this while loop and each and every time it will go through one by one and it will try to update that's the time consuming right instead of that what we can do we'll copy this line and put outside of this while loop and then what comment we can use that we can use the gr dot uh, update a multiple there is a options called update multiple you can use that and then you can simply run that we don't need this while loop in that case we can just take out this while loop and then run that what will be happen it will simply update all this record instead of uh, doing one by one so if i refresh that you will be able to see these two record got updated uh, rest are not getting updated because of the other business rule is running which is preventing but this way we can actually update multiple record understand 
so let's go back to our previous code i will talk about that how we can delete a record so let's go back to the system let's say that i want to delete this record i want to delete this um this first record 10075 again like update to delete that you should first get the data so what we'll do that uh, here we'll use that um in this case we'll put that number equal to this one so what we'll get that we'll get uh, that incident let's say that let's print that I will put the gs dot info and here we'll put that uh, uh, call incident and then I'll print that gr dot number to see that I am able to point correct incident or not so let's run that and you can see I am able to point correct incident now I want to delete this record or delete this incident 10075 if there is any business tool or any uh, if you don't have any role or any permission issue you won't be able to delete that but i'll show you that how you can delete that so simply what you can do you can type that gr dot delete record and then you can run that what will be happen it will simply try to delete that so i'll just run that And you can see that it deleted that incident and all these related uh, details. So if I refresh that 10075 should not be anymore. You can see that one record got deleted. Now let's say that I want to delete a list of record, um, not uh, one by one. So this is the one by one. Also, you can use the gr dot um, you know delete multiple. So using this method, you can delete that multiple record. So what you can do, I'll just remove this block and then put other number. Let's say that I'll copy this query and paste there. So in this case, it will delete all these five records. Let's try to delete that and system will delete all these records together. Instead of doing while loop one by one, it will delete all these records together. So if I run that. And right side you can see this is the time that is taking to do or this is the time it is taking to op do this operation and you can see that some data got deleted let's refresh that and see and you can see all these five record got deleted so this way you can delete multiple record hello everyone in this video i am going to talk about that ui action so we know that ui action is just such a component that is used in client side as well as the server side so today what we are going to do that we are going to open that incident form under this incident form you can see we have a uh, uh, state called new right so if i open an incident which is in new state what will be happen there will be a button call uh, like a resolve button there should be a button called in progress and once user click that in progress button the state should be changed to in progress right so let's understand that there should be a button called uh, uh, in progress and then somebody click that it will update the status to new to in progress and that button will be only visible if it is not in progress state so let's see to do that we are going to open this ui action module and under this ui action module we will open this ui actions and then we are going to create a new ui action we will click the new button so once we open this uh, ui action you can see that the first thing is the name so we will say that in progress and then we will say that it should be in form button form button means if we click that it will be visible under the form in the top here so we are selecting the form button and we are selecting the table equal to incident so we are going to select the table is incident now we will simply uh, i'm not going to change order and i'm not doing anything it will be visible under insert and update it will be active order will be hundred so let it as it is so we will just save that record once we save that let's refresh that here 
and you can see there is a button called in progress button that we have created now if we click that the button the purpose of this button should be it should update the state from new to in progress automatically let's see if we click that what is happening first see so if we click that it is not if i go back uh, to that it is not updating the state so it is as it is the state is as it is so we need to do certain thing that once we click that this state should be updated to news to in progress right for that we need to write a script so this is our script so we will start writing the script here the let's say that first we are going to declare i the same thing we are going to do that where gr equal to new glide record then we are putting that incident then we put that gr dot get and then we will pass this sys id of this incident and then what we want we want gr dot update or gr dot state equal to 2 and then gr dot update so what will be happen if we click that or if we if once we click that this script will be done and this script is going to be update this record like this uh, CSID state it from new state to in progress state right so what it is doing so if we click this in progress this script will be executed and this is going to call the incident table with the CSID and then their state is going to be updated now this C side we cannot hard code it, right? We don't know for which incident user will be open and click the in progress. So from these forms, we should dynamically get the C ID, right? To get this dynamically C ID, instead of this, uh, you know, direct C ID, what we can do, we can put that current. There is an object called current, so you can use that current underscore C ID. So once you put that current is your object and after that you can access any of this incident field. So right now you are in the incident form. So if you want to access number, caller, category, you can use the current dot caller underscore ID, current dot category, current dot subcategory, you can use that. So we need the sys ID. So we'll use the current dot sys ID that will give me that latest or current this incident sys ID and we want to update their object or their state to two. Let's save that and see what happens. And now if we refresh that, so this this uh, uh, this uh, UI action is saved. Now if I refresh, so this is the incident that uh, is right now refreshed. And then if I click the in progress, the state should be updated from new to uh, in progress. Let's try again. So if I click this in progress, it should update the state from new to in progress. I just click that button. You can see that uh, the screen is little grayed out because the system is trying to hit to the server and trying to update that. My PDA is little slow, so that's the reason it taking some time. Now you can see that the state is updated to in progress through the script we are able to update the state to in progress. Now so this is the one thing we actually able to know that how we can write the code. So this class like updation part we learned from our previous class and we, that we actually implemented here right. So this way you can update that from in progress to you can put the on hold and then uh, system can put that uh, state to on hold there is a tweak so you can do this way so this is the uh, one way you can uh, update that another op another option is that as your current system this current objects is available th we call say, this is we call the object as your current object is available you are able to access the current dot c side this way you don't need to glide record anymore you can simply use that current dot state equal to 2 and then you can put that current dot update 
so instead of glide record you don't need to do the glide record because your current object is available right now um so you don't need to do a glide record you can simply use that current dot state equal to 2 and then current dot update this function so that what will be happen it will be update this current record only current uh, records you don't need to do the glide query uh, to fetch that incident and then update that you don't need to do that so let's try that so if i refresh that and let's say i'm updating this state to new and save and then if i click in progress it should be uh, update that state to in progress so you can see the state got updated to in progress now you probably seen that we are in in progress state and still we are seeing this in progress button right so we don't need this in progress uh, when uh, this button whenever we are in in progress state for that also you can write some code so you have a condition under this condition you can define that on which condition you don't want to or you want to see this button or you don't want to see the button so what we are saying that in the condition if condition return true then only this button will be visible so our case we don't want to show this button under in progress state so what we'll do we'll put that current dot state not equal to 2 so if it is not in progress then return true and then it should be visible now let's save that so this is the condition we placed there let's save and let's refresh so you can see we are in in progress state that's the reason that in uh, that in progress button is not visible anymore if we go back to the new state and then save that the button should be visible so you can see we are in uh, new state and then button is visible and now if you click the in progress button the state will be updated to in progress So I just click that. You notice that um, I am redirecting to that um, different page, and I need to click go back this sign to check that um, the actual value because these things also you can fix. We'll discuss this later. But you can see that that using that um, uh, that button is uh, after clicking this button, this state changes to in progress, and then button is not visible. So this is we using this uh, simple line of code we can actually achieve our requirement. So we have a two part where we can write the script. First part is this one called condition where we can define that in which condition this will be visible. And this is the script part where we can write the server side script to do some operation like we can uh, you know uh, update we can set the state even if you want to do other operation we can do that okay so that's it thank you very much have a great day hello everyone in this video we are going to talk about that ui action in client side in our previous video we talked about that ui action and in the ui action we did the server side actions now in our today's video we are going to create a ui action into our client side so let's do that let's say for example i'm going to open an incident form so i'll open that incident form first and let's say that I'm opening this incident 9009 I want to uh, you know create a UI action in the top called external search and once somebody click that external search uh, it should open a new op a window with um, Google and this with this short description this is our requirement so we are going to create a UI action that will be visible in the top call um, external search and then somebody click that it will go and search with this short description it is going to search in the Google so that is our requirement so let's achieve this requirement first so for that what we are going to do that we are going to create a new UI action so we'll uh, use this UI action module under this UI action module we are going to create a new UI action so we'll click new button then what we'll do we'll go to the top and then uh, let's say that we'll put that 
external search so this is the name um, that will be visible the ui action name that will be visible in the incident form then table will select that table equal to incident and it will be a form button so we are putting that and then um, what we want we want to do something in our uh, you know uh, script now we know that this script is a server side script how we can make this client side script we have an option called client you just need to check this one once you check this there will be a ui action you can uh, you uh, there will be your one uh, field which, which will be visible called on click so if you uncheck that you can see on click field is not visible so we have to click that and then under this on click we have to define a function name so let's say for example we are going to uh, put that external link and then this is the function now this function we just call that but we need to define the function here so under this function we are going to put that external link and here we are going to write our code for the example let's say that i'll put that if confirm so here i'm just going to show you that how we can write the javascript as i mentioned in the service now we can write the javascript as well as you can write your service the script so confirm box we are opening that confirm box and here we are just typing that uh, external url wants to open so there will be a uh, uh, you know confirmation box will become if uh, somebody click ok then we want to do something okay so let's save for the timing and let's see this is working or not so what we did we created a ui action put the table name equal to incident form button and then select that client checkbox so it can get the client and then once somebody uh, click this um, you know external link what we want we want to alert that you know our short description now how we can access this short description uh, for the server side we normally use that current dot short underscore description but for client side you cannot use the current object current object is only available for your server side um, we seen that in our previous video we used to get access the CCID using the current dot CCID uh, or I have mentioned that you can access the current dot number current dot caller ID into the server side but client side you cannot use that uh, current object you have to use that client uh, client form object so we have a method called um, g underscore form so this is the glide form we can say and then after that we have a options called get value so under this glide form we have a method called get value here you can define any field name that you want to access for example we want to access the short underscore description so we'll access this short description we'll discuss further more about this g underscore form api but for the time being i am just uh, declaring a variable called uh, short under this variable what we are storing we are putting the g underscore form and then under g underscore form we can use that get value method using the get value we can access any of these uh, fields value so we want to access this short description and this short description we are going to pass to our external website to search that so let's alert that and see it is working or not so we'll put that and then alert this one and see how it works so for the timing it is not going to redirect we just want to see it is working or not so there is uh, some issue let's see what is the issue so you can see the short is a reserved keyword so we cannot use that short key so we'll put the short d and then uh, put that and save that short is a reserved keyword now what will be happen uh, once i save that there will be a button visible under incident form call external search and then if you click that there will be a pop-up visible and then somebody click that uh, okay then it will be um, you know show this short description later what we'll do we'll redirect that so this is the external search we, ui action is visible if you click that you can see a uh, confirmation box is coming this confirmation box is a very uh, used javascript using the javascript code only we show that confirmation box and once you click the ok 
what will be happen this short description will be uh, show me as a alert format so you can see i am able to access this short description right now this short description i need to um, you know uh, do something so that i can uh, do something right so we'll copy that for the time being now what we'll do uh, here we want to redirect that to a or open a new page right so what we'll do window dot open and here we want to do something let's say that we want to redirect to that google.com then we want to do search and we want to put some parameters we'll put the q equal to what you want to pass that we want to pass the short description so what i want i want to be open a new window with that url called uh, google.com slash search um, you know q equal to this short description now uh, this is the javascript called window.open the using this javascript method window.open we can actually open that and where we want we want to open in a new window so we'll put that underscore blank so this is uh, this is not a service now script it's a, a javascript uh, script now here before that uh, here we need to define that top keyword so then only it will work top dot window dot uh, open then only this script will be work so let's save that and see this is working or not i just save that and click external search what will be happen it should open uh, a dialog window if you click cancel nothing is going to happen but if you click ok it should redirect you or it should open a new window and redirect with this question let's see so there is a pop-up is coming so we'll allow that and then again you will click that so this is one time from browser settings once you click ok you can see uh, it is opening but uh, you know it is trying to search inside the google.com so what we'll do we have to put the https so that it open into that uh, different way so we'll put here call https colon then we'll put that and let's try again into that incident form now i'm going to click again this button click ok and you can see that it's directly open the google with that search term called unable to find shared folder and it's already searching uh, let's say that i am going to open another incident so let's open other incident and see this is working or not so this is that us report of my pc so this is another incident if we click that external search so it's just giving you that uh, confirmation box if you click ok it is searching that with the same terms so this way you can create your client side ui actions and then using the client side ui action you can use your javascript code the purpose of this uh, session is that i just want to demonstrate or want to show you that how you can create a client side ui action and using the client side ui action apart from the service now code how you can use your own javascript so this g underscore form is a service now code like g underscore form dot get value using that we can get that data or we can retrieve the current uh, form data but uh, confirm windows dot open these all are service uh, you know not non service no javascript code that also we can use that so that's it for today uh, thank you very much have a great day hello everyone in this video i am going to talk about that ui policy so what is ui policy why do we need the ui policy and when or which situation we should use the ui policy that things we are going to discuss in our today's session so let's see that what is the ui policy so ui policy is nothing but a used dynamically change the behavior of the form element like um, field related list section based on that predefined condition so let's say that uh, what we can do through the ui policy we can do uh, hide that uh, any field based on the condition we can make any field mandatory and we can set any field uh, read only depending on our requirement mostly in ui policy we don't need to write the script but if you want to write the script you have a another advanced sections there you can write the script so let's see how we can uh, create a ui policy to create a ui policy you can go to this service now uh, left navigation and go to this and then type called ui policy 
under this uh, system UI, you will be able to see one module called UI policy. You just open that. All this UI policy will be visible. Let's say that I am going to create a new UI policy. I will click the new button. So UI policy um, form is open. Here we need to define the table name. We need to define the short description. This short description is used to meaningful to understand that what is the purpose of this UI policy. Then uh, the scopes comes that global scope. Then um, this is a uh, state is active. And then under that you will be able to see few more things called onload. This UI policy should be run on the onload or not. Reverse if false. It means that if the condition doesn't match, these things should be work differently or not. And then we have a script sections another explicitly you can click the run script and then here you can define the script most of the UI policy doesn't have any script they runs without script and just simple configuration but if you have any use case that you need to write the script you can define that now let's understand our requirement our requirement is that or which situation we should write the UI policy if you go back to our incident module and open any incident let's say i'm opening this incident our requirement is that if the state is right now new but if the state is in progress we should make this uh, configuration item mandatory if this uh, state is in progress this configuration item will be mandatory and if the state is not I mean if the state is other other uh, you know other state this configuration item should not be mandatory so if the condition is that if the state is in progress the configuration item will be mandatory if the that is not um, any other state this should not be mandatory so this is our simple use case to do that uh, as I said that uh, we can using the UI policy we can make the mandatory so to achieve this requirement we can definitely go for the UI policy let's see how we can make this um, uh, requirement for that what we will say that we will say that CI mandatory here we need to define the table so we will select the table here called incident and then when to uh, apply here we need to define the condition so let's say that I'm saying that state is in progress and save that so this is the condition we have defined and this had the order equal to 100 it means that 100 in the 100 order this will be run So UI policy is created. Now we need to under this UI policy we have a uh, UI policy action where we can define that what action should be visible. For example, we want to make this configuration item is mandatory when this condition is satisfied, when this in uh, the CI is in progress. In that case, we want to make this configuration item mandatory. So for that, what we'll do, we'll click new. then we need to define or we need to select that field name so we will select that configuration item okay and then right side we have action what action we want we want these things mandatory so we will say that mandatory equal to true and simply save that so it means that this UI policy will be run or this will be run in in progress state and what it will do it will make this configuration item uh, is mandatory true so let's test this scenario right now so this is our incident form in the incident form right now you can see the configuration item is not mandatory what I am going to do that I will change this state from in progress to uh, in uh, sorry new to in progress and you can see that configuration item is mandatory and without feeling that I cannot submit this uh, field so let's select a configuration item so we'll select a configuration item and save that what will be happen if we save that this uh, uh, I mean uh, this configuration item will we see that this rate is going to be uh, 
this is not any more red color because you have filled this information so right now if you see that the uh, configuration item is mandatory whenever the incident is in progress state so this way you can make any field mandatory hello everyone welcome back to my youtube channel in this video we are going to talk about that client script so we discuss about the ui policy using the ui policy we are able to make this field configuration item is mandatory whenever the state is in progress now in our today's session we will talk about that client script and definitely in the client script we are going to write some more code to help you to know that how we can write the script into the client script and what are the things we can do into the client script so let's go back to the left navigation and search for the client script we'll type the client script and under this system definition you will be able to see the module called client script and all these client script are available the main component of the client script is the name state i mean active or not and then you have a table so where you can define that for which table this client script will be run so we are going to create a uh, new client script before that if i search with that uh, table name is incident you will be able to see that there are a uh, quite number of client script are already available into this system um, but we are going to create a new client script one new client script let's say i'm going to click the new button so once you click the new button you will be able to see this is the new form for the client script here we'll uh, put the name we'll put the table then we have a ui type and then we have a type so these are the a very important factor we are going to discuss let's say that uh, table name called incident uh, mandatory and then here we are going to put the table name so we'll select for the timing incident table so we'll select that incident table okay and then under this ui type you will be able to see the desktop mobile or service portal and then all so if you run, want to run this client script only for the native view like here you can use the desktop if you want to run this client script onto the service uh, service portal you can select the service portal or else you can select if you want to run the client script both the environment you can define that all so we'll select or uh, we'll uh, put as it is and then here we have a type so type is a very important factor so we have a on sale edit on change edit on load edit and on submit edit so what we'll talk first the on load and on change so what is the on load so whenever your form will be loaded first time that time if you want to run any client script you can select for on load if you want to run any script which is uh, uh, depending on any uh, field changes let's say that you selected that on change it means that whenever any field value changes like uh, service service offering any or state or priority any field value changes if you want to run this any field mandatory at that moment you can go for the on change client script so let's see uh, for the timing we are going to select the on load so once you select on load you can see that in the uh, script section by default it's populated with function then the function name is on load and in the bracket uh, it is coming a, a box where we can write on load now you have a option called global if you uncheck that you can run this client script for a specific view so you can we know that what is view so for incident we have a this many view right so if you want to run this client script for specific view we can define that otherwise you can select the global so that it can run for all this view so we are not doing anything at the moment we just said that incident mandatory select the table name type equal to desktop select the type equal to uh, on load and then here we are just putting a alert message call hi to see that our client script is working or not so we select the hi and save that once we put uh, once we save that what will be happen if your form is loaded or incident form is loaded let's say i'm go i'll go back to this uh, incident list and then i'll open this uh, incident form once your form will be loaded our client script is run and showing a pop up call hi so you know the on load client script run whenever your form is getting loaded now let's understand it deeply or in a further process so our requirement was last time that if the incident state is in progress we want to make this configuration item mandatory now let's say that whenever our incident state is on hold we don't want this configuration item mandatory so which is working 
perfectly fine but we need to be create or we want to make service field is a mandatory so let's understand one more time so whenever our state is in progress we want to make this configuration item mandatory which is working fine but whenever the state will be in on hold we want this service field should be mandatory now here is the question the question is that we can achieve this scenario by another set of ui policy but for complex scenario let's say that you have a uh, four or five state or different different condition you want to make certain field mandatory visible and these things do you want to create separate separate ui policy you don't need to create the separate ui policy you can do or you can achieve these things by a single client script so let's see how we can achieve that so first thing first we are going to deactivate the ui policy that we have created so i'll go back to this ui policy and then i will open this ui policy sections and then this uh ui policy we have created called ci mandatory i will deactivate that ui policy simply i am going to deactivate this ui policy uncheck that and save that so this ui policy is deactivated now here in this incident form you can see i am in the in progress state but configuration item is not mandatory so let's achieve that or let's uh you know uh Uh, fulfill this requirement so as we know that in the client script run whenever your form is loaded so what we are going to do that we are going to declare a variable we know how to declare the variable we are declaring that where let's say is equal to we are going to use the g underscore form method so g underscore form so this method or this api we already used in our earlier video uh, where we use that uh, So we are going to use the g underscore form dot get value. So we we'll set that get value, and then what value we are trying to achieve? Or we are trying to fetch the state. So what will be happen? We are going to fetch the state, and depending on the state, we are going to take the action. So what action we are going to take? That if the state equal to, or if the state is two, we are going to make this configuration item is mandatory. So we we'll put that if. is equal to equal to 2 we are going to make some ma field mandatory which field we want to make mandatory we want to make this configuration item or con cmdb ci this field we want to make mandatory so we'll do that so here we'll again use that g underscore form dot set mandatory we have a one method called set mandatory earlier we use that get value this is the new method we are using set mandatory the mandatory uh, you know set mandatory function or method needs two parameter first is the field name second is the boolean value that will tell you that it's a mandatory or not so we'll say that cmdb underscore ci this field should be mandatory we will define that and simply save that so what will be happen we are saying that if the state is in progress cmdb ci should be mandatory so let's save that and refresh our form incident form so right now we are in in uh, in progress state and it should be mandatory and you can see that configuration item is mandatory and it showing that asterisk sign so you can see it showing the asterisk sign called cmdb ci is a mandatory field Now, what is the next requirement? Next requirement is that if incident state changes and it's in that on hold, we want this uh, service field mandatory, and we don't want configuration item is any more mandatory. So this is the requirement. So we'll put that else if else if what we want we want is equal to equal to what we want in which state. if the state is on hold which value is 3 so if the state is 3 what do we want we want this field mandatory which field mandatory so we'll put the g underscore form method again dot set mandatory which field we want to make mandatory so we want to make this um business service mandatory so we'll select that business service is mandatory we'll simply select that and set true okay so let's format this code and simply save that 
So let's refresh this incident form. So I'm going to refresh that form. As you can see, after refresh that, if the state is in progress, our configuration item getting mandatory. Let's change to on hold and select this uh, other field and then simply save that. And we have to put some work notes and simply save that. After saving that, you can see that service field is getting mandatory and then configuration item is not any more mandatory. So this way we can uh, you know, depending on the condition, we can define that. Hello everyone. In this session, we are going to talk about that on change client script. In our previous sessions, we discussed about onload client script and using the onload client script, how we can make some field mandatory depending on the state value that we have discussed. In our today's session, we will talk about the on change client script and using the on change client script, how we can achieve certain things. So that thing we are going to discuss that. Uh, so to create an on-change client script, what we are going to do that we have to go to this uh, client script module here and under this client script, you can create your own client script. So you will be click the new button here. As per earlier, uh, we have put it the name, the table. I'm going to select the same thing. So I'll select the table name called incident. And if you see the type, this time we are going to select that on change. So previously we selected the on load and once you select the on load, you can see that function was function on load. But if you change the and select the on change, I'll just refresh, uh, you know, uh, refresh that because once you selected that, um, that script did not update it properly. So we are going to select that on change here. And you can see that once you selected the on change, there are the function name is called on change and there are multiple parameters are there called client con control old value new value each loading each template all these um, clients uh, parameter are there so we are going to discuss that in uh, a minute so we'll put that call so based on state changes we are doing this so we are going to select that changes and if you see that the table name i have to select the table name called incident here and if you see that the field here it's asking for the field name if you compare with that our onload client script onload client script have till type after that they are asking a new uh, thing called field so we have to define that field based on which field this onload or on change uh, this on change client script will be run so we are, are going to run this uh, uh, client script de uh, depending on changes field on the state field so we are going to select that field name called state. So we'll select that and simply uh, put under this here, under this code, what we are going to put that we are putting the same thing called alert high, the way we put that earlier and save that. So what will be happen whenever a incident fee, uh, form will be loaded and then the field value will be changes the on, uh, you know, the, uh, the script is going to be run. So let's refresh that our incident form and you can see that uh, our script the on chain script did not run but our on load script run and make this field mandatory now if we change that uh, state to new you can see our on change client script is running so this way we can make this works so what we are going to do that here we are going to uh, understand the state so how we know the state we can use the g underscore form dot get value or else we can use the new value so if you see that uh, under the on load we don't have anything called new value but here you can check that uh, one thing called new value so new value will be returned the new state of this value and old value there is a one more method called old value using the old value we can know that what is the previous value so let's say that a state is getting updated from uh, you know uh, new to in progress the old value will be new and then new value will be in progress so this we can uh, actually face that so let's see how it works so we'll put the high then we'll put that uh, new value so we'll uh, concatenate that so we'll put the new value then we'll put some um, here dash and then we'll put the old value so we'll know that how this works so we'll just simply save that and refresh our form incident form 
and we are in the on hold it means that the value is 3 and now I am going to change that to maybe resolve so you can see that the new value is 6 and then old value is 3 so this way using the client script we can identify that what was the old value and what is the latest value now here one issue is there I'll just show you that so we created a download client script um, that day so the issue is that whenever we are changing the state so let's say that I'm in the on hold if I'm changing that in progress you can see um, our service is still in mandatory and then our configuration item is not mandatory after you save that let's say I'm um, I'm saving this form so I'll select that and save that after my save um, you know our on load script run and then make this configuration item mandatory and then service is uh, you know uh, non mandatory so if I change again from in progress to on hold you can see that it did not make service field mandatory it will be mandatory after my save so after my set, uh, saving that value on load client script is running and then only these things or uh, this uh, field mandatory is um, making mandatory so this is the potential issue and to fix that we are going to use that on change client script and using that on change client script we are going to resolve that okay so how we will resolve uh, resolve that we will copy this client script the the client script the, that I have created earlier session and paste here okay and here we are used to get that state instead of g underscore from that get value instead of that we'll use that new value because we know that new value return as the new state so we'll instead of g underscore form we will use the new value and let's understand what is then uh, happening so if my state is 2 my or maybe in progress the cmdb ci will be mandatory if the state is uh, 3 it means that on all the service field will be mandatory that we are telling right now so whenever the field itself will be changed that time we want to make that so let's format this code and save that okay. now refresh this uh, form here so right now I am in the in progress state and then my on load client script run and make this configuration item is mandatory now if I change from in progress to on hold my service field got mandatory but this configuration item is not become not mandatory until unless I save that form so I save that and then save this form with some uh, additional note and save that then only my configuration item is become non mandatory right so to resolve that what do you have to do we have to put some additional code here so I'll copy this um, you know code and paste here and paste here and then what I am saying that I'll just put some line here and then put some here and let me tell you that so what I am telling that if that state is in progress make this configuration item mandatory and then business service is non mandatory if the state is on hold make this service mandatory and configuration item is not mandatory let's save that okay so I I have saved now now let's see our code is working as per expected or not so right now we are in on hold and in this on hold service field is mandatory and configuration item is mandatory which is perfectly working from our on load client script now if we change the state from on hold to uh, in progress and you can see that configuration item is become mandatory and service is now become non mandatory which is working fine from our on change client script and again after saving that our on load client st let's say I save that after saving that our on load client script work perfectly fine and then it makes this configuration item is mandatory so this way it is working perfectly fine and now in this situation uh, what we had to do we had to create one on load client script and one on change client script right do we need these things like do we need two client script on load client script and on change client script 
we can bypass that how we can bypass that on load client script we can deactivate that and simply save that so what will be happen if we deactivate that on load client script our on load form like after saving that form this configuration item will not be mandatory let me show you that so you can see that after i'm just refresh that and my configuration item field should be mandatory in in progress state but it is not getting mandatory on the on hold but if i change that to uh, on hold and then come back to the in progress you can see this is mandatory because this script the on change client script is acting or on change client script is making mandatory whenever i am changing this field right but if i am not changing i am simply loading this form this is not working to make is this achievable we have a one under this on change client script we have a one options that is called is loading section here we can write some script that can make our field or that can run during the on load what we can write we can put something called alert and say that uh, on load inside on change and see that this is working or not just save that i should be able to get a alert message and then um a on load uh, using that on load client script i should be able to get a alert message let's see you can see that i did not change the state value but it's still working i mean still the alert message is coming because under this on change client script inside the is loading if we put something that will be work as a on load and then how then how will achieve that so we'll simply copy this code i'll copy this code this uh on load code and paste here so i'll just paste here so what will be happen i'll just format that what will be happen uh we'll get a value state value and then based on that we'll make this cmdb ci mandatory and then business service is mandatory depending on the state and we'll do action here is the thing you can see that we are getting a an warning because s value is repeated that's okay we'll uh, just save that before save that you can see right now our on load as we don't have any on load client script the configuration item is not getting mandatory under in progress state so if we simply save that what will be happen this issue should be removed so let's see if we really refresh that and right now we don't change anything and you can see that configuration item is automatically mandatory because our inside the on load client on change client script we, our on load section run and then it makes mandatory like configuration item is mandatory now if we change that on hold uh, our on on change client script run and make this service mandatory and then configuration item is not mandatory we will just save that so this way using the on change client script you can work as a on load and on change both the perform, both the section or both the things you can perform under this on change so i hope you understand that uh, scenario i'll just quickly re recap that so this is the on load section here you can write whatever that will act like a on load so we copy that from the on load section and paste here then what we did we actually uh, you know paste our on change sections here we this section will run as a on change whenever our state value changes that capture under new value and we assign that under s and we are checking that is what is the s value okay if it is uh, this or this we are making or we are doing this action hello everyone in this video we are going to talk about that on submit client script before we go for the on submit client script i will talk about few more points the first point is that we are going to add one more point like if you see that under in progress we are making this configuration item is mandatory as well as we will make visible on that the configuration item and service will not be visible anymore on the in progress state and apart from that if you select on hold the service field will be visible and mandatory and then configuration item will not be vi uh, visible so making mandatory as well as we are going to add one more condition called visibility so that i can show you that how visibility also can be controlled through the client script
After that, we'll talk about that on submit client script. So in our client script, if you see that this is the client script portion in this client script portion, what we mention that we mention that uh, e, uh, the CMDB CI will be mandatory uh, if the state is in progress. If it is not uh, in progress, I mean on hold, then service will be mandatory. On top of that, what we are going to add that we are going to use that G underscore form. And then if you type the G underscore form then dot, you will be able to find out many other methods are available. Some methods start with gate, some methods start with set, some methods start with height. So you can see to hiding some error message, to hiding some uh, field message, we use the height. Uh, to get something, we use that gate. To set something, we use the set. So let's say that I want to set some value, we use the set method. And if we want to get something, we want to make... Um, uh, uh, depending on set or gate, what we want, we can use that. So our case is we are going to use that uh, display. So we are going to use that set display. If you click there and then put that braces, you will be able to find out that display the field if true, hide the field if false. This method cannot hide the mandatory field with no value. So if this field is mandatory and there is no value, this method is going to not work. If the field is hidden, the space used to other other field. So if the field is going to be hide, other field is going to take care of that place. So what we are going to say that if that configuration item is going to be mandatory, so we are saying that the configuration item will be visible and mandatory if it is under uh, in progress state and. Um, what we don't want we don't want to make this visible which field we don't want to make the visible we don't want to we make business service visible under this so we will put that false we don't want to make the business service visible under this in progress state so this is what we are saying here so these steps we are going to use or repeat here in this steps three but only here the configuration item will be visible and then uh, business service will be not visible. So you can see that using that uh, set display method, we can make any field visible and we can make, uh, you know, we can hide some field. So what, do I, what I am going to do, I'll copy that same thing and then paste here. So I will say this is going to be here and this section is going to be here. So I'll copy that and then is here let's format that and let's understand wh what we are saying we are saying that if the state is in progress or if the state is in progress the cmdb ci field will be visible the business service will not be visible and then cmdb ci will become mandatory if you see that order first we are making visible then we are making mandatory so if the field is not visible how can you make the field is mandatory so first we have to make this visible and then we have to make this mandatory similarly what we are saying that if the field is set to display cmdb ci will be uh, not be visible and then um, business service will be uh, you know um, visible so same thing is repeated here let's save that and see how it works now let's go back to the incident form and let's refresh that what is the state right now let's see what is current state of current state of this incident is right now on hold and as you can see that as it is on hold the service field is visible and mandatory and then configuration item field is not visible anymore now if i change to this in progress uh, you know uh, the configuration item is become mandatory and visible that service field is not visible so this way you can control their visibility depending on your criteria and use case you can actually make them visibility so let's set in progress and then save that it should also work perfectly fine on the on load so let's see so if i save that and you can see after saving that configuration item is become mandatory and it is not visible anymore now let's understand one thing um, this code if you see this code in a high level this code have a repeated line what is the repeated line this whole blocks is repeated multiple times see this block is repeated here to make these things uh, not repeated what we can do simply what uh, we'll do we'll just remove that whole code here okay we'll remove that whole code here what will be happen if we remove the code from here 
the on load client script will not be work as you know that right so our on load client script run under these sections so i just save that so it means that our on load client script doesn't have what will be happen if i refresh that our on load section will not be work properly it won't be able to make mandatory but whenever you will change that it should work perfectly fine so as you can see that configuration item service both the field is visible and they are not become mandatory because the our on load section is not working but if we change that on hold or i mean on change part it is working fine you can see um so it is working fine and this on load section is not working how can we remove um, i mean how can we just how uh, uh, you know do the code optimization so that it's also work for on load and then it should uh, you know it uh, i should not repeat the code again to avoid this confusion what you can do you can see we have a under if condition is loading equal to equal to then it's saying the new value equal to equal to empty then return so this line is pre populated when we created the client script so it means that it is checking that is loading it means that is it uh, on load yes then it's written so it means that the further code should not be run and that's the reason i have put that repeated code under this here right so i have put or i had added that our earlier code here so because of this reason so if we don't if we want to run the same code under on load and on change we don't need to write here we only need to write code here if we want to do certain action on load and different action in on change they can, then you can write that apart from that if we want to do perform the same action both the cases like on load and on change both the cases same what you can simply do you can just remove that is loading so what will be happen in that case the system will uh, will not check that is it on load or on change and then this script will be run either in it is on load or on change both the cases let's save that and so this has been saved uh, you can see only if the new value where is empty then don't run this code that's what i am saying so if i refresh that our on load script should work properly and should be make a uh, mandatory depending on the state and should be visible a uh, certain field depending on the state now we can see i am in that in progress state configuration item is mandatory and it is showing and then service is are uh, not visible anymore now if i change to the on hold the service is visible and mandatory and then configuration item is gone now if i save that uh, you know i should be remain uh, same on that um, you know our on load section should be work properly let's see and if you can see that our on load client script run and makes the service feel mandatory this way you can do code optimization previously it was two liner code multiple repeated code was there now you can see i have just removed that code and it is working also perfectly fine so you can use uh, both the code uh, depending on your use cases now in our today's main topic is that on submit client script how and when we should use the on submit client script the on submit client script run whenever you are trying to submit some data whenever you are trying to update a record then on submit client script run let's go back to the client script module again and i'm going to open this client script module and going to create a new client script so i'll click the new button let's say i will put that at the moment on submit you should probably put the name in a meaningful way that what you want to do that okay so let's say that i'm going to put that incident and uh, type is on submit so you can see that the way on load client script work the on submit also have a one function called function on submit and there is no parameter and if i put some alert call hi and save that what will be happen uh, let's see so our client script is saved if i refresh here so we'll save that and you can see our on submit client script works so you can see our on submit client script works it show a pop up and after that the value saved actually now what is the use case of the on submit the on submit uh, client script works before or you know before it uh, store the data to the um, your server right so whenever you try to submit that 
it run and then you can decide that it has to be stored in the server or not so one of the use case is that let's say that somebody updated the priority or somebody um some incident priority is one so i change that urgency and then uh, impact and urgency is high then priority become high in this case uh, i want to make sure that you are uh, act perfectly selecting the priority and that will create a major issue for everyone so i want to show a alert message or show a info message uh, to the user before they submit that on uh, you know the incident if that is the requirement we can go for the on submit client script so a user who is going to submit a, a incident in a priority equal to 1 we are going to show a confirmation message that this is going to be create a major incident are you okay with that or not so if they click okay then only we are going to submit that otherwise we don't So let's do that. Under this on submit, what we are going to say that we are going to put a if block, and then under that we are going to use the confirm. And here we are going to say that uh, so this is the confirmation box. We are going to show that, and before that, before we confirm that or before we execute this line, we want to check the priority. Let's say that how we can. Uh, get the value we can use a g underscore form dot get value using this get value method we can get the value we want to fetch the priority so we'll copy this priority backend name is that priority we'll copy that and paste here so what we are saying that if a uh, p equal to equal to 1 it means that priority is 1 then only our confirmation box should be visible and then only we should do something okay so we are going to show a confirmation message and then um you know what we are going to do that we have not decide so do something here we'll do something okay so if somebody click okay uh, we are going to do something else if somebody say cancel we are going to do something so these are the two block okay so we have a two block right now first we are going to check the priority what is the priority if priority is 1 then only this case is uh, applicable if the priority is not 1 it means that it's a normal p2 or p3 we are not going to show any confirmation message we are not going to do anything or anything right so let's save that and test these things okay so let's say that uh, this priority become 1 so we change that impact and urgency the priority become 1 and then whenever we are trying to save that uh before that we need to provide the work notes and whenever we are trying to save that what will be happen a confirmation box or you can see confirmation check is coming either you click okay or cancel both the cases it is going to be save this record so let's see uh both the cases a system save that record you can see it save the record right but what we want if somebody let's say that i i click again the save and if we click cancel i don't want to save that i want to be revert that old value so somebody can by mistakely create a, a p1 so let's say that before we save that uh, we will just show a pop up message and somebody say that okay uh, let's don't create the uh, p1 then we can simply cancel that in that case what we can do under this on submit client script so this is the uh, the if blocks if somebody click okay right so what do we want if somebody click okay Uh, let's save that so for saving that we don't need to do anything but if somebody this is the cancel part if somebody click cancel what do you want we don't want to be submit their record so we'll say that return false so if we pass this return false what will be happen system won't actually allow them to save that i'll just show you that so right now you can see i am uh, let's say that i am changing that uh, to medium okay so now priority become um you know high the confirmation box will not become i just need to be put the work notes and save that there is no confirmation box okay as per our on submit client script we have defined there now here let's say that i am changing this impact to right now uh, high what will be happen once we change that impact to high 
this priority become uh, one P1 or critical and then our confirmation box will become so let's put the work notes and then if we try to save that confirmation box is coming now if somebody click cancel no action needed because we said that uh, return equal to false so no action no further action for the this case but if somebody click OK then only you can see if I trying to save that and then click cancel no action needed actually so this doesn't save to the database if i refresh that it will go back to that previous state so whatever what is the previous state the previous state that uh, priority was p2 so you can see it did not save actually in the system now if i click ok then only uh, it is going to be allow us to save that okay so let's see that so i will change this impact to high and then the uh, critical i mean priority become critical and then if i try to click ok uh, here it's asking uh, to select ok so if i select ok then you can see that it's uh, updating to the server so depending on your use case most of the use case is this way like in the on summit class script most of the scenario we had to validate that uh, if that is um, you know does not matches we need to just return false so you can see we are returning false and then system will not update into the backend uh, database so i hope you guys understand that's it for today if you have any question let me know in the comment section thank you very much have a great day. hello everyone in this video i am going to talk about that um, service now scripting based practices so if you are trying to uh, be a good developer or if you are starting your career as a application developer you should know that what is the best practice uh, for the scripting so let's talk about the scripting based practice in a high level so first thing first um, whenever you are writing a code if you see that first you should use comments in your code so whenever you are typing your code like var gr equal to new glide record you should mention that uh, for which purpose um, you are doing that so comments is an important factor so that in a future developer who is coming there they should know that uh, for which purpose you could declare this block secondly use white space you should not use that uh, code in a junk format you should use the keep uh, you should keep your code in a format in a quick uh, good format and you should use some spaces you should use some uh, white spaces needed then you should use the simple statement if you see that this is the javascript shorthand method like var result equal to this one this is a shorthand uh, if method what it is saying that the result is a variable that value will be decided based on this condition if x equal to equal to y then result will be a else result will be b so this is a shorthand method instead of this shorthand method you should use the if block and so that everyone can understand that if and else block so that everyone can understand so whenever you are writing a code use the simple statement uh, if possible and then uh, here we uh, you should use a constructed reusable function you should create very small small function so that that function can be used over the period multiple time okay so this is also important and also last not the least that i have not mentioned here whenever you are declaring a variable like var gr instead of var gr use that gr inc gr change so that uh, everyone understand that what you are trying to do that if record found is record found is record not found something like that meaningful variable name so that everyone understand that what you are trying to do with this variable so that if the line the code is 100 line of code uh, the sometimes in the mean meat of that uh, code everyone understand that this variable if you declare a variable a this is very um, general and misconfusing uh, variable right instead of that if you use that is record found that will understand then yes this record it, it is checking the record is found or not so your variable should be very meaningful uh, very clear instead of just declaring a simple variable called a b c something like that so this is a overall best practice for a scripting next i'll talk about that client script best practices there are some client script best practices also there so i'll talk about that also so first um, you know in the client script or whenever you are writing the client side scripting um, try to avoid that scripting part if it is possible use the UI policy if uh, you can achieve that scenario like if you want to make mandatory if you want to make read only you can simply go and then use the UI policy just using the condition instead of that you don't need to use that client script complex client script 
until unless it is a very complex scenario so whenever is possible use the ui policy instead of client script then in the client script uh, you should not use the glide record let's say that you want to fetch some uh, manager name so you you should not directly start using the glide record into the client script although it is not um best practices but you never should use that glide record in your client script instead of that you can use the glide ajax using the glide ajax you can call that glide ajax we'll talk about that what is the glide ajax in our future upcoming classes but you should not never use that glide record inside the client script because client see a client side or client script is used for the validation of the client side not the server side so you, sh you should use the uh, normal um, g form get read only set read only method next thing is that avoid get reference there is a method called get references that is not a best practice to use in the client side into your system so never use the glide reference instead of that again you can use the glide ajax then um, you can use that avoid dom manipulation in the client script you will be able to see that there are a lot of uh, javascript code written to uh, do the dom manipulation sometime what happens after upgrade this dom manipulation not works so try to avoid this dom manipulation if possible there could be some properties that can handle that there could be other settings that can handle that instead of dom manipulation we can go to the root uh, from where these things are showing and then there we can try to uh, remove that and then last not the least do not run any script um, any client script or any kind of script on the global table so in the table where you can select the incident problem change there is a table called global do not run any client script on the global table what will be happen if you write a client script on the global table each and every time for any of this table that client script will be run and then it will create some performance issue so these are the best practices you should keep in mind when you are building or doing any kind of development hello everyone welcome back to my youtube channel in this video we are going to talk about the business rule so as a developer there is a another important scripting object is called business rule we should know that what is business rule and why we should use that in our previous video we discuss about ui policy we discuss about uh, client script we discuss about ui actions uh, now we are going to discuss about business rule so business rule is a important object that um, you know uh, runs on a server side whenever any data insert or query or update the business rule can run to find out the business rule you can go to this left navigation and search that business rule and under the uh, system definition you will be find that business rule module the business rule runs based on the table so for example if you search for our table for example uh, if i take that incident you will be find out that couple of business rule are there so around 60 business rule is there in that out of box in our incident table so you can create your own in uh, business rule depending on your use cases so let's see uh, if i want to create a new business rule what are the parameter are there so if you click the new button or if you click the new button you can see that this is the how the business rule uh, module is looks like here you can define the name you can select the table uh, you have a when to run and then you have a insert and update and then actions most of the business rule have a advanced checkbox checked if you check that advanced checkbox checked you will be able to write scripting so if you select that you will be able to write some script under this advanced sections now let's say that I'm putting name again name should be meaningful I'm putting that beer testing now in this case we should define the table so based on which table um, or based on which condition or for for which table that business tool should run as it is a server side action whenever any data will be saved or update or insert that time business will run so let's say that for the timing we are going to select the table name equal to incident as we are discussing all these uh, things based on incident so what will be happen um, this business rule will be run or triggered only on the uh, on the um, whenever the, the any operation will be done to the incident now if you go to this when to run when to run section is a very important here 
you have a options called before after async display so let's talk about the before most of the business will have a before and after condition so we should understand the before and after thing so what is the before before means that before it the data is stored to the um, you know incident table let's say that you are trying to uh, save a data right let's say if i open incident record and i'll show you that so this is the incident form in this incident form um, let's say i am trying to save that so i'll click that update button what will be happen before update that to database if i want to run this business rule i will select the before now um after update let's say that i click the update i change the value to a uh, new uh, some from some steps to new and then click update so um so what will be happen before this value updated the br will be run this business will will be done if you select the before and then what is the after after means that it's saved to the database and then if you want to run some scripting um then only you can select the after there are uh the various uh, scenario where you should use the before or where you should use the after we'll discuss that upcoming all this video but this is the difference between before and after then we have a async async business rule is uh, you will understand that it will act as a after but it will not hold for all this uh, all this uh, you know uh, completion of the operation this is a very frequent question in the, your interview that what is the async business rule async business rule is like let's say that in your script uh, you are trying to delete 100 or 1000 uh, record of data you are going to delete that what will be happen after uh, after business rule will be do what if you click save and in unless all your 100 or 1000 record deleted the form will be in on hold state you won't be able to operate anything but async business rule will do something different so it will be work as after but it will not hold your form that job like deletion of this thousand or hundred record will be done in a back end but you can run or you can do your job properly and then if you see the left side you have insert update delete query so on which operation you want to delete so let's say that whenever the data is going to insert to the database if you want to run then you can select this checkbox if you want to run that um, during the update like uh, whenever the data is going to be uh, update then you want to run that business rule you can delete uh, put that if the delete i mean if the data got deleted that time if you want to run you can do that if the data is query if you want to do you can do that so these options are available so at that moment we are going to create or a sample business rule what we'll do we'll change to the before and then we'll select that inside and update so any record which is inside to the incident table or update to the incident table that time this br will be run what will be run that we can declare there so we have a uh, method we are declaring or we are using past uh gr few days ago that is called if i go here and then uh, open that scripting api or if i open this uh, i actually created one more uh, block called popular service now api where you can see that we define that client record client system so we'll talk about the client system so in a business uh, in a back background screen we use the gs.info to put the log statement or to put some information so let's say that i want to print some information in the top whenever any operation will be done we can do that using the gs method so gs is a uh, uh, you know api they have multiple methods so let's use that i would say that gs dot then you can see after dot there are multiple method the method we are going to use that add info message using that there will be info message here on the top of this incident record let's see we'll put that uh, incident updated this is a simple message we are going to put here so we'll just uh, saying that if this incident is getting insert or updated before it insert or update that br i should or i want a info message in the top of this message called incident updated or something like that okay so we'll save that and if i refresh this incident form and let's say that we are putting some information called this one 
I'm just randomly updating the short description and saving that. What will be happen? It should give us a info message. So we'll uh, click OK, and it should give a info message in the top like uh, incident updated. You can see that this message is coming from this BR. So before you insert or update you can see a uh, you if you want to do some kind of operation backend operation uh, you can do that using the business rule now either you change that before or after you will be able to see uh, the message will be pretty much similar but as operation level if you want to do or if you want to uh, run that script before um, you know hit to the database you can use that you can you should use the before business rule now let's do some more information or let's do some more scripting so we'll if in this business rule if we want to print the number right if we want to print this number how in the top of like incident updated then i want to print the number how can i do that so this is a simple you can see that in the ui action uh, you use the current object here also the current object is available you can just simply use the current dot then any of this field the number is a string field you can use the number so to get this number so we'll use that current that number what will be happen now it will be show the insert updated with the incident number let's see now let's go back and then i'm just updating that okay so i'll click ok what will be happen it will show a info message called incident updated with this incident number so i can access incident number using the current object so you can use the current dot any of this field name to access that okay so you can use any of this object and then access that so let uh, understand one more scenario the scenario is that we have in progress button right so whenever somebody click the in progress button his name should be added to here so his name should be added to assigned to column how can you do that so let's say that you click the button his name can be assigned so in that case what we will do we will uh, uh, do one thing so if you click in progress your state is actually changing right so your state is changing from on hold to in progress once your state is changing on hold to in progress we can assign this business tool or we can run that business tool and set the current logged in user let me tell you that how we can do that in the when to condition we are going to set a condition what condition we are setting that if the state changes to so we'll say that ch state changes to in progress then only we are going to update or then only we are going to run this vr now previously in eight in any of these changes the br was running the br was showing this message info message right now this info message will be only show whenever the state changes will be happen so this is not going to uh, update every time and every time if your state changes from any of this state to in progress state then only we are going to run that br let me show you that so if i refresh this incident form and let's say that i am updating this uh, you know i'm updating this uh, something and then clicking save is this my br will be run no this br will not be run anymore let's see see the br this incident saved but the br did not run but the br will be run if the state changes to on hold either it is by here by drop down or the user click in progress and then if the state changes to in progress the beer will be done let's see so we'll click in progress click ok as you can see this incident updated this is the number is showing and then info message is showing so your the beer is running whenever the actual state changes to in progress the beer run now our condition is what whenever the uh, state changes will be run the beer will be run and then we want to assign um, in assign to we want to set the current logged in user how we can do that so we will do here we will put the one thing called current object so if you recall that in our uh, uh, ui action we use the current then we we can uh, set any of this field value so we want to set that assigned to so we'll copy that field name and paste here okay so we want to set assigned to okay 
how or which user will be assigned to assigned to user will be current logged in user now question is how i can fetch the current logged in user to fetch the current logged in user you can use the gs dot then there is a method called get user id if you put the get um gs dot get you will be able to find out many method and one of the method is the get user id using the get user id you will be able to see that get sys id of the current user you can see it's saying the gets the sys id of the current user so this will return that current uh, current logged in user now i don't need to use the current dot update you will be able to see in the ui action we used to set that current dot update but in the business rule the best practice is that do not use current dot update method in the business rule so you should not use the current dot update what will be happen you set the current dot assign to equal to gs dot get user as it is a before business rule it will set that uh, value assigned to is a current user and then as it is a business be, uh, before business tool it will automatically save that so let me show you that so we just did that let's save that you can see i just put one line of code called current dot assign to equal to gs dot get user id and what will be happen if i ref, uh, let's say change that to new and then click i'll change to low and then click save and save that and now next time if i click in progress uh, it should assign that incident to my name so this is my incident which is uh, right now assigned to is blank now if i click uh, in progress this uh, as the state will be changed from new to uh, in progress this business rule will run and then this incident should be assigned to me let's see so i'll click that in progress and you can see our business will trigger and if i go back and you can see that it set uh, my name okay here under uh, you know admin section so this way you can actually run a code to set some value even through the business rule or you can do any operation so one of the simple operation i just show you here using that gs dot get uh, user id method next also if you see that under this this is a incident form here under this related record you will be able to find out one uh, field call actual start actual start means that uh, we have a um, field that is called actual start okay so if that field is not available in your pdi you can go and go to the form layout and add that so this actual start i want to set that uh current time whenever somebody change the state to in progress what will be happen so if that the incident is new nothing is going to happen but whenever the uh, state changes to in progress i am assigning that current user here as well as i want to set that actual start equal to current time okay how i can do that so we can simply uh, use that method so what will be happen we will copy this actual start uh, this field name and similarly we will use that current uh, we will use that current here then we will put the actual start date and here now how i can put the current uh, um, um, date so let's see that what is the field this field is date field or date and time field this is a date and time field we can use that one of the method we have is called uh glide date time and then glide date we have a two object called glide date and glide date and time we'll discuss in our upcoming video also detail about glide date time and glide date um so if you want to get the current date or date time we can use that new glide date one object is glide date another is a glide date time we can use that glide date time to get current date time so we will uh, simply save that and see this is working or not so it's just simply said that start current dot works underscore start equal to new light date time now if i change back to this um, let's say in new state and then if i want to see this is working or not so this is the new state and then if i click in progress this should assign to me and then this actual start should be fill up with that new date time let's see so 
so you can see uh, after clicking the in progress it assigned uh, if i go back here so it's it's assigned to me and then current date time i mean actual start is filled with uh, the current date and time so let's see one of the use case here and uh, so let's say that a incident this is the incident if that incident got resolved so in case this incident got resolved what we want we want to be um, uh, update all this incident communication plan as a uh, so right now these all are open so what we want whenever this uh, this incident is going to be resolved state we want to be uh, make this uh, incident state from open to uh, let's see what state they have we want to open that uh, we want to update their state to closed so this is the requirement okay so i just show you right how you can access that or how you can write the business rule and using the business rule you can do this operation now let's say we want to achieve this case to achieve that case what should be our condition the state if the incident is changed to resolve so we'll change that to incident state changes to resolve whenever this incident will be resolved state and then we'll change that before to after right why before because before it's uh, hit to the server i don't want to delete that or i don't want to update their state if or after the hit to the server and it got resolved then only i want to update their state to uh, close state so this is the reason i change before business rule to after business rule and now i'll just show you that how you can write the code so we discuss about this code in our background script i just show you that how using the background script how you can query and how you can update the record similar method we are going to use here how can we use that we'll say that where gr or uh, uh, inc plan i think so these things we use that inc plan equal to new glide record and here we are going to pass the table name right so we'll go and open a record so the table or this uh this table name called incident underscore alert you will be able to find out from url i'll put that incident underscore alert and what we want how do we we'll find out that record so to find out this record incident under this uh, incident plan there is a field called source underscore incident this field or this uh, this is a reference field it means that this store a society so what will be our condition so in this case our condition will be we are going to find out all this incident alert table where grinc plan dot add query i just show you that how we can use the add query here this field source underscore incident field value will be current incident so if you see the source equal to incident equal to current this 00530 this incident values right so we will uh, you uh, you know use the current sys id so we'll use a current dot sys underscore id so what will be happen using this method we are going to find out that all this incident plan where the source incident equal to current sys id and then we are going to query and then after that we want to uh, you know update their state what should be the state the state value should be close to so we'll say that gr inc plan dot state equal to closed and then we are going to use that gr inc plan dot update multiple because we are not going to update one single record we are going to update multiple so you we will use that update multiple let's save that so this code should help us to find out all this incident related to this one and whenever this incident got resolved their state should be automatically resolved let's see so this code is saved let's refresh this incident form and if i change this uh, state to resolve there are uh, mandatory field so let's put that and then if i save that 
this incident should resolve and then inside that incident plan should close and you can see that all this incident communication plan are closed previously it was open state so this way you can write that br that can run based on state changes based on value changes or based on any updation of this form you can run a business rule to do some operation in our upcoming video we will come with lot of examples but this is our base um, you should uh, understand how to query in our or how to delete or how to update in our class 2 or class 3 because most of the time we are going to use that uh, those method in our scripting so that's it for today if you have any question let me know my comment sections hello everyone in this video we are going to talk about the script include what is the script include and why do we need the script include that thing we are going to discuss in our today's session so script include is a reusable component and this script include is uh, used for multiple purposes so we'll uh, see that what is the script include and how we can use that so first thing if you go to this left navigation and then type that script include you will be able to find out under system administration there is a module called script include so this script include is a important and then very useful where you can create multiple function and that function can be called over and over uh, the period so let's say i'm going to click a new button this script include does not need any uh, table name um, now script include is uh, client callable um, so here you can use that script include from that you can call this script include from the client side uh, client script or you can call this script include from the business rule so we are going to use that script include name call incident util something so this is the name i'm just putting that or utils i'm just putting and click outside you can see that with the name of these the uh, some script generated so this script by default generated based on the name now after that you can create multiple function inside the script include okay for example we are putting that a call i'm going to put that communication plan update so this is a uh, script include function name we'll put the colon then we'll put the function keyword and here we are going to use that braces and then end this with the semicolon end this with the comma sorry it's not a semicolon it's a comma so this function is declared now this function can be called through the business rule through the background script through the uh, client script everywhere we can call depending on our use cases what is the use case let's understand so let's say this is a script include and each script include function should or each script include function can return multiple things let's say that i am returning uh, hello i am script include so this is the message i am returning i'll just format that so this is a um, script include that returned a message so we'll just save that so this script include got inserted and it uh, have a one function called communication plan update and that returning one object okay now here this script include can be called from business rule as i mentioned let's say that this is the business rule that we have created earlier and this is doing um, something like it is closing or doing a lot of things here inside this i just want to do or i just want to call this script include how do you call that so we'll say that we can declare a variable called var script include equal to any variable you can declare then you can equal to then define the new keyword after new you have to put or you have to use that script include name the script include name is incident utils so you are going to put that script include name after that um, you know the bracket then dot when you define or you a script include can have multiple function so you can uh, call this function so we are going to call this function we will use this function name and then again this one so this way we can call a script include and what will be happen this si object this uh, or this variable will store that 
data that will return the script include what it is returning this is returning hello i am a script include this value they are returning so we will get or we will get the value equal uh, various equal to this one now if i want to put some info message so as we know that we can use the gs dot add info message i used that last time there is another method called gs dot add error message info and error are difference is one will become as a blue color another will be red color and then i will put si object si object holding what si object holding this value whatever is returning this is returning hello i am a script include this one okay so we'll just do a format and when it's done i will just uh, uh, put uh, state changes to resolve or state changes to in progress any state if it is resolve or in progress i want to uh, you know update that changes to here okay let's do and save that what will be happen whenever i will change this incident state from resolve to in progress there will be a uh, uh, message info message in the top called hello i am uh, script include now the that message is co not coming from this beer this message is coming from script include function let's see so we are going to change this result to in progress and then save that and i should get a message on top of that so we are expecting some message from the script include but we got undefined let's see uh, if you see that uh, this incident util is coming as a blue uh, this color green color let's see if we change this name let's say that i'll say that um we'll say demo util i'll just i just updated the name that uh, here it got updated i'll just copy that and let's save that and instead of this in, uh, incident util i'll put that demo util and let's save that go to this incident and then if we change to the resolve state right now so this is in in progress so if we change to the result our beard should run again and we will put something here and then save that and let's see that works as per expected or not and here you can see that i am getting that message called hi hello i am script include so this is successfully able to call we are able to successfully call that script include and then from the script include we are able to message that now how we can use this script include the script include can be used um instead of if you have huge line of code into the um, business rule or the code is used or uh, over multiple time you can simply uh, use the script include i'll just cut down this message uh, or cut down these things and paste here so what will be happen this code will be run under this function and then um it will update their state to close whatever it is uh, and then this i just need to be call this script include so i'll just call the script include from this business rule and then uh, it will do whatever is needed so let's do that and here uh, you would will return that call return in i uh, will put that incident plan updated so this is the message i am going to put there and what will be happen this function or um, from this business tool we are not calling this uh, script this is we moved to the script include function now if you see that here it have a one thing called current dot sys id this current object is only accessible to this uh, your uh, business tool how we can pass that we can simply pass this um, so like a function this function we can declare a, a parameter called current then we can use that so we declare a parameter called current and now we can use this current object and similarly we just need to be pass this current object from here so this is the uh, process so we can create a parameter and then pass this parameter so i'm just passing the parameter current and now under this script include i can access this current object and do all this stuff so i have declared under this function one parameter called current and then whenever i'm calling this function from where i should pass also the current object from the business rule or wherever so we are passing this current object here okay 
now let's see so we are going to open a uh, another incident so these incidents all are closed we'll open another uh, communication plan uh, let's say that we are going to open this type of incident so let's open this incident so this is an incident where you can see uh, it have a three communication plan and as per our code we move our code from business rule to the script include what we are expecting we are expecting that whenever this incident will be resolved uh, our communication plan will be resolved through that business rule and script include let's see so we'll put that and save that we'll click ok so you can see I got a message called incident plan updated and then all these in incident communication plan updated to close state previously this one I think just now created let's see created time so this has been created uh, recently after our business will trigger I think so let's see the created time also you can see this is just now created so basically this way you can actually uh, call the uh, script include from the business rule that's it for today if you have any question let me know in my comment section thank you very much have a great day hello everyone in this video we are going to um, talk about that conditional block so I'll just simply talk about that how you can use the if and else block um, with the help of that how we can update the state also so what is the criteria let's see uh, let's understand that so this is the incident form and in this incident form I have created two communication uh, plan uh, demo 1 and demo 2 and here all the state are in uh, open state right now so what we are going to do that uh, whenever the incident state will be changed uh, to on hold um, the if the incident uh, is changed to on hold the state will be changed to cancel and if it is a resolved state so the way it behaves right now if it is resolved state it should be closed so this is the conditional so it's a conditional block we are putting the condition how can we do that so we created a business rule last time if you recall that this business rule runs um, whenever your state change to resolve or in progress this business rule run called BR testing so if the state changes to resolve or in progress it is calling a script include called demo util we have created and let's open this script include and in the script include whatever it's what it is doing without checking that what state it is is it in progress or on hold it is simply closing out all these our um, communication plan now we are going to put a condition based on the condition we can verify and then we can close that for example if my incident is in progress we are going to cancel that or if my incident is resolved we are going to close that so this is a simple condition let's see how we can achieve that so in this um, here if I open this uh, communication plan we have three state one is open cancel and close so if it is in progress we are saying that cancelled alright so let's see that in the demo utils we are going to in the script include we are putting a condition so let's say that we put the if and then under this if you are putting that current dot state so we'll say the state equal to equal to what is the in progress value in progress value is um, 2 so if that uh, value is 2 we are going to cancel else if we are going to close that so we'll say that current dot state equal to equal to 6 then we are going to close that so we'll put this way now uh, in our previous some previous video I told you that to put comments for the future references you can put that state is in progress do this thing state is resolved then do this step so what will be happen so that uh, they will know that uh, uh, the developer or next developer who is reading your code they should not go and check that what is the state to means they don't need to go to this incident form and they don't need to uh, go and then use that instead of that they can simply know that okay so this uh, state uh, to means in progress and what we want if that is uh, state 2 we want to cancel that and if it is uh, 
you know here we want to maybe i just want if state is in progress we will close that and if it is um result we will cancel that so what is that back end value cancelled and then i'll remove that so this is a conditional block also i talk about that white space if you recall that so i have put some white space so that next developer it's better or uh, more and then uh, more they can understand that so there is a small a white space i left so that it is easy to understand so let's save that so if it is state is in progress we are making them close if it is uh, a result we are putting them cancel let's refresh that incident form so this is the incident form i just put that um, you know in progress uh, let's say i just change that state to in progress and let's set that configuration item and save that so as per our uh, this state should be uh, you know incident plan updated and this all um, you know state is closed so our if block actually works this go to this state and then it close that now if we resolve that same code or same function should call and then it's updated to cancel let's see is that happen or not so we'll just move that in progress to resolve and then we'll put some resolution note put something or uh, let's save that so our uh, communication incident communication plan should be updated and it should cancel that but there is a some uh, you know validation already placed because of that it couldn't update i just show you for the example purpose but when we are trying to close to cancel uh, it's showing that it's not a valid transition so because of there is some validation in backend so that's not allowing us, us to update that but system tried that system tried to say that so this way uh, you can put some conditional block here and that can uh, you know help you or uh, depending on which uh, case like you can put if and else block hello everyone in this video i'm going to talk about one of the important api called glide aggregate uh, we should know that what is the glide aggregate and why we uh, use the glide aggregate um, if you go for the interview um, there are very um, similar type of question everyone asks for interview like uh, how you can use the glide aggregate and there could be a similar kind of question they ask like if i want to get assignment groups and per assignment group how many incident are there how do we get that so this type of question is very frequent to ask in if you go for the interview let's see that how we can find out in our today's sessions so first this is my incident table in this incident table i have not put any kind of filter this is all incident now the first filter or first thing i just want to put that in this uh, whole uh, data there should be some uh, some field which is assignment group we are going to group by with the assignment groups so in this assignment group we are going to filter out so if there is any uh, if there is any empty assignment group we are going to filter out that so we don't want any data which is uh, not uh, which is empty we don't want that kind of data now if i want to group by this data let's see how many data for each assignment group i want i can see so right now we have around uh, you can see that as uh, in the bottom we can see the seven uh, seven groups are there so these are the seven group and each group have a separate or uh, um, uh, some number of incident are assigned for example this database have a two incident assigned uh, this hardware group have a nine incident now interviewer uh, is um, a question is that how we can through the script how we can fetch the data so f how we can fetch that age um, group have how many incident how we can fetch that so this could be your um, um, interview question so that's the thing i just want to explain or i just want to write down here so first thing first we are going to um, background script under the background script we are going to write the code so first thing we'll declare a variable called vaga var ga variable ga is one uh, meaning is glide aggregate you can declare any kind of variable g uh, glide aggregate incident anything so let's say instead of ga i'll put that ga inc now we'll declare that new keyword we'll use the new keyword and then after that we are going to use that glide aggregate method so using the glide aggregate method we can get group by we can uh, you know do or we can uh, do the count all these stuffs we can do here so first thing on which table we are we want to do glide aggregate we want to aggregate on the incident table we just put that incident table 
now after that what is the specific condition the condition is that assignment group should not be empty so in that case we'll put the GAINC dot at um, at uh, here we'll say at null query so we'll put that at null query here or at not null query and here we'll put that um, specific field if you see the pop-up the top it is showing that add null query that query adds a filter to return record where the specific field is not null so our case what is the specific field our case assignment group is the specific field so we'll use that so we'll copy this field name called assignment group and then paste here so this assignment group should not be null so this is what we are saying that okay now after that what we are trying to say that we are trying to find out the count for assignment group so we will say that GAINC dot add aggregate so we will use that add aggregate under this add aggregate there are multiple aggregation option so you can do average you can do um, sum you can do a lot of things so what we want we want that count okay what count we want we count on assignment group so we'll say that assignment group field i want to find out that count after that we'll just simply use the gi gainc gainc dot query so this way we will be able to find out or we'll be able to query all this incident where assignment group is not empty and then i want to find out that count of the assignment group after that we are going to use that while loop under this while loop we are going to use the gainc dot next so we are going to use that next here and after that we are going to use that uh, in the bracket we are going to use that where the assignment group and then how we can get the assignment group we are going to use the gainc dot uh assignment groups dot get display value so because as it is a reference field it it will return a seaside so we want the display value next we want to find out the count so we'll say that va a s g count and then how can we get the count to get the count we are going to use the g a i n c dot uh then dot get aggregate so there is a uh, add aggregate and get aggregate using the add aggregate you can add the aggregate on specific field and using the get aggregate you can um, get the aggregate so what is the uh, aggregate we want that count and on which field we want that um, count on the assignment group so this is the things and then after that we are going to print that so this uh, this is a very normal question in your interview they ask so let's say that i'll say that assignment group then i want to print the name to print the name i'll concatenate that plus sign and then i'll put that asg that holds the group name then i want to put some plus and then under this concatenation again i'll put some spaces and then i'll put that um, dash sign and then put the count then here under this colon i want to print the count so we'll say that asg count so this variable we are going to use that so overall if you see that we have not write much bigger code we are just saying that find out that incident where the assignment group is not empty and then add aggregate on the count on that assignment group and find out that count and then what we are saying that um, querying and then under this while loop we are finding out that all these assignment groups display value and their count let's run that and as you can see under this database we have two hardware we have nine then major incident we have four then uh, uh, we have a uh, network six open space one uh, these these are all are showing right now so database two hardware nine then a major incident is four then network is six then we have open space one then service uh, desk 17 and then uh, software have nine so this way we can uh, you know 
do a uh, aggregate function and with the help of aggregate function we can uh, group by and using the group by we can get that uh, I mean using this count method we can group by and then get their count for specific assignment group so it could be it is not assignment group if you want to do a uh, group by or if you want to find out that based on category also you can apply the same rule so if I group by the category uh, you can see that uh, we have a category so we will just copy click all and then filter out the category uh, where the category is empty so we will just say that category is empty or uh, whatever is there I'm not putting that empty condition here so if I want to group by again category it is simple process so same process we are going to de uh, uh, deactivate this line and instead of assignment group we are going to use that uh, category and here we are going to use the category and here we are going to use the category so this way it will uh, you know just give you that uh, category let's see I'll just update that category and run that so um, the category mt4 is count 4 then database hardware inquiry network software this way we can find out that mt have 4 database hardware network inquiry network and software so this way you can even do on a specific field either it is a category either it is a uh, state a priority or assignment group depending on that you can do that now what could why we writing that code or why we are trying to find out that let's say that tomorrow if you want to send a notification for each uh, assignment group manager uh, that uh, these many incident are pending or these many incident are open for your queue weekly you want to run a schedule job and send that you can do that so you can simply create a schedule job and that schedule job will do what this schedule job will be done weekly and then that will send a notification weekly to that your manager or group manager uh, that also you can do through this script so that's it for today in our upcoming video you will be able to see a lot of example scenario a lot of um, others api meantime if you have any question please uh, let me know my comment section thank you very much have a great day so in this day we will talk about that a specific requirement i have received few requirements so far and i am very glad that you st guys already started commenting and giving your requirement definitely i need your support to run this series so let's see that which one I can pick that the first requirement I want to pick that this problem requirement because this requirement I about to create for I by myself and to give you guys but you already commented I am glad that and I am going to complete this requirement today so let's understand that what is the requirement first so first requirement is that we have a one problem under that we have a multiple incident when problem got resolved then the child incident get resolved automatically means when get parent get resolved the child incident should be get resolved or closed automatically the requirement the customer or the requirement is that there should be a problem under the problem there will be two or three in child incident so once the problem will be resolved then the child incident should be resolved then by which let's say that then in this case let's first think for a second that what object i should be used and then what method i should use that so let's go to this object so what object i should use under this object first and secondly which method i should use to resolve this issue first understand or first think for a second let me give you my answer so first object i am going to use that business rule here and then method I am going to use this glide record method okay now this is uh, this will be my requirement and let's implement this requirement so this is my service now instance and if we go back to my problem so let's let me go back to the problem ticket maybe I'll open this one this problem I am going to resolve that and if there is any incident attached to this problem once this problem will be resolved this incident should be resolved so let's first see that what is happening in without our configuration so if we don't do anything 
what is happening at that moment. So let me add some incident. So I'm adding these two incident at that moment. So these two problem are added right now. So if I resolve this, what is happening first understand that. And now I'll click the resolve. And this problem is resolved at that moment. And what is the incident state? Let's see. You can see this incident state is still in the new state. So I want to make that whenever the problem will be resolved, this incident should be automatically resolved. So let's build that. So the first thing I mentioned that I need to use the my object equal to uh, business rule and the method I should use the glide record method. So let's let me uh, update this close to I mean status to close. First, at, what I'll do, I'll go back to the business rule. Here, I'm going to create a new business rule. I'll click the advanced checkbox, put the name. So let's say that um, child incident closed or maybe resolved. Here I need to put the table name on what condition I want to run this business rule. My condition should be after because after closing this um, problem, I want to run certain thing. I want to close all this child incident and then action insert or update, definitely update because then the problem will be changed state one by one and then uh, finally it will be resolved reached to the resolved state. So the stay uh, the checkbox will be updated. Filter condition. Let's say that I'll put the state changes to or changes to resolve. So if the state changes to resolve at that moment, I should write some script. I should write the script so that I can close the incident. Now I'll go to the advanced section. First thing I'll put that GS dot add info message or error message to check that this script is running on the certain condition. The whatever condition I have put, the condition is satisfied and then the, this, this script is run. Later, after implementing this one, I'll remove this code. So br run something like that now i have to find out all the incident which is associated with this problem how do i find out that so you can see under problem there is a related list and under this related list all these incidents are there so what i'll do i'll right click and open in a new tab so how do we know that so these this is the incident table find out all the record which problem equal to current problem number. So this is the problem number problem. When it will be resolved state, I should find out all the incident which the where the problem field is fitted with this problem number or this problem sys ID, right? So first I need to query to the incident table with this condition and then I need to update their state, right? So let's go back here. First, I'll write the v var gr equal to new glide record. So I am using the glide method. You can see method is glide record. We discussed that we have the scripting uh, server script. We have a method called glide record. Using the glide record, we can query to the particular table. So which table I'm going to query? I'm going to put the queries incident. Okay. Now, what is the condition? The condition is the problem num problem. I will copy this query and then paste the condition. So this is the condition problem underscore ID. This is the field name on the incident table. And then here the problem number is there. So this is the problem sys ID. How do we query that? First to query that I can put the gr dot add query. Okay. And under which field I am going to query, I am going to query to this problem ID field. Okay. 
and then comma what should be the value value should be this sys id so this sys id will be the current problem so this is the one problem number tomorrow i'll create another problem and then i'll resolve that so that that problem sys id i should put that to get this sys id the problem sys id in the business rule what we have to do under this business rule we have a current so we need to write the current dot the field name that i am trying to access so this this table name should be sorry this table name should be problem table so this business rule will be run on the problem table and then the state changes to resolve and then if i do the current dot sys id what will be returned it will be return the current problem sys id okay so in in our case it should give me this sys id okay so this problem sys id then what will be happen it will query to the incident table with this field called problem underscore id with the problem number or problem sys id is equal to 40013 this one now so we said that this fields needs to be done now we have to put the gr dot query so it means that i need to query that so i said i target that this field has to be query and then i run this call query that now we need to find so once we query that it will return what it will be written it will return couple of row so what it will return it will return this row this row like that one by one so i have to write that so how many row we don't know how many row it can be one it can be 10 so we we can expect the multiple row with that reason i'll put the while in bracket what i'll do i'll put the gr dot next so this is the method using that we can start accessing row one by one after that i need to start a brace and here what i will do with this row i want to set their state equal to what the resolve right so i want to set their state from new to resolve state right So in that case, I need to set their value, right? So this is the state field, and I want to set their state equal to result, which backend value is the six. So you can see, I have installed the plugin, uh, service now extension plugin. So that's the reason I can see this result drop down state uh, backend value is the six, and the field name is the state. So what I want, I want gr, and then I what I want to do, I want to set the value, right? So gr dot set value you can then mention and on which field I want to set the value on the state field comma what is the value the value should be six and then after that what I want to do I want to do a update so let's do that gr dot update either you can use the gr dot update multiple or you can use the gr dot update if you use the gr dot update it will be update one by one if you use the gr dot update multiple it will update all the together so let's understand one more time first it will show that the business rule is running after that we are going to query to the incident table we are going to query with a condition that problem underscore id under the incident table we have a field called problem underscore id give me those incident which have the current problem number so give me what i am trying to see under this give me all this incident where this have the current problem id it will return all these two problem id one by one after that i am trying to query and then using the gi while method i am getting one incident one by one so this is the one incident this is another incident and what i am doing i am setting their value and then updating their value to resolve so if i go to this incident and then if we change this incident state to resolve you will be able to see there are two fields is mandatory one is the close code another is the close note so these two field need to be populated here so let's go back our business rule and then i'll put these two value static value let's say that i'm going to set that set value and then the field name is the close note so what i'm trying to do that see this incident if you are trying to resolve these two fields are mandatory we need to put certain value so what value we can put that we can we are uh, the way we set the state we are setting the close node let's say that closed by problem 
okay and even if you want to populate the problem number you can just put that plus sign and then put the current so as i mentioned that this business rule is running on the problem take bill so we can access any of this field under i mean any of this field on the problem table to access that we just need to put the current and then that field name the way we are accessing the sys id similarly we can access the number so we'll put the number here and then we have one more field mandatory which is that resolution code the backend name is the close code and here we can put anything right anything so what i'll do i'll put that under this called gr dot set value and then what field the field name is the close code and what value let's say at that moment we can say any of this value call resolved by problem so these things we are going to be populate here okay and then i'll just say that and then what i'll do i'll open a problem and associate with some other incident and try to resolve that so this business rule is right now updated i'll go back to this uh, couple of uh, let's say i'm opening another problem associating with some other uh, incident so by mistakely i put another closed incident that's fine so what i'll do now i'll resolve this uh, problem and then these two at least these two incidents should be updated as a result let's see and if we resolve this incident so let's try to resolve this uh, if we resolve this problem so the at that moment this a uh, problem is resolved and then our business will run and if we go back to our list and you can see all this incident uh, all this incident got resolved so that is how we can implement your requirement so this requirement is implemented if you have any question um, i can give you this uh, link so i'll give you this sheet link uh, you can put your comments uh, here if you have any comments so that's it for today if you have any question let me know my comment section thank you very much have a great day In day four, let's see that what requirement I can fulfill. So first requirement, I'm going to fulfill that. So let's say that the button or uh, the requirement, let's understand first. So create a button called close my incident on the incident form so that when user click on the button, incident will be resolved or closed with correct resolution code. This UI action only visible on new state and created by user so basically the requirement is that i should have create a button on the incident form called close my incident and then when somebody click on that uh, so what we have to do we can um, resolve the incident and then uh, once it is resolved the it has to be set some resolution code static code and then this ui action will be visible on the new state so first on the object what method or what object we should use we should use the ui action object and then method in this case uh, we can do the glide record or else i will use the current method i will discuss that uh, what is current uh, in uh, in a bit okay so let's uh, implement that in my personal service now instance so before uh, you implement this solution first go to this ui action table under this ui action you will be able to see a lot of ui action is available first search with the table name equal to incident and see what all incident uh, ui action is available so you can see i have around 31 uh, uh, ui action which is running on the uh, uh, incident table basically now you need to find out that any uh, related ui action is already exist if it already exists that in related incident then you unnecessarily don't need to create that or can you modify that existing uh, UI action? Then you can do that. Let's say that I'm going to create a new UI, a new uh, development. So what I'll do, I'll click the new button. And meantime, I will open that incident um, in, in the next step. So let, let's say that I'm opening this, uh, this incident at that moment. So let me open that incident. 
So let's say that what state we have, we have that new in progress on hold resolve cancel. So I'm going to create a button called cancel instead of the requirement that you guys give me that close my incident instead of close my incident, I'm going to create a button called cancel. And this cancel button will be visible only who created by and then definitely in the new state. So the cancel button will be visible only on the new state and then the cancel button will be uh, visible on whoever is created the incident to that user only okay and then when somebody click that button called cancel this uh, uh, you know the state incident state should be updated to the cancel state so that's the requirement i'm going to fulfill so first say that in this uh, under this ui action what a table I have to select the table name uh, um, is already selected now I have to put the name so let's say that I'm putting the name whatever name I'm going to put that the same name will be visible here you guys already know so I'm putting that the cancel incident fine under that we have to define the order and then action action name if you want to put you put otherwise leave that at the moment this is not use case for us now during uh, the insert or update I should show no um, I, I only should um, show the button only update and then where this button should be visible I am saying that this button should be visible on the form I will check that and then here I am going to write the code. The first code is the condition I have to define that on the condition um, on which condition this button will be visible the first condition is that current dot state what will be the state so the state will be one means that uh, in the new state this button will be visible okay what does it mean by current current means that where this ui action is that right now present that record okay or maybe that object and then we can dot work to that any particular field so let's say that if this button will be visible here then current mean that this record okay and then I can access any of this record field let's say the state impact urgency I can put or I can get any of this okay so fine I mentioned that the current dot state equal to one under the condition so it means that um, it means that this button whatever button I am going to create that button will be only visible whenever the state is one if the state is in progress or other this button won't be visible so let's create that button first so the button is created with this condition current dot state equal to one the current we used only for the server side script so at that moment this ui action is the server side if you want to make this ui action in the client side then you have to check this client call level option check now under the incident form if i refresh that my button should be visible on the new state and you can see cancel incident button is visible at that state is one if i change this state to two and then save that this button won't be visible and you can see the button is not visible again I'm moving back to that new state and you can see the button is again visible now what is the criteria here it's saying that so whenever I click the button it should uh, close or maybe cancel at that our case and then it should set some static value all right so if we go back here so if we want to change this state to cancel none of these fields are actually mandatory you can see although the requirement says that i should set some value so i'll change this close note somewhere that this is closed by the um opened by user or something like that so fine to to by clicking this button i should update the state right so what i'll do here i need to write the code so what i'll write that the current dot state here i need to put the state value of the cancel cancel value is the eight so i'll put that eight okay so it means that uh, this is going to be set that current dot state equal to eight the value is going to be set there and then i'm trying to set that uh, a resolution code so let's say this is a field name called close note i'm going to set that called current dot field name here i can put any static value so let's say that i'm going to say that closed by uh and then i if i want to populate that any of these at the moment i can populate but i'm not going to that details at the moment i'll say that closed by 
uh, oak paint values or something like that. So I'm just putting simple keyword static at that moment. I can put the username, but I'm not putting at that moment. Uh, um, okay. Let's save that uh, 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 at that moment. I'll just save that. And then uh, what we are trying to do, we are trying to update the record. So we'll put that current dot um, update method here. Okay. So if we put the current dot update, the record will be got updated. And then if you want to uh, show this row, so I'm not putting the condition call, it should be only visible to that um, um, particular logged in user. You can put that like and, and then current dot uh, open by like that equal to then put the gs dot get user id but that stage i have not reached so i'm not trying to put that at that moment okay fine um in the under the required roles if you want to specify any role you can just specify that okay and then just simply uh, save that at that moment so let's refresh this uh form and then uh, here this button is visible right now and then this is the resolution note if we click cancel uh, incident this incident has to be cancelled so you notice that once i click the cancel button it is redirecting to the other page right so it is redirecting to basically another page we can discuss that um, later because we have not reached that stage yet. Uh, after uh, clicking that button, the state got cancelled and here the resolution code is populated, hard coded. We can put that um, you know, uh, other code to stay on the same page, but we have not reached on that point at that moment. So that's it for today. Thank you very much. Keep posting your uh, requirement into my, my sheet. Um, like here you can put as I mentioned that you can um, put your requirement under this requirement sheet you can put your requirement so thank you very much have a great day so today's requirement is that all about that the requirement let's see the let's understand first that what is the requirement so the requirement saying that on incident form we have a caller field which is a reference field I want to create four more fields which is a read only Example, mobile number, email address, first name, last name. Whenever we select the caller, it should automatically uh, auto-populate the above caller details using the client Ajax and script include. So let's complete this requirement today. So what they are trying to say that under this, let's first understand the requirement. So what they are trying to say that there is an incident form. Under this incident form, let me open this particular incident. What they are saying that we have a field called caller and then there should be uh, two or I mean four fields like first name, last name, other like that. And then whenever I select this caller, this first name, last name should be auto populated here. Like, um, so let's see when I click that I have first name, last name here, right? And then maybe a mobile number here somewhere, right? So that number or that detail has to be populated here on the incident they are going to create a custom field using that i should query and then pre-populate those details so that is the requirement definitely we can complete this requirement using the client ajax and then script include there is also a quick mechanism um, or quick thing that we can do without any scripting also i'll uh, talk about that today also so before I go to that, if you have any kind of requirement, um, if you are seeing my video and if you have any kind of requirement, which is mostly in the out of box, because if you ask me to create a custom table which have your organization, that is a little difficult. But any out of box uh, things that have fitted with your requirement, if you want me to do that, you can go back to my uh, here under this case here, and then here, uh, I mean this, uh, you know, script document and then here you can this is the requirement sheet here you can put your requirement and submit that it will create a record under this sheet and then i can basically um, create a video and explain you um, in um, by this video and then you can get the details so basically to implement that we have two methods so if you 
want to create the four fields, you can create that four fields. Otherwise, simply you can dot work this table and then get this uh, details from this table, user table directly, right? Because the user table is a reference field. You can simply right click, go and then form layout and then dot work and then bring um, those details directly to this uh, incident form. And then later, if you want to make this read only, you can um, create client script or other steps to make this read only. So let me do that. I right click here and go to the form layout and then probably after this caller, I'll search with the caller and then if you see caller have a plus sign and then this plus sign is basically denoting that it's a reference field and I can drill down that. So if I click here, expand selected reference field and then here I can say that mobile number. So I can bring this caller mobile number directly here and uh, move to after caller. And if you notice that right now it is showing that caller dot mobile number. It means that where whatever the caller details is there, caller mobile number is there, I can automatically pre-populate it here. You can see this mobile number is right now visible. Now if I go back, uh, if I go back to this, if I go back to this user um, record and then um, if I update here, let's say that I have a mobile number call. So let's say that this is my mobile number. And if I save that and then refresh my form here, I don't need to write any kind of single line of code. I can mark this field is read only by creating a UI policy directly. And then you can see it's automatically populating this mobile number from this caller. So if I change the caller, the next caller mobile number will be automatically populated here. So I don't need to write any single line of code. So if I, let's say, pick any other uh, user who have the mobile number, let's say, I'll pick. These are the user have mobile number and if I select their uh, number and it's automatically populated their number. So I don't need to write the code. Basically, it is pointing to the CC user table. It is dot working from the CC user table. But in case definitely you need a custom field or you have any other operation that you want to perform, then we can go for the Glide Ajax. So I'm doing a Glide Ajax for that. Okay. So what I'll do, I'll go configure form layout and then I'll remove this number, mobile number, and then I'll do Glide Ajax and show you because this session is all about the scripting part. So I'll focus on the scripting part. So I will remove this mobile number and here I'll create all So now you can see these two fields are present. Now using this right click configure dictionary, either you can make this read only, or maybe you can write the script or UI policy, you can mark this to read only. Depending on your use case, you can do that. So first thing, um, let's say that um, what object we are going to use, we are using the script include first one thing. Next, we are using that client script. We need to use the client script. Okay, so these two object we have to use and then under this method, we are going to use that Glide Ajax and we have to use that Glide Record. So these two uh, things we need to be done here. Okay. So these are the object and these are the method I'm going to use that. So let's see again. So we are going to use the client script as a client side. And then uh, under the server side, we are going to use that script include. And then the method we are basically using here called glide record one and then glide ajax method. So these are the things we are going to use in our today's sessions. So let's start coding first. So first I'm going to create a client script. So I'll go back to the client script module and then I'm going to create the client script. So that whenever this field value, caller field value changes at that moment, I should um, use this, uh, uh, this field and then populate that. The simplest way is that glide reference, but service not does not recommend the glide reference. Why? We'll come that point later. Um, but uh, we should use the glide ajax instead of glide reference. Glide reference required very less port, but it is it it does not recommend it by service node until unless you have specific requirement. All right. So first in the name we should put any name meaningful name. So I'll say that 
caller details here and here under the table i should select the incident table so basically it, it should run on the incident table that's what i'm trying to say and then um what type of um, things type of script include it should be on change script include so i select that on i mean what type of client script it should be on change so i select the on change so it means that whenever this field value will be changes i should be call the script include then we have a field we need to select the field which field so the caller field changes we are going to run the script so simply on the very first line i am going to put the alert that um, script run it means that whenever you change the value um, on the incident table it will give the alert that script run so that we know that our client script is running and as expected fine and then what uh, the script we have to write so basically we have to call a script include with the specific value what value we need to we need to pass this caller value and then we need to get the caller details from the script include so we need to create a script include so we can merge or you can use any existing script include which already there or if there is no existing script include we can create our own script include so we have to go back to the script include module again because this script needs to be right side by side because i am not set yet so i will go back to the script include module simply on the first time i'm going to create a um, script include call the name is the user details name should not be have any spaces okay so if you put the space system will throw an error and then uh, if you see the script include normally that um, server side object like it do use for the server side operation but if you want to call this script include from the server side you need to be check this client callable so it means that from the client side you can call this script include so you have to check that once you check that you can see there are pre-populated some code is populated now here with this we know the script include is a set of function we can create many function or many uh, you know um, function and then call one by one whenever we need it so it means that we can create thousand hundred uh, hundred and thousand function here so we are going to create our first function called the user details or maybe uh, caller name and phone so this might be my function you can put any meaningful name um, whenever you i mean whatever you think and then we need to put the comma so script include is ready we'll just uh, format auto format this one so this is my script include uh, this is a script include and this is a function and let's say at that moment this whenever i am going to call this function i will uh, return a text call send from script include i am sending at that moment static information i am not sending the user information at that moment i'll do the coding later i'll save that so this script include is ready and you can see um uh, here it is asking for which role the script include can be called so here i'll put that itl role so who have the itl role they can use this script include save that so it means that uh, this script include is ready and we can call this script include whenever we need it now from where we are going to call that we are going to call from the client side so this is my client side and from here i need to write the code so that i can call the script and to write that we need to use the client ajax method so you to use that first i have to declare a variable called gx maybe okay and here we need to call the new client record or maybe sorry a new client ajax and under this bracket uh, we need to be put that uh, the script include name so whenever you put the correct uh, class name glide ajax you can see it's little highlighted in the bottom so it means it's correct so you put the glide record or glide ajax it's highlighted now here we need to put the script include name so this is my script include name i need to be put this script include name. so we are going to call this script include name and then under this script include um 
what things we are uh, what function we are going to call that to uh, to define that what we have to do we have to put the gx dot add param and under this param we need to put the parameter name so we will say that sys param underscore name and then here we need to define the function name so what is the function name we are trying to call this is the function name we are trying to call we we'll copy that and paste here so this so what it means that call this script include with this function and return me whatever value that is script include is passing right so what i will do gx dot get xml and then under this get xml we can pass a function name so let's say that get data and then what we can do this function can be called here call get data the same function that you call here you can put here and in the bracket we can define the response and then here we can write the code to see that um, the response we have received properly or not to get the response what we can do where answer under this answer we have to write set of code so let's say that we will get a response in xml format to so we'll say the response dot response xml dot document element and then get attribute and here we can say that answer so by this method uh, we can get the answer and then we will alert the answer whatever we are receiving so at that moment if you see that we are calling that script include from this client script we are calling the script include and then the script include will return the fix of uh, fix uh, code let's save that our script and see what it is working and where we get fail so this script include uh, this client script is right now safe if i refresh this one at that moment and let's say i am changing any of this user and then the first alert called script run and then it um, go to the script include and script include return that send from a side so it means that it successfully able to call from client side to the server side script include now under the server side we can query to that what we can query to the user record right so we can query to the user record and then get their mobile number and then first name and then return back to this user so first what i'll do under the server side script what we have to do we have to write the where and then gr equal to new glide record so we know that using the glide record we can query or it's a sql query basically we want to query which table you want to query under c underscore user table okay now um under the c user uh, table what do you want to query we basically want to query of particular record or user record right by name by whatever we want right so to query that we need to be get that the value here right so uh, to get the value we need to pass from here right so let's say we are passing that for gx dot add param and this time we will say that sys param underscore user and here what we should pass we should pass the value of the user or maybe caller so this caller name i should pass so i will say that g underscore form dot get value and then we will pass the caller so basically here we are passing the caller id now this caller is a reference field it means that it will return me the c id let's try that and let's see what is happening so i will copy this g underscore form dot get value and then paste here and save that to show you that it is returning the c id or not i just copy the same thing um, and then paste here so we are passing using this form we are passing this to basically the caller c id 
Now we have to receive the caller CSID under the script in group. To receive that, let's say that I'm declaring a variable called var user ID. This is the uh, variable where I can, uh, using that, I mean, I am going to store this information. Now to receive, let's say that I need to be received that um, the value that whatever they have sent from the client script, I have to use the this mechanism called this dot get parameter. So this this dot get parameter and here under this which parameter we should define that. So we are passing that as a parameter called sys param user. So we will get the user ID of that. Okay. So this dot get parameter will help us to receive the username that is passing from the client script. Now here we have the user ID. This is a sys ID, right? What we can do, we can use that where gr dot add query. Instead of that, I am going to use today called gr dot get method. So what is gr dot get method? Using the gr dot get method, you can you can see after you put the get, it's saying the name and value. So it can basically using the add query the way we do the query. Similarly, gr dot get help us to query to the particular uh, record. Okay, but it's written only single record. Now, what should we, uh, what we can do? We can pass the name and pair. So we can say that sys underscore id. So which field, the sys id field, and what is the value we are passing? So we can say this is the value we have to be pass that. So here we can define the if uh, like that and like this one. So it means that it's saying that if we are able to find out this user, we have we can write the code that whatever we want to write that. So let's say that here we are saying that if the CC ID of this user ID that they are passing that is present to the user table, if we are able to find out, we can return that. Instead, it's a short method that instead of writing that add query, query, if next the way we have done, we can simply use the gr.get method. Now here, instead of the sys ID is an optional field, you, you, you can pass, bypass that. So you, if you are passing the sys ID, you don't need to pass the first parameter, you can only pass the second parameter. So if you are passing the two parameters, system will know the first parameter is the name or any other field like say mobile number or any other field. If you are passing only one parameter, system will know that you have done the short mechanism and then it is a sys ID. So if you are passing the sys ID, you don't need to do first parameter and then once we are able to get that data let's say once we get we are able to get the user details what we are going to do we are going to type the return and here we first we need to be passed the mobile number so let's say gr dot get value something like that and here we can say that what we need actually we need the mobile number right so we open into the new tab We need the mobile number, so we'll copy this mobile number field. Right? So this is the mobile number field. I'll copy that and then here paste that. So first we need the mobile number plus what additionally because system can return only one value. So we'll say that mobile number five sign and then plus what we need. We need maybe the first name. So we'll say the first name. Gr dot get value and then here we can pass the first step and simply save that so our script include code is ready let's try one more time the incident so if we refresh here our incident form and let's say i am going to uh, get the user which does not have here and then if we select that any particular user you can see first it is running that sys id and secondly it returned me that their mobile number with their first name and then it is separated by this one this is called separator so we have put the special character to know that the separation between this value and this value so we know this is the mobile number the first and this is the Second is the 
our first name. Now we have to set the value here. So we are receiving the value in our client script. What we'll do, I'll say if answer. It means that if answer is page present, but I'll say where, uh, let's say that um, value temp value or something like that. Temp value. And here answer dot split. So we know that there is a special character is coming between two value that is the uh, this uh, this character using this character we know that this is the two value and then what we are going to do that g underscore form dot set value using this g underscore form dot set value we can set particular value for particular field so we are going to put that customer mobile number here we are going to put that customer mobile number comma and then the first array index it will so if you use the answer to split method it will create an array and this array will first position have the mobile number like it will create a array and then first position have the mobile number and then second position will have their name so we are going to use the first position of this one so we'll say the temp mobile dot temp value dot zero position because array always start with the zero and then secondly I'll copy and paste here and then here second field name is the first name you underscore first name this value should be mapped with that one I'll remove this one here and here you go so what we are doing right now we are get the answer will split that with the special character that we have this decided that we are going to pass here you can put any special character ampersand uh, any special character that you want to do that and then we are doing the split here under this and then once we do the split it will create an array the first array will be first value and second array will be second value so before that we need to use the dot two string so we'll use the two string and then uh, dot split save that so let's refresh this form and I will pick any user is not empty run and let's I'll pick this user and you can see their mobile number and then their first name is populated here. Now what we can do basically uh, under this client script initially here uh, uh, we can make them read only what we'll do g underscore form dot set read only and here we can define that which field we want to make read only so we'll say that this field should be read only true and then there will be another field i'll copy and paste here and this is the first name which has to be read only let's do format right now and save now if we refresh here so this is the um, things we are going to refresh here so first we have refresh here you can see during the on load this field two field are read only and let's say that we will pick that any user which is let's say mobile is not empty and run that i'll pick any of this user and their number is populated so it's a read only and then their number is uh, i mean their mobile number is populated so I use this uh, method like uh, set read only um, here on the on load. This section is the on load. And during the on load, whenever form is loading, I am trying to make this field read only. Let's save that. And then this way you can, you know, this is the way you can create the Glide Ajax. You can populate that value. So that's it for today. If you have any question, let me know in my comment section. The requirement that today I am going to talk about that how to write transform script to import the CMDP data into the child table. For example, I have 10 records with the different CMDP classes, but in my transform map, my target table is the CMDP CI, the parent table. Now I want to write a script where all the records inserted into the respective class table. So basically, what the example that they are trying to say that, let's say that you have a, a Excel sheet using the excel sheet you are trying to load the data so when you load the data the data should be go to the respective class like if you are loading the data with the linux server it should go to the linux server if it is 
Windows Server, it should go to the Windows Server. So I have also created a some sample Excel, uh, Excel. You can see the header. I say the name, and then I say the class, and then the name is the test Linux, and then test Windows. Based on these classes, I it should create the record onto the Linux server, and it should create to the Windows server. But my target table of the transform map should be on to that uh, CMDBCI table. So let's implement that into the service now instance. So let me save this record and then I'll go to that uh, service now instance and implement that. So first I'll go to the service now instance in left navigation. I'll go to the load data under this load data. I'll select here. Now here under this load data, you can see two option is there create table exist uh, existing table. So if you are loading the first time, you can create a new import set table or else if you are using the existing table then you can select the existing table and then here you have options to select that table name the existing import set table so in our case i am going to select the new uh, table and here i am going to put the table name called ci import something like that so once i am creating this label you can see by default they are populating that name u underscore ci basically it's creating a staging table which will be going to be extend to the import set table now here I need to select that Excel file that I am going to import. So let me do that. So I just selected my Excel file. Here the sheet number will be one, header will be one. I am not going to change anything. I will click submit. Once I click that submit, it will create an import set table uh, based on my uh, record. And you can see two record got created and this record are created under import set. Now I have to create the transform map. I'll click create transform map. Now once I click the create transform map, it is going to, um, you can see by default the source table is populated and then right side target table I have to select. So there is the only option that I can select the target table and you can, you know that the Windows server, uh, then we have that Linux server, they all are child table of the CMDBCI. So what I'm going to do that, I'm going to select the parent table, which is nothing but the CMDBCI table. So I'm going to select this configuration item table and then here I'm putting the name called CI import. Now after that I'll just have to save that. So it means that the data whatever is coming to the source table that data will be directly transferred to the target table which is nothing but the target table. So whatever data the two data that um, we have called test Linux test Windows these two data will be directly transport to the CMDB CI table but we don't need to create the data onto the CMDB CI table basically we want to create the data on the child table right so how we can do that so that is the class they have they have asked so whenever the transform map will be run it should directly go to the C not into the CMDB CI table it should go to the child table so let's do that so I'll click the mapping assist right now so that um, which field I should map with whom now left side all the uh, import set table name and right side all the actually CMDB CI table name. So let's find out the name field. So I am going to select the name field here and then left side I am going to select the name field. So under this Excel name I am going to map with the CMDB CI. That's it. I am not going to map anything. But here is the limitation. So if I run that what will be happen? All this data at that moment whichever is present Linux um, and Windows, these two data will be directly created to the CMDB CI table. It won't be created to the child table. To create the child table, what we have to do? So if I go back to the CMDB underscore CI table, parent table, and if I open this record, you can see we have a class option. So this is the class, and you can see the backend name is sys underscore class underscore name. And based on this class, basically, if you select any of these, it will go to this right now we are in the CMDB CI table but if I open this record it will be open to this basically CMDB Oracle instance table so basically class name is nothing but the table name that it is denoting so this is the parent table CMDB CI but if I open let's say I am opening this virtual 7 so if I try to open that it will directly go to the child table which is nothing but CMDB RCA computer <coughs> table right so what we will do here First, I will I'll open this u underscore ci underscore import table because this is the staging table. So I will open this table. 
and here if i open that you can see there is two record is at that moment created and if i open the first record they we have created one custom field called u class which is nothing but the class is the the table uh, the header name based on that we have created a field called u underscore class so based on this value i should decide that where i should redirect right so i'll go back to the transform map and click new so here i am going to create a custom uh, field map and where i am going to write the, um, the one code so here if you see uh, under this case what we have i have the field mapping here uh, we have the source table here i have the source field so i can select the source fields instead of that i'll select the use source script i'll check this checkbox and then under this target table i'll select the class field so sys underscore class name this field i will select the target field will be sys underscore class name now um if you see here under the configuration table we need to be we have to be select the sys class name based on the excel sheet so based on the based on the excel i should select the linux server or windows server under the sys class name right so what i will do i will write the code so what i'll do if here source dot u underscore class so that field name is the u underscore class so if the u underscore class name equal to equal to what we are passing at that moment we are passing the window so if class name equal to window what we should return we should return the windows server table name so the windows server table name is this one so i should return this windows server table name else if and then this time if that value is the linux then i should pass the linux table name so source dot uh, class name is the linux here then i should return the table name of the linux so i will open this linux table and then return here okay so this is the requirement or this is the things i need to be configured so i'll just submit that so under this transform map if we transform right now so i have the name to name mapping and here i have written the script so if i transform that so i'll click the transform button and then whatever is the data we have loaded earlier that data will be transformed to from uh, this is my transform map um, name so this is the import set here so if i click transform the two data that we have created will be transformed successfully and if you can see the transform is successful if we click the transform history you can see um two data got inserted now if we go back to the configuration item table and then if we refresh right now <clears throat> now you can see two data loaded called taste win and taste linux and taste win is mapped to this windows server and then taste linux is mapped to the linux server so if i open these two uh, record you can see they have redirecting to their respective table called windows server and the linux server so that's how you can complete your requirement so that's it for today if you have any question let me know in my comment section thank you very much have a great day i need to update the bulk record like uh cancelled resolve with the some walk notes which said walk clock walls so what the user is trying to say that they are trying to update particular record like state of record with a specific specific condition and they might be trying to update a resolve state or maybe cancel state and then they are trying to set the walk notes equal to um i mean some walk notes and then at that moment they are trying to set that state walk clock walls this is like a requirement when i was going through this requirement i came to up a article with the service now so whoever give this requirement i would request you to that go through this article or kv what service now is saying that if you said that uh, said workflow falls there are a couple of business rules which will really stop working and that's the reason your work notes might not be populated from uh, you know incident form so just go through this and then i come up with this couple of uh, community post that where they are saying that uh, you can use that uh, twice update method to achieve this functionality so basically i'll go through this method uh, twice functionality method i mean i'll update the twice first time i'll update the work notes and second time i'll uh, set workflow calls and then update the record so let's do that um, at that moment what object we are going to use that object i am going to use the fix script so what is the fix script so fix script is a script that help us to 
update uh, a particular record for one time either you can use the fixed script or maybe schedule job schedule job normally used for schedule but fixed script is used for one time method so you can go for the uh, fixed script now method we are going to use the client record method again um, so these are the things we are going to do that and then if I go back to my uh, instance if I go to the incident table I need to let's say that I am trying to achieve for the incident table I am trying to identify the which all record I am going to update that so let's say that I am going to select that uh, p1 all this in progress and maybe uh, this uh, this many records so these three these uh, this four record I am going to update and then I am going to update this four record to a resolve resolve state so what I am going to do that I am going to write a fixed script so first I'll go and write a fixed script here I'll click the new this is my um, you know fixed script and then and then here I need to write the script to update particular record okay so I'll just save that at the moment and then here I'll start writing the code first we have to uh, we identify that these are the record we are going to update so these are the incident record we are going to update so what I am going to do that for that so I will uh, do a call set or maybe I'll create a function called function and then put the name called update work notes okay and then here uh, I am going to update the record so first I'll do that where gr equal to new glide record so I already in a previous class I told you that how we or why we use the glide record glide record is normally used to update or delete or create or I mean basically to card operation we use that now on which table we are going to update that so we are going to update that incident table I put that incident table name now we need to uh, do um, or identify particular record for which record we are going to update so in that case I identify that the which record is priority is one state is in progress and then assignment group is a software so this record I am going to um, update so for that what I will do gr dot add encoded query and then I am putting this query so these are the record I am going to update now next question is that we need to put the gr dot query and after that what I will do that I will say that while gr dot next so we are getting one by one record and then what we'll do we'll set that work notes so for that what we'll do gr dot set value and then inside that we'll put that work underscore notes and whatever value we want to update that so let's say that auto update or something like that whatever update you are trying to do that put that and then finally gr dot update once you do that what will be happen it will query to this incident table with this all this priority one state equal to two and assignment group equal to this one it will query and then it will do a while loop and then it will set or it will uh, set the value work notes equal to this value and update one by one record so if we open that we will be able to see that these all record will have some work notes so let's uh, first call this function we are going to call this function first so if we call this function what will be happen this all incident will be automatically have some work notes if I open one of this incident you can see so this is the uh, work notes field where there will be one uh, work notes called automatic something that whatever comments we want to put that now next we want to change this state to a resolve state so once we move the resolve state there is a two field one called resolution code and resolution notes these two fields also may get mandatory so for that we what we have to do we have to set certain value here also right so what we'll do we are going to create another function to update that record as a result state so let's say that function um, update resolve something like that and here uh, in this case what we'll do we'll call that same code called weird gr1 equal to new glide record
and here I am going to call this incident table again and then I will say that cheer dot this one and then I will say that gr dot query so what will be happen so if we add the gr dot encoded query and gr dot query it will query to the particular table and then what we are trying to do that we'll say that while gr one dot next so these all are will be gr one so what here also we are doing we are querying to the incident table uh, with particular record now what uh, you are going to set that we are, you are going to set their value uh, to uh, resolve state so if you set that their state is resolve state what will be happen uh, their incident will be resolved and at that moment you also want to have you ha also have to set this close quote and close note so what I'll do gr1 dot uh, state equal to 6 I think for resolve it is 6 and then we need to put the close code so let's say that gr1 dot close code equal to duplicate and then gr1 dot uh, close note so you can say that anything like auto update something like that and gr1 dot update now question can be like why we are calling or why we are um, calling this record twice to update this record right because the, the user uh, they said that they want to add the set workflow false so if you use the set workflow false uh, your um, these if you here use the combine and set workflow false work notes will not be work properly so that's the reason first we are setting the workflow with the set workflow equal to true and then secondly we are you we are going to use a gr1 dot set workflow and then bracket set workflow false what does it uh, do with the set workflow false if you use the set workflow false all the business rule which is running under the incident table will be will not be executed um, until unless this op i mean for this record when we are going to update that so let's say that any business rule which is checking the mandatory fields which is um, you know uh, doing any integration anything that won't work simply what will be happen this record will be get updated without any running any business rule okay so what will be happen if there is no business rule run this set uh, these work notes also cannot be um, set because the work notes it's stored in a different table called sys journal table which will not be set so that's the reason we need to be run twice so you can go through this document i mean this service not document you will get that details now this function has to be called second time the first time what will be happen we are just um, calling this incident record and then setting their work notes and then after that we are uh, you know set workflow false and updating that let's save this record and you can see there is options called record for rollback so this option is available so what does it mean i'll tell uh, i'll say you that so if you click run fix script there will be pop up and there will be two options processed and process in background process means if you click that it will be processed in your sessions and it will be hold until unless your all the record got updated if you click the process is background so it will be run in background you need don't need to worry the your um you can work other stuff so i'll click the process in background and then i'll simply close that now this script is running on the background if you want to see their progress you can click that show uh, progress worker and you can see my script is completed and the success and if we open particular incident and at that moment incident got resolved with the particular uh, resolution code now coming back to this uh, script here we have a rollback you can see this is the record rollback so record rollback is doing nothing it can roll back your operation so whatever you have updated through this script that things can be rolled back so let's say that if i open this incident this incident is right now resolved right 
uh, so it previously the state was different and it's right now resolved so if i go back here in the left navigation and type the roll back you can see there is a module called roll back context so if you simply open this roll back context and then um, if we add that call update it and update it by so these two field and do j to a and here uh, you, you will be able to see this rollback context and here you can see the rollback version you can see the fixed script that i have created the fixed script that i have run so let's open this fixed script or this rollback context and here you can see we have a rollback option under this rollback option what are the incident record we have updated that time it's showing that and then what is the changes happens to this record it's everything is there now if you click simply roll back what will be happen uh, you just need to we mention that es and then click ok this record will be rolled back i mean that whatever changes we have done through this script will be rolled back so this using this script we have updated this incident as a result and then we have updated the work notes those things will be rolled back through this uh, module so once i done that and now if i uh, refresh this incident and you can see this incident state is changes again back to the in progress so basically rollback is used to roll back any record and that is for safer site let's say that you run this some script and then the script got some uh, error or this code the script creates some issues you can directly roll back from this rollback context module that's it for today. If you have any question, let me know in my comment section. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Can you make a scenario that when can we use client side and server side UI action? I mean the difference. So basically, someone raised the request that um, they are trying to know that when we can create a client side UI action, when we can create the server side UI action, and when we can use the client side and server side action both together. So in our today's video, we will talk about that. How can we create the client side UI action? How can we create the server side UI action? And then how we can create a combination of the UI action. So in the last video, if you remember that I have created one UI action on the incident form. So if I uh, open this uh, UI action called cancel incident, this UI action I have created in last week. And then uh, if I scroll down, this UI action is available on the form on the incident table and the current state equal to equal to one it means that if the incident is new state that ui action will be visible and somebody click that the incident will be resolved this ui action is a uh, good example of the server side ui action if you see here the client checkbox is unchecked it means that this ui action is server side ui action so if i open for example if i open any incident at that moment And let's say that uh, the state should be new state. So if I open this, if I show my tweet, the new. And let's say that I am opening this one, this incident. Then you can see that this cancel uh, incident button, which is UI action that I have created is visible. And if we click that, definitely that all this mandatory field has to be filled. If we click that. What will be happen is simply this UI action or using this UI action, this incident will be completely resolved. So let's try that. So now if we click the cancel incident, this incident will be resolved. So if we click that and go back to that incident, you can see the incident is basically cancelled that. So this incident got cancelled and here it's uh, automatically cancelled basically uh, whatever we have mentioned in our ui action everything is happening now how can we make that client side ui action to make that this is the server side ui action that we have learned uh, in our earlier class now how we can uh, create the client side ui action to create the client side ui action you have to have uh, you know click this client checkbox and once you click the client checkbox there will be one um, a box will be available called on click. So you can see this box name is on click. So if we uncheck that, you can see uh, this on click button, the on click uh, field is not available. So once you click that client and there will be one field called on click. And here you need to 
provide the function name so on which function you want to perform certain action let's say i am doing that uh, do process so this is my function name and what it will do it will going to call under here i have to declare a function called function and then do process and here i can do any client side operation what does it mean by client side operation client side operation means we can show any pop up we can show any alert message we can set some value something this kind of things we can do okay so let's do that i'll uh, you know i'll do a confirmation message so let's say that if and then i'll do the confirm okay and under that i am going to ask some question let's say that um, what i am asking that so this kind of message i am looking for okay if yes then this block will be uh, a pop up call user click yes else i will show an alert all user click no okay so this is the message i am doing so you can see that i have cleared a function and then this function i am calling under this on click and what this function is doing it is giving you that some pop up message called do you really want to cancel this incident yes or no if you click no it will show an alert call user click no if you click if you click yes this alert message will be visible i'll just simply save that now i'll open any another incident so let's say i am opening this incident and then if we click the cancel ui action so earlier what was happening this code only this code was executed right now this code won't be executed instead of that this code will be executed whichever under this function so let's try that if we click cancel and you can see there is a pop up which is coming or do you want to cancel this incident if you click cancel it is saying the user click no and nothing is happening if you click here again if you click okay and it is saying the user click yes and actually nothing is happening because the server side code is not running anymore then how or when the server side code will be executed that we have to define that so to call this server side key so let's say that if somebody click yes so do you want to cancel that if somebody click okay and then this code this block of code has to be run right how do we do that to do that what we have to do under this you can see we have a call action name we have to declare this action name called cancel incident this action name we have to declare so we can declare um, this uh, action name and then using the action name we can call any ui action so once you define the action name you can call this ui action from any of this script you can call this ui action from the server side script like uh, background script maybe fixed script maybe any of this script wherever you needed you can pass this or wherever you needed you can call this ui action okay so once you call this ui action this block will be executed not this block so if you are calling from background let's say that you are calling from the uh, another ui action maybe you are calling from a fixed script or maybe you are calling from a background script or maybe you are calling from business rule at that moment this function will not be executed this function will be executed now what we have to do in this case in our case we i'll remove the else part so whenever somebody click that yes instead of alert i need to call this this ui action again from the back um, back end side or background side and once i call this from the back end side instead of this function at the moment this function will be executed so how can we call this ui action from this ui action or maybe another script to call this ui action we have to use that gsft submit method using the gsft submit method we can call this ui action from any other script so first we have to pass the parameter equal to null then we have to pass that object of this uh, current element let's say i am putting that g underscore form dot get form element and this is a function and then after that we need to be passed the uh, ui action name our case this is the ui action name so we just this pass this ui action name and i'll just adjust the code 
So what will be happen at that moment? So when somebody click yes, it will be called this GSFTP sub, G, GSFT submit method and then it will call the same UI action for the backend side. And once it will call the backend side, this code will be executed. If somebody click cancel, it will be go here and then it will not going to call this UI action from the backend side and it won't be executed. I'll simply save this method here. It should be element and let's refresh this one more time. And if we click again cancel, nothing is going to happen. And if we click OK, and here is the some mandatory field which I have to be select. Definitely, I'll select that and cancel OK. And this server side operation is started, and it will be set to a resolve, or maybe it will be set to the cancel. Whatever is written in that uh, script here, the value is eight. The value will be set to eight. Notice that when we click cancel, it is redirecting to the past page. How can we stick to the same page? To stick to the same page, here we need to put one more. Uh, to do that, what we have to do, we have to just simply say that action dot set redirect URL, and in bracket we just need to be put the current. So once we put that and set that and open other incident I'll select this configuration item at that moment cancel click OK and you can see I am now right now not redirecting to the other page I am sticking to the same page and that incident is automatically cancelled so that's it for today if you have any question let me know in my comment section thank you very much have a great day I have manager group contains 50 user. I want to check all the user are currently manager of any group. If yes, retain them if in manager group. Else remove them. This should be happen once in a week. So I don't know what is this manager group, but I am assuming that there is a, a group called manager group. Maybe that uh, group name. I'm assuming that it can be a role or maybe uh, I'm not sure at the moment what uh, saying that managers uh, group or is it managers maybe the group name. So I'm assuming that the group name is the manager and then that group have a 50 user. Okay. Now what they are trying to say that. So in this 50 user, I have to check that this 50 user is actually manager of any group or not. If they are not, then I should be remove those user. If they are part of or if they are manager of any group, then I should be uh, keep as it is. So this is might be the requirement for that. I'll go to this service now and let's see that do we have any uh, group call manager or something like that. So I'll go back to this service now instance and then I will search that manager. And at the moment, I don't have any uh, a group called managers. So what I'll do, I'll create, I'm going to create a group called managers. And then um, I'm just creating this. So this is the groups and here, let's assume that all the manager will be present. So for that, what I will add that, I will change this from view to the default view at that moment. And I will add all the managers of the group. So for that, what I'll do, I'll go back to the sys user group table again. And let's say group is active group. I should pick that active group. And if we run that at that moment, there are a couple of groups is there. And then if I filter out that all these manager name, and you can see these are the managers at that moment. So let's say that this is the manager, this is the manager, this is the manager. These are the manager. So I should add them to my group. So I'm just adding them. So I'll click edit and then adding them inside my group. So uh, the requirement probably they are trying to say that they have a one group called um, managers and inside that all the managers are present here. So I'll add all the manager one by one so let's say i am adding them okay so one by one 
now what is the what so these three or these three are actually manager of this particular group so these they are part of this any group also they are saying that if any user is present to here let's say i am uh, the user for system administrator or maybe able tutor okay and abraham link these two users are not part of any manager so if you check here they are not part of any of this manager so every week there will be a script will be run and check that these five members are part of any group manager here if not i should remove from them so from this uh, group membership so this is the requirement that i have received at that moment so and the object what object i am trying to use the object i will use the scheduled doc and here the method i am definitely using that glide record method and in this time i will use the glide record delete method get method uh, these two method basically i am going to use that okay and then um, if you see all these posts that I have already done, all these sample code are there. If you want to go through and check your sample code, you can definitely go to that and check your sample code based on your requirement. So this is the requirement and this is the sample code. If for your practice purpose, you can go ahead and check that. So at that moment, our requirement is that I'm going to create a schedule job. That schedule job will check that all these, pick all these uh, member of this group called managers and then check that they are really part of this group or not if they are part of this group uh, it will be as it is otherwise uh, you know they should be removed in our case if the script will run at that moment um, able tutor and abraham lincoln should be removed because they are not part of any group manager so this is the requirement so let's go to the schedule doc so So you have to go to the schedule job uh, module and once you open that there are various schedule module is available schedule reporting schedule workflow so you have various options so you click the new option at that moment and you have different different option our case we are going to run the script so we are going to select that run script and here i'm going to put the name of the my schedule job check that um, managers validation something like that so this is my big uh, uh, group name now if you see the little difference between schedule job and then fixed script so last time we created a fixed script so if i open this fixed script in our earlier video so we have created called update bulk data so if you see the difference between that it have a rollback option and there is no time so whenever you click the run fixed script at that moment only this fixed script will be run but schedule job have a special benefit that it can be run weekly daily it will be automatically run you don't have to do you just put the time that on which time it should be done it you can schedule that it can be done every month it can be done every week or it can be run every day depending on your case and it can be also run that um, on demand so on demand you have to manually run that the like the um the like here called fixed script also you have a condition here you can write your own condition and then condition has to be satisfied if you want to write some complex condition so that's fine so we are going to say that weekly this schedule job will be run on the monday and then we can save the time zone and then time let's say that at zero zero time or every um, um, um this time this schedule job will be run every monday and what it will check that it will be checked that it will be pick all these members of this group and then um, check one by one they are actually part of any managers or not if not we should remove that that is the requirement simple requirement so let's achieve that first i am going to type that gr uh, group one something like that and then new glide record as we know that glide record is used to um, as you know the glide record used to query particular table and first job is our job is that i have to collect these five members so i'll open in a new tab and you can see the table name of this one is sys user gr member so i'll copy this sys user gr member so i'm going to query going to query this table and then in this table what i need actually or i need the user and then condition will be the group name is the managers right so either um, I, if you see copy query, if we do the copy query, it will give me that uh, sys ID. 
So if you don't want to hard code by seaside, you can also still hard code by name. So what I'll do, I'll click all and you can see at the moment all these group and members are showing. Our case, I'll just show that show related here or maybe I'll say that group and you can see group fields here and I'll say the name and then what the name is of group is that manager. So if I put this one call, uh, you can see the group dot name, name if I run that. So you can see the total these five members are showing. So what I am trying to do that if I copy query instead of C side it is um, instead of C side if we copy query and if we paste that at the moment it is saying that group dot name equal to manager. So I am looking into this CSGR member table all these uh, all these members where group name is the manager. So this is my condition or query condition. So I have to put this one gr dot like this i'll put here and then add query so here i'll put the add query and then put this condition of whatever condition we are putting so i'll copy here and paste here so this what i am saying that give me these all this user or give me this record list of record under this gr member where the name of this group is the manager so this is what i am saying at that moment after that, I'll just say that gr dot query. So this will be query, and then I will do while loop, and then again I will do the gr dot next. So until unless if you are not clear this part, we can go. We can't go to the further level. So here, what we are doing, we are going to query to the sys user gr member where the relationship between user and manager, a user and the group is present. And for this manager's group, these are the members present. The five members are the present. Now what we are trying to do, we are trying to find out, so this is what I need that actually all the user name or user details. So I need the, all the user name in, in all this user name called um, with this uh, able tutor, um, you know like that or all, all these user and then later I need to check here they are actually present or not right so for that what I am doing that I am going to query to the CC user uh, GL member table with the group name equal to manager and then I just put a query and then why in the while loop I am getting their name one by one so I will I'm going to declare the where user equal to GR group one dot then what is the field of this one so if i open this record so this is the m to n uh, table which have a field called user and then group so i need to to get the user the field name back and field name is the user so i'll collect this field name called user and say like this one so this way it will return me the user sys id because this is a reference field so this is if i right click and show you will be able to see this type of this field is the reference field it means that it is a reference field and it will return me the sys id of that user so what sys id it will be written if my script will run it will give me one by one all the user sys id one by one so I'll get all this sys id. Now I have to do the second query and check that they are actually manager of not of this group or not. To check that, I will say that we are gr manager something like that. And then here I'll do again new client record query. And in this time, I will query to the sys user group table. So I am going to query to the sys user group table. With the condition what is the condition let's put the condition one by one add query the first condition i am saying that active equal to true so this is my first condition so i'll copy this query and here i'll paste that active and column here i'll say the true so this is my first condition and then second condition is that what is the second condition the second condition should be the manager like whatever let's say that this is the user i'm picking let's say i'm picking this user so this user should be manager so that's what i'm trying to say 
okay so this user should be manager so i'll copy this query and then i will say add query and then here i am putting that manager dot name instead of that i can put the manager and then here i should be passed the sys id so the sys id that i am receiving at the line number five okay so i am going to query to the, with this sys id and then i have just i set the filter at that moment and then now i have to put the query and then what i'll say if cheer dot next means that if the data is present it means that if the user is manager i don't need to do anything else i need to delete from this uh, gr member record right so what i'll do here i will say not gr manager dot next it means that if this is not present so it means that this is present i need to do some actions if this is not present then i want to do some action what action i am trying to do i want to delete this record so i will say that gr member gr dot delete record so do a formatting of the code and then save that uh, this code and let's understand one more time first i am going to query to that gr member table with the group name called managers and we i will receive the five manager sys id one or five member sys id one by one in this port line number five so it will do a while loop because it has it can have multiple record now what i am doing i am holding this username and then i am doing the second query so first loop in the first loop it will get one username and then i will query to this group table and checking that is they are part of any manager or not if they are part of any manager i will not do anything else i will simply delete that fine so it is done and once we save that it's every week monday it will be run at that moment okay in our case what will be happen uh, you know uh, what we can do basically we can execute now at that moment to test that so once we click that it is executed okay and if we go to here and then you can see two member got deleted because they are not part of our this group so they are not manager of any of this group here i will just so they are not part of any of this group and that's the reason they are removed so this script, a script that fix uh, this schedule job will be run every week and delete will delete the member from this manager group. So that's it for today. Um, your requirement is completed. I will update that the code here. If you need the code, you can get it from here. So that's it for today. If you have any question, let me know in my comment section. Thank you very much. Have a great day. In needed to create inbound action in flow whenever the instance receive an email it needs to create a change request the body of mail contains server details and we need to compare the details with the excel sheet which is provided by the account team the excel sheet is not present in the service now and my question is how can i compare the body of the email with the excel sheet by using flow and i need to map the location as well as mail body to location field reference in change request if the server details are matched so the requirement is they are saying that uh, somebody sent a mail and based on the mail uh, we should create a change request and then they are saying that the, uh, the in the mail that have the server details somebody sent the server details once they send the server details i need to compare with the server details with the excel which is not present to the service now I don't know how to compare that or what their requirement is this one but at that moment i am going to create a inbound action using the inbound action i am going to create a change request i am going to put that server details into that incident uh, i mean into that change request table and that's what i am going to do that so in the object i am going to type that all inbound action so let's understand what is inbound action if you are not familiar with that inbound action so basically inbound action is a uh, um, action which can perform several actions like which can create update 
um, you know, um, insert, delete, whatever operation you want to do, you can do the operation based on that user email. So let's say that I have received a mail from a user and based on that um, mail, I can take some actions, okay? So that's what I am going to do today uh, in our today's class. So first, what I'll go do that, I'll go to the CC user table and then in the CC user table, I'll update my email address. So let's say uh, my name at the moment is system administrator. Here, I'm going to update my email address. So my email address is updated at that moment. Now, if uh, I have sent a mail to the service now, okay, once service now receives the mail, service now will go into process that mail and based on that mail, let's say that the mail subject contains some special character or based on some um, details, the uh, service now will process something or service now do some action on that, okay. So let's, for that, what I'll do, I'll go to this inbound action and under the inbound action, you will have that um, field called target. So on which table you want to do some operation. So you can see uh, if I do that at that moment, there are a couple of inbound action already created on incident table. Uh, similarly, if I search which change request, and you can see uh, there is no such change request for creation on. So we are going to create a new inbound action here for let's say that um, I'm going to put the change, create change request, something like that. So, so first you can see the name. I have to put the name. So let's say that create change request. So this might be my name. And then here we have to put the target table. So on which table I want to do the operation. So my case, the target table will be the change request table. All right. Now we have a call action type. And here you can see the record action or reply mail. So if you select the reply mail, you can directly reply uh, from, I mean, once you receive a mail, you can directly reply that. Okay, so that's the how it works, reply mail. Or our case, I'm going to select the record action. So based on that, I'm going to do some action. So I'm going to do some perform the action. And you can see by default that active flag is false. So I just need to be activate that. And stop processing means that if my uh, inbound action is already processed, I don't want to process any other inbound, pro inbound action. Uh, so let's say that the two condition is matches, two inbound condition is matches and my order is maybe 10 and once my inbound action is processed, I don't want to process other inbound action. In that case, you can just check that stop processing. And now type, so here is the mail type. When you receive the mail, which type of mail you are expecting? If you are expecting the new mail, then you can select the type equal to new. If you are expecting the reply mail, you can select the reply mail or forward mail, you can select that. So my case, uh, the somebody create somebody sent a new mail. I am going to uh, do some action. Okay. Let's uh, put that. And here we have a condition. We can define the condition. Let's say that I am saying that uh, subject uh, start with create change request. So what I am trying to say here. If somebody sent a mail with a subject called create change request, I will assume that they are trying to create a change request and based on that, I will do some actions. Let's say that I will create a change request here in my condition. You can see there are various options called user, um, UID, wait, uh, you know, uh, to target table, target, subject, status, state. So very um, message ID importance. So depending on your criteria, you can select the condition and then based on that, you can trigger that. Now, after that, we have a required role. So we can define that on which if the user have this kind of role, this inbound action should be run. That's I'm not going to do that at that moment. You can select a particular user. So let's say that if I receive from a particular user, then only this inbound action should be triggered. You can select that on also. At that moment, I'm not doing anything. Now I'll go to the action tab. Under the action tab, you can start writing your code. So you can start, uh, you know, uh, you know, start uh, writing your code to um, do perform actions. So if you want to set direct value, let's say that you want to put the subject equal to in the direct value, you can put that one also. I'll come to that. And under the description, you can put the detailed description of what it is doing on in details for your future reference purpose. I am saving at that moment. Side by side, I will open the change request table and let's see that uh, what 
all details actually can pass in the change request. So let's say and uh, let's assume that I am creating a change request manually. Normally, what are the information normally we require? So if you see at that moment when I click the new, it is going to be a uh, type. Uh, I mean, pinned. And here, uh, there type of model we have. I have normal change and then emergency change. So if I click normal change, so the uh, the type I have to be select equal to normal. The model I have to select that uh, normal. So and then requested by will be the logged in user. Uh, configuration item, short description, description, these are the information I have to be uh, put there. So let's say uh, when I receive this kind of mail called create change request or start with this change, create change request, I want to set certain static value. Say I want to set uh, some static value. What value I want to set? I want to set the model equal to normal and the type equal to normal. So these two I want to set. So it's a simple, you just um, without any writing any code, you can just select those field and then if you are static things you can select that so let's say that model uh, i will say that um, uh, call normal and let's say that type i will say that normal okay so these two i have selected next I want to set the subject equal to uh, short description, whatever the male short description will be that I want to set as a uh, 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 short description. So let's say the short description here, I will select, you can select that particular details like subject, body, recipients, uh, sender, all this detail. So I'll select the subject and then description, I will select that um, body. Okay, so whatever body they are going to pass, that I am going to set as a description, the short description I am going to put the sub, uh, subject, the type equal to I am going to set the normal. Now the users say that they are going to pass the configuration item and that configuration item or you can see they are going to pass that um, one details they said that. So I need to map the location, so they need to be map the location and then uh, server details. So server details and location they are going to pass that. So what I'll do, I will put the CMDB CI in the CMDB CI called server details and then is there any location fields do we have here? Let's see this uh, change request. Do we have any location? So I'll, otherwise I could have mapped that. So I don't so the process will be remain same. So what I'll do, I will, um, apart from this uh, short description, description, I'll populate the configuration item and then I will uh, put that uh, category, okay. So based on this category, I'll put that. So, and then maybe justification. So these are the information I'm going to put uh, from the email uh, mail body, okay. So how we can do that? So let's say to, uh, to map that, if you see that, um, if you want to put some details into your of uh, field let's say what field i am trying to put that i'm trying to put the configuration item right so i want to put that i want to populate the cmdb ci field okay and then for that what i have to do let's i have to receive that uh, the value they are going to pass they are going to uh, pass that let's say call where ci in the ci i'll put the email dot body so I can access the body and then inside the body what field I am going to uh, pick that inside the body I am going to put that configuration item configuration. So whatever value they are going to pass in the configuration I will pick that okay and that configuration I am going to uh, match to that CMDB CI table so what I will do. And you see this change request, this change request is pointing to, it's a reference field. I mean, this configuration item is a reference field and which is pointing to that CMDB CI table. So what I'll do, I will say, I'll glide record that into that uh, CMDB CI table. And then I will uh, find out that the gr.get and then here I'll put the name and then comma, then CI. So what I'm trying to say that if I found that um, CI details, whatever server details or CI details they are uh, passing as a configuration. 
if that is found under cmdb ci then i will populate that current dot cmdb underscore ci equal to gr dot c underscore id so let's understand one more time so i have a field called cmdb ci so this configuration item backend name is cmdb ci and which is also pointing to a cmdb ci table so this is pointing to a cmdb ci table in the mail uh, in the body they are going to pass as a configuration and under the configuration they are going to pass some value let's say some ci value let's assume that they are passing this name call test instance 51 something like that so they are going to pass this in, in details and once once i receive that i'll query to the cmdb ci table with the name equal to uh, this value ci and so once I get that, I will set the CCID because reference field basically need the CCID. So I will query and get the CI as that CI CCID and set into the CMDB CI. Fine. Let's say that I am going to put um, justification. So they are going to pass the justification, the direct justification. I will so this is a plain text field. So I am going to set the justification equal to email dot body dot justification. So they are going to pass the justification that justification i'm going to set as that here okay similar way we can receive as many as information we needed from them so if they are passing this information we can just go and query and then uh, populate that let's say that uh, i have uh, created here report so if you want to get their email address who is sending that mail you can type that email dot original mail if you want to access their uh, email complete body you can just type that email dot body text if you want to access all email priority you can do, you can put that email dot i mean body if there is a field called priority you can access that so if you want to access the subject you can directly put that email dot subject if you want to access that who sent that mail you can just put the email dot form if you want to check the importance you can just check that email dot importance and inside the body whatever fields value you needed you just need to be put the email dot body and then field name so i uh, i do that sample one after that once we get all this information we are going to put the current dot insert okay so this way we are going to insert that and at that moment uh, after that let maybe before that we can put the current dot here let's say that i am going to put that work notes okay so i am going to put that work underscore notes and then under this work notes we are going to say that email received form and then here we can put that email dot and then this one called original mail so original mail will return you that email address of that user so you can put that email received from the email address and then maybe we can with body and then we can directly get the body of that email address so we, for that we just have to type the email dot body text email dot body text so this one we just have to be put that so once we get this information we are going to create a change request so i just put, use the current object because current is nothing but the, the table name we have selected as a target table or change request so this will once you do the current dot insert it will create a change request with this information and this information so let's save that and let's send a mail from my mailbox now it's time to send the mail from my gmail or my mailbox to the service now so once i send the mail to service now and service now should create the change request that's our expectation so before sending that mail what i have to do if you type that email and under this email you will able to see that email uh, diagnosis under this you can open the email diagnosis and if you open that email diagnosis what you can see these have the email sending is non-operational and email receiving is non-operational it means that this instance cannot send the mail and this instance cannot receive the mail so first we have to turn on if you see that email receiving is non-operational it means that system cannot receive any email why because you can see it's a disable so email receiving is disabled so i need to be turn on that email receiving property to on to do that i have to go to the email property under this email property you will be able to see that email receiving enable 
need to check this property and save that. Once you uh, save that, let's save first. So once you save that, you go to this email diagnosis again and you can see uh, right now email uh, receiving status, it's still uh, not true, but you can see all our, all these options are enabled. It means that I should be able to receive the mail, but um, it's the status is still checking. System is checking still the, all the status. Okay, now uh, you can see it's showing that email processing time and it is cross because this system is taking too much time to email process. Okay, so it means that still email receiving non-operational uh, because this email processing, this email uh, taking so much process. So basically for that, you, you, you can wait for certain time and then uh, it will be turned on. I mean, this email processing will be enabled. Now what we have to do, we get we can go to this emails. Under this emails, you will have options called, if you click the emails, all the emails that is sent today in from your environment will be shown there. So it's going to be outbound or inbound. It means that if you, if instance is sending any mail or if the instance is um, receiving any mail, all the email will be shown there. So if I open this email, one of these email, so this email is supposed to be sent from this mailbox to this uh, actual mail. Okay. Now it is high time to send a mail. So if I go back here, I'm trying to send that. First question is the recipient. Who will be the, the recipient? So I need to send the service now. So how do we know the service now email address or maybe particular this environment email address. So if you open any email which is in send ready or send it means that any mail which is supposed to send from this service to instance to uh, the any user. So this mail is supposed to be sent to my email address and if you go to the header under this header you will have this call uh, actual email address. So from this mailbox they are going to send mail to my email address. And if you notice this email address, their email address, it is saying that my dev environment, so this is my dev environment and this is their uh, dev environment at the rate servicenowdevelopers.com. So this is the my email address, so dev environment email address. So I should send the mail to this environment basically. So I'll copy that and put under this recipient equal to this one. So this might be my recipient. So um, so you can verify your, I mean, depending on situation, this at the rate, this one will be changes. But at that moment, I can see my email address is, this is the email address. Now we'll go to this inbound action again. Now, if I go to this inbound action, what should be the subject? So I'm saying that the subjects should be start with this one. So it is static and it's saying that the subject should be start with this one. After that, I can write anything, okay? Now in the body, what should be the mail body? I can write anything under the mail body. Let's say that hi team, anything, please create a change request for me, something like that, okay? And then whatever subject I will uh, do that, this subject will be pasted into this short description. So this normal change short description, whatever will be there, uh, this will be pasted to this normal change short description. The subject line will become to this normal change uh, and then the body will become to this description. Now we need two more information. One is the CMDBCI or this is not, nothing but the configuration item. We can pass the configuration item colon and then any configuration item name. Let's say this our case. We are going to select any configuration item. I am passing this called uh, test instance 2. So this configuration item, I'm going to pass that and once we pass this test con instance 2, what it will be do, it will check to the CMDB CI table that it is a valid uh, test instance or not, valid CI or not. If it is valid CI, then it will set that. If it is not valid, it will not set basically. So that's the one thing and next is the justification. So justification is a plain text field. So we can copy this, uh, this one justification. So this justification is a plain text field. And then whatever, say, let's say that create a change request. So it's a plain text field. Whenever we send that, this will be set in a justification field, basically. Okay. And uh, once I send this mail, this mail will be uh, sent to the service now with this email address and then service now receive and process through the inbound action and it will create a change request. 
before process that let's go back to this email diagnosis one more time and see it is um, that is and you can see at that moment this receiving operation is email receive option is operational right now it is ready to receive the mail so if i send the mail i should be receive the mail to the service now and then i should process that so let's send that so i'll click the send so once you send the mail it will take some time and you can verify the emails is received or not under this emails table so if you go to the emails you will be able to see that uh, under this table you will be receive that email so let's refresh and you can see i have received an email with the subject equal to this create change request and here you can see that type is received it means that i have received the mail and if i uh, click gear icon and there is one field called receive type we add that so let's add that and it says the receive type is new it means that this mail is new if you are forward on the mail it will show the forward if you reply that the receive type will be uh, replied so our case the inbound action the type is the new right so in that case this email type is new and then we receive that so once i open this one and you can see under the target it's showing that change request so it means that it successfully able to create a change request with that after sending my mail and if i if this is the email log and let's say i am searching with my uh, inbound action so if i search here you will be able to see that processed it is saying the processed and this is and uh, it able to create the change request now if we open this change request let me open this change request and you can see it successfully created that and then configuration item put that whatever configuration item we pass that the subject is subject is pasted to the short description other uh, in the description we pasted this whole thing whatever is the in the um, in the email body under the under the justification we put the justification that i have passed so everything is actually populated and yeah if you see that our uh, note section we say that email received from and then uh, um, whatever um, we have mentioned here everything is actually pasted here so that's how you can create that um, using that inbound action you can create that change request so that's it for today if you have any question let me know in my comment section thank you very much have a great day Create a reference qualifier on the group table on manager so that only ideal user and the user who is not manager of any group can be selected as a manager. So what they are trying to say that. So what is the requirement? Let's understand first. So first what they are saying that we have a sys underscore I mean sys user group here right. So if I go back here and then I have a um, so this is the one group these are all of the group basically test group i have okay so we have a field called manager and in if i click and show there will be uh, there could be a reference qualifier let's see what is the reference qualifier first at that moment there is no reference qualifier so what they are saying that at the moment i can select any of this user so let's say whatever the user is present to this my system all the 696 user i i can see so what they are saying that I should be select all the user who is not part of I mean who have the ITL role first criteria is the user who have ITL role and secondly the user who is not manager of any group so if I go here sys underscore user underscore has role table and then if I search with that uh, let's say the role equal to ITIL then I should get that couple of user at that moment I am getting the 66 user so all those 66 user I should find out and then among with this 66 user if I go back to again the sys underscore user underscore group and open any of this let's say this is the group table and if I filter out all the empty so we have so we have this many 11 members so so within this 60 so total we have 66 user within the 66 i cannot if the user is i mean if this is the one of the if this is the user one of this user i should not be able to select that so this is what their requirement is so the user who have uh, 
this one and then let's say that user should not be this like this user okay so 66 minus whatever the user see this user Borogir, this user have ITL role. So I I should not go to this test group here and I should not be able to select um, this user. So you, at the moment if I search this user, this user is selectable but uh, my the condition will be um, the 66, I can select 66 user who are not part of the only 66 user. At the moment the only 66 user have ITL role. So I should be able to select all the 66 user along with that who are not part of this member so in case this wow rogi should not be available here okay so this is the complex requirement so this is cannot be done like normally configure if i uh, right click and go to the configure dictionary here you can see the reference qualifier and then in this reference qualifier i cannot select anything like this condition whatever is that it's a complex requirement and that, that cannot be fit uh, here so any complex requirement cannot be fit um, into the simple require I mean simple reference qualifier okay we can we have to be shipped to the advanced reference qualifier to the advanced reference qualifier you have to click the advanced view once you click the advanced view so now you can see this is the advanced view under this advanced view you have an option called reference qualifier simple you can change to this dynamic or maybe advanced where you can start writing the code so our case it's a advanced so we are going to start writing our code to write this code what we have to do we have to declare a script include so i am going to uh, open this uh, script include here under this script include i am going to create a new script include let's say that group manager and here uh, once i click that this automatically populate that all this let's say that uh, find ITIL manager something like that so this script include I am going to call from this advanced qualifier so I am going to call this script include so I will call this script include so I will simply save that so once this script include is created I can call this script include from this reference qualifier to call this script include what we have to do we have to type the javascript colon and then we have to call the script include name call this is the script include name and here we can call this basically uh, the function name okay so we can pass this now in the bracket you can pass the current object to get any group name or anything so i will just uh, click the update so it means that reference qualifier i have selected that um, so now um, i am in the group if i right click and then click show you can see that I am right now pointing to this uh, what you can see we are calling this script include so right now I am pointing to this script include passing the current object and then whatever script include reference qualifier will be written that we can show so I, if I click at that moment here there is nothing no code written at that moment and that's the reason it's returning me the 696 object okay now let's start writing the code here so first thing first we have to find out these query so that it can return only 66 uh, um, user who have the ITL role for that what we have to do we have to query to the CC user has role table to query that I can we know that GR uh, we, we can use the glide record so we are going to use this uh, same method here and then uh, here we can put this encoded query or anything so I'm going to put that add encoded query copy and then from here we can just copy this encoded query and we can just paste that all right so we are going to query to this uh, a table called gr has role where the role name is itn so give me these all uh, user name i'm asking that give me those all user name so i will say that gr role dot next and then i should get all these user name right to get the user what we have to do we can just show match here copy query and then if i go back here you can see so we have a field called user so user will return me that c id so here if i put the gr user dot user dot sys id it will return me the sys id of the user so gr 
GR role is nothing but at that moment it is pointing to this user this table and if we open that I should get this user sys ID so this is the user and role mapping table so I should get the user details so I will put the user dot sys ID because this is reference field I'll get the user sys ID now what we have to do I have to declare a array let's say users and then this is my array and in this array I will store all these user sys ID okay so let's understand one more time so I have declared an array under this array I am going to query to the sys user has role table where role name is itl and then by this one I am getting the all this sys ID and I am pushing all this sys ID one by one to this array after that what I am returning I am going to return what I am returning sys underscore id in and then I am putting that call sys user dot to string okay so let's understand that so once I save that and if I call this script for a script include from this background script what will be returned it will give me these all 66 um, uh, I mean all this user here you can see all these user sys id one by one so this will return me all these user sys id one by one so let's try first so if i go back and then go to the background script and then let's say i am opening this background script and then here i am writing the code called gs.info now here we can put the gs.info and then we can simply call this script include and see this is working perfectly fine or not so to do that i'll say the new space here and then after that we can simply call this function and this, if we call this function this will return me all this is id so let's try and then simply click and you can see it's give me all this is id so this is id these all user i should give me now if we previously i was getting 696 now if we click that it will give me these only these you can see 53 user who have actually active and then they have itl role so these 53 user i am getting right now now additionally 53 what uh, are our requirement is that this 53 should not be part of this group so if they are part of this uh, this group they should i mean at that moment if we search here let's say i am going to search here let's say this is giving me 53 user and in this 53 if we search this user and this user i am getting but i should not get this user because this user is already part of a manager to do that what we can do we can write additional codes called say we are gr um, member or something like that and then i'm going to query again here in this table let's say that i am going to query to this table okay and after that what we can do we can say that here manager so i will say that dot add encoded query and then we can say manager equal to and then i can uh, you know put this one okay so i am checking that this is the manager or not so if i do like this query and if grm dot next and then i'll write down let's first and then i'll update you i'll do a formatting code again so let's understand one more time so i am going to query after getting this gr role user id i get the user id after that i will go to the sys user group table and query with the manager equal to whatever user i get and check that is there a he is manager if manager i am not going to push that if he is not manager then i am going to push that so we can just put this like this one and then remove this block okay so it it means that if he is not if i cannot find any user who is the manager then i should push that previously it was giving me the 53 now let's try to after saving the let's try to see that so if we put here 
I can see 45 so 53 minus these all excluded and at that moment I can see only 45 user I am getting and if I search here to any of this user and I should not get those user this is the way you can do any complex you can see I'm not getting that so this is the way you can build any complex reference query fact so that's it for today if you have any question let me know in the comment section thank you very much have a great day Populate current logged in username in the in incident form if there is no value. The table name is incident. So what they are trying to say, let's understand the correctly. So let's say I am the system administrator. So this is my name, system administrator. And if I go to this incident form, so let's say I'm trying to create a new incident. So I'll click the create new. At that moment, you can see the caller field is a mandatory and then someone has to be put the caller, right? So if we put the, I mean, if this caller field is empty, I should populate the current logged in user in this caller field. So this is the requirement. Let's understand the correctly one more time. So let's say someone who is going to be uh, click create new. Once somebody click the create new, the caller name should be pre-populated with the current logged in user. So that's the today's requirement. It's a pretty simple and small. So we are going to build that. So very first thing is that to achieve this functionality. So on, I mean, on that, uh, if you see, if you're trying to save that it immediately, these clients, uh, it is giving me error that this field is mandatory. So before saving that, I should populate the current logged in user name here. So to do that, I need to write a uh, client script. So let's see that object. What should be the object? The client script. So object will be client script and then our object type will be on load okay so on load why we need the on load because whenever i am loading the form at that moment immediately i should uh, check that the caller is empty or not if not i should populate that so that's the reason i should use the on load method and then here uh, the method i should use the g underscore user method Using this G underscore user method, I can get very minimal information of the user. I can get the user first name, last name. I can get the user uh, username, user ID. These are the information I can get. So let me go back here and then I'm going to be create a client script. So I go to this client script module and then here I'm going to click new and here I should put some meaningful name here. Let's say that and then here I need to define the table name. So let's say in that case, our table is which table we are trying to implement. The table name is the incident table. So I am going to select the table equal to incident here. Now we have an option called UI type. So if you want to run this client script on that um, laptop, I mean desktop or maybe portal, you can select that. So I'll select all at that moment. And then we have a type, which type of client script we are going to use. As I mentioned, I'm going to use the onload client script. I'll select that onload client script. Once I select the onload client script, you can see the predefined script is populated and I have to write here under this. Okay. So what I have to do that first, I have to check that is there any caller or not? So if there is no caller value at that moment, then I should pre-populate um, the value. Why? Because if I open any existing record, let's say if I'm opening any existing record which have already caller name set. So let's say I'm opening one of these. Um, let's say I'm opening this one. Here already caller name is set, right? So if, if that is the case for this one also, our onload client script will be run and maybe populate that the current logged in user that what we don't need so for the new record basically we need this one okay so that's the reason we are going to check first the caller field have any value or not if the value is there then we will populate that okay so first thing we'll check that uh, let's say that i'm going to declare a val and then i'm going to check that uh, cal using the cl i'm declaring a value and then i am putting the g underscore form using the g underscore form method we can do various option on the form level so we can get their value we can set their value we can um, do uh, show the error message info message will come one by one uh, depending on the, our use case 
So using the g underscore form, and then we can type the get. If you type the get, so if these are the get method we have available. Using that we can get, or maybe we can get some information from the particular form. One of the mostly used method is called get value. Using the get value, we can get any particular field value. Now, which field value we are trying to check? The field name is the caller, and back end name is the caller ID. So we want to check the caller ID and check that is there any value under this caller ID or not. So if then uh, I mean un, once we put this line, we'll get a caller value under this variable. So what we are trying to say, if caller equal to equal to empty, then we want to set the current locked in user name under this caller field, right? Now this is this time we are going to set the value. So first the line number three, we are getting the value caller, and then this time if there is no value, we are going to set that. To set that, what we have to do, g underscore form dot set. If you click the set, these are the method available for set the value. And what we are trying to set, we are trying to set the value. So we'll say the set value. So get value and set value is a very popular method under this client script called g underscore form dot get value. Using that, we can get the value. And g underscore form dot set value, we can get, I mean, set the value. And if you see the pop up, the pop up is saying the field name, comma, value so we should pass the field name so the field name is the caller and then i should pass the value as a current locked in user sys id right because the current locked in user sys id why need because the caller is a reference field and we need to pass the current locked in user sys id to pass or to use this current locked in user sys id we can use the g underscore user method and this g underscore user method can return current locked in user information. So if we put dot, it have various methods that can return um, value, uh, value. Let's say that it can return the full name, has role exactly. So if you see the FF, these are the function, and A says this will return you the static value. So if you pass the F means function, you need to pass certain value, or maybe it will be like in a function. If you see, this is the kind of function in bracket. But if you see, let's see if you put A, there is, this is not a function, this is actually a value or object, okay? So what we need, we need to have actually the current logged in user sys id. For that, we can um, see you have a last two option, you can see the user id and user name. So one user id and user name, one will give you the uh, user, actually user name and another will give you the sys id. So user id will normally give the sys id, so we'll put that. And then end the semicolon. Let's understand one more time, first we are be getting the value called caller id and if there is any caller id field value is there then we are not doing anything if the caller id is empty then we are setting that caller id with current locked in user using the g underscore user method let's save that so i'm just saving that now i have two record one is a new record where the caller id value is empty and this one the record which is the existing record where the caller id is already available so if we refresh the new record by default, it should set my name as a caller. At that moment, it's blank. But if we uh, refresh that, it should run the client script and it should set my name. And you can see it is probably, I mean, it is work perfectly fine and it set my name. If we go to this uh, incident module now, under this, you have a create option, create. And if you click here and it will automatically run the client script and then it will set my name. Similarly, this is the record which have that, um, you know, the value, caller value is already set. If we refresh here, and you can see this value did not change because this is existing record and we are checking that the caller value is have any value or not. If yes, then we are not changing that. So this is how we can create a client script and populate the current locked in user CSI. So that's it for today. If you have any question, let me know in my comment section. Thank you very much. Have a great day. In problem table, if priority is P2, show a info message or error message. So this is another requirement and this requirement is definitely small requirement. Let's understand one more time the requirement. So if I go back to the problem, under this problem module, you have a option called create new or maybe you can create or maybe you can open existing record. And once we opening that or um, getting that, what it is showing that the priority. Now, if your priority is P2, at that moment there is P priority is 5, but if your priority is P2, and then what should happen? 
I should show a error message in the top or maybe info message in the top. So this is the requirement. To achieve this requirement, I am going to use the client script again. And then uh, this time I am going to use that on change client script. So I am going to use the on change client script. And then method, I'm going to use the G underscore form method. Definitely I using the G underscore form method. I'm going to show the error message. So for that, I'm going to uh, here client under client script module, and then I'm going to create a new client script. Then I'll put the name called show error message or show message, something like that. And table will be the change request table because we are trying to implement under this change request. And then type will be all and then uh, I mean UI type will be all and then type will be on change. So once you click the on change, you can see there is a one additional field called field name. So on basis of what field name I should run that. So that is what they are trying to say. So let's say that the field name will be the priority. Right? So I'll select the priority. So changing on the priority field, this client script will be run. Now, if you see that under this, there is a block pre-populated called, um, you know, called is loading or new value equal to equal to now. So this block will be executed whenever your form is loaded, like it will run as on load client script, this block and this block will be run as on change client script. Let's say that I'm creating a new um, a problem which have the priority is P2. To make this P2, what do we have to do? We have to make this more a moderate and here we can check the moderate and maybe high and at that moment this priority get changed to the p2 and at that moment somebody do that i should show a message in the top so this is might be the requirement so let's first implement that and then we'll come back to the existing record to do that let's say first we have to validate that what is the current priority to check that priority i have to be say that p equal to g underscore form dot get value and then we can get the field value of particular field let's say i am using the priority so i want to check the priority value so under this p will have the priority value okay and then if you see the back end name of the prior high is the two okay so if the p i'm putting that if p equal to equal to two then we should show an error message. To show the error message, we can use the G underscore form. And then there is a one one option called a add error message or add error info message. So error message will become into the red color and then info message will come in a uh, blue color. So this is the little difference. So we'll say the error message and say that this is a P2 ticket will be resolve soon something like that so this is my uh, message okay let's um uh, here uh, i'll do a all condition and then let's say the p equal to equal to in quotes to either it can be number or maybe string i don't know at the moment so i'm just putting that if the value is to I should show an error message. In earlier video, we talked about the G underscore form method. Using that, we can get the value, we can set the value. And this time we are talking about that G underscore form method using that we can show or error message or maybe we can um, info message. So let's save that. And so our client script is saved. So if we refresh here, so this is our new record at that moment. And if we, uh, let's say that in this new record if we see the priority at that moment five so if we check to that high and at that moment priority is still three and if we check two so this time the priority is two or maybe priority is high right so one mistake we have done so if you see this is the change request we are pointing and i'm testing in the problem so we should change to this problem uh, module so let's do that Actually, we can do any of this table depending on your requirement. So I'm selecting the problem. Let's say at that moment, uh, this priority is five. And if we change to this um, two and this one is two and it will be still in three. And let's say I'm putting this high P2. And at that moment, once this priority got changed, the info message is showing in this top. So this is the error message basically. 
So we can replace that to error message to the info message to show these in blue color. So this error message is showing top. Now let's go back to this problem record and existing record. So this is the new record. If I open any existing record and let's say that I'm opening any existing record where priority is high. And if we open this priority and you can see uh, this time the, this error message is not showing here. Right, so this error message is not showing, but if we change this priority back here, then this error message is showing. Basically, it is not working as an all load, right? So it is whenever you are loading the form, and if you if have that already value called P2 or P2, this is not working. But once you change something and then change back to that, basically on change it is working, right? So this is the issue. Either we, to resolve this issue, we can create another onload client script to check that the priority is P2 or not, or else we can modify here directly and then, I mean, we can copy the same code here and then paste here to resolve this issue. So we can do these things again here, although this is not a good practice, both the variable are same name, so you can change their name called top one is P1 and then bottom one is P2, anything you can do that. So at that moment, on the top side, uh, this will be run for on load and this will be done for on change, the bottom part, okay? Now let's, this is the new record and this is the old record or maybe existing record. So if we refresh that existing record, you can see existing record showing this error message. And if this is the new record, so if I refresh there, you can see the new record C side will be always minus one. So you can see this new record is C side is one and at the moment it is P5. So if we change that high and medium, so it's P2 and at that moment it is showing there. So both the way you can do that. So that's it for today. If you have any question, let me know in the comment section. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Create a field on incident form called expected date. If incident moved to pending, this date will be at seven days from the current date. So let's understand the requirement what the requirement it is saying that in the incident form if i go to this incident form and open any particular incident and let's say i'm opening this incident at that moment so we have a field called stay and if the state is going to be uh, pending it means that on hold and there is a on hold reason is mandatory there will be a one field uh, called expected date and that date um, I mean this field will be read only and then once somebody saved this form the field value will be added seven days from the current date. So that's the expectation or that's the uh, requirement for today. So let's understand one more time. So in the incident form whenever the state will be moved to the on hold there will be a field called expected date and that field will be read only and that field have the data the seven days from the current date. So that's the that's the um, today's requirement. So let's understand. So first I'm going to add a field here called expected date or let's see I, if we have the date called a due date or something like that. So I'll go to the form layout and then add um, on the bottom of on hold resin. I'll try to add one field. So there is a field called due date. I am going to populate that due date. Um, um, I'm not going to create a new field. I'm just updating that due date in case you have <clears throat> In case if you want to populate other thing, you can put that. So I just add the due date, the bottom of the on hold resin. I'll just save that. I'm not making read only. You can just uh, make the read only by creating the UI policy. So what we are trying to say that whenever this share state will be on hold and then somebody save that, after saving that, the due date should be populated, the current date, uh, I mean seven days from the current date. So that's the expectation. So very first thing before I uh, writing the code, make sure that um, this date functionality that um, is a little complex and there are too many methods are available. So we will try to cover one by one based on the different different requirement. So date functionality itself is a very little difficult. Now if you see we have a two field, one is the date and another is the date time. Let's see which type of field it is. Then this field is the date time field. So you can see it have that you can put the date and then time, right? So that's the um, field right now. Now let's first go back to the background script. Uh, before I write the code, I want to show that how we can, uh, I mean, we can do that. So for that, what I'll do, I'll go to the background script and I'll show you that how the, uh, I mean, which 
script I'm going to write to populate the seven days from the current day. So first thing here, I will type that var gr date, something like that. And here new glide date and time. So we have a two method for date and time. So one is the date and then date time. So depending on your requirement, you can select that. So if date re will return only the date and date time field will or date time method will return the date and time. So if we select the date new glide date time and in the bracket, if we put that it will return you the current date and time. So let's put that GS info and here we can put the GR date whatever variable we declare. So if I print that what will show? will give me the current date let's see that and it is right now showing the current date and then time here now if we want to add the requirement is that we should add the uh, seven days from the current date right to add that gr date dot and you can see once you put the dot there are various method we have so um, there are a lot of methods we have so we'll try to uh, go one by one or maybe uh, different different scenario based so let's go back to at that moment we are going to say that add time so what we are trying to uh, add we are trying to add the seven days so you can see that we have a add add local time and add days UTC time so add method add local time and add UTC time so first uh, we can do so of what we want to do we want to add the day so seven day we want to so we have to select either add days local time or add days UTC time so if you select that add days UTC time and let's say I have how many time so if you see the parameter it's popping up the number of days okay amount and number we need to be passed the number so what do you need to pass we need to pass the seven so if we pass the seven what will be happen it will add the seven days from the current date now we are going to print that gs.info info and then print if we run that so what it is showing that so uh, current date is the 4 and then we added that uh, 7 days so uh, so it is showing that updated the, the latest date called 11 days so this code we are going to add in our script to do that what we are going to do i am going to write a business rule so you can use any existing business rule or uh, if you have create a new business rule and update that so i am going to create a new business rule called add days and there i am going to put the condition based on this condition i want to populate the due days similarly if you want to add month year or maybe second minutes what you can do you can just put the gr date this and dot and there are various method for add so if you see add days then add month then add second add weeks add year so these are the method for adding so you can you can add month year second depending on your use case so these are the method you can perform for adding month year and second the name is let's say that add days here the table i will select the incident table and then i'll select the advance and it will be in update and then what is the condition condition is state is pending or on hold at that moment what we want to do we want to uh, you know populate this due date field so i'll copy this field and say current dot due date and what value we want to populate the value should be this value i'll copy this script and paste here and i'll remove this info all this info and then copy this one and paste here again i'm repeating date functionality is little complex so we are going to cover one by one uh, so first we are talking about that how we can add that date okay so i'll just save that so let's understand one more time whenever this uh, value uh, state is on hold at that moment during the update that current date it will add the seven days and then that date will populate here with the due date okay so let's refresh our incident form and try to on hold and see this 
script is giving able to set the seven days from the current date or not. So I'm going to set that type equal to on hold here on hold region something like that. And once we save that, it's supposed to be uh, update the due date. And you can see it's updated the due date. And you can see it is showing that seven days from the uh, now. So that's it for today. If you have any question, let me know my comment section. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Normal change request plan start date cannot be less than three days from now. So today requirement, let's understand today's requirement. Today requirement is that normal change request. So let's say somebody trying to create a normal change request. And during the normal change request, um, this plan start date in the change, we can't put that, uh, uh, le I mean, less than three days from now. So let's say that today is the uh, fifth then you have to be select, I mean, three future day. So that's the requirement. So if I go back to my service term instance, if I type the change uh, request, and if we try to create new, and then let's say I'm trying to create a normal change. So model is, or maybe type is normal. And at that moment, under the scheduled, you can't put the plan date, uh, like today is the fourth. So you can't put that, uh, I mean, after three days, you have to be put that. Okay, so you can't put less than three days. Okay, so that's the requirement. So we will put the fifth, sixth, something like that, or maybe bad date there. It will give you the error. So this is the requirement that they are uh, looking for. So this is very common requirement for any change module. I mean, if you see out of box, you can select that uh, any past date, but that is not the case. So you can put the validation to do that. To complete this requirement, we need the client script and we need the script include definitely also we definitely need the um, the glide uh, date time object so last day we talked about the glide date time today also we are going to talk about the glide date time so if you have not watched my previous video i would ask to go and check my earlier video also if you have any specific requirement small requirement which is present to the out of box uh, table and everything you can give me the requirement just you have to go to this my website under this documentation and here you will get that all the documentation all the type of and here service now scripting under the service now scripting you have a requirement sheet here you can put your requirement so that i can get the requirement in my sheet so let's start our today's requirement to implement that so what we'll do whenever somebody change this one right so whenever somebody select any date we'll validate that date that this is the um three days from current days or not more than three days or not if not we are giving you the error right so that is the expectation um, um let's understand that so for that what we'll do i'm going to create a client script and then i mentioned that we need to be uh, create the script include why we need the client script and script include because we are going to use the glide ajax using the glide ajax will because the glide date temp date the date validation cannot be done into this um, client side we have to check in the uh, server side, but this data operation will somebody put the client side. So we are going to create a client script and on the client script, when somebody select the date, we'll go and check in the server side that what date they are putting, are they are putting correct date or not. And then based on that, we are going to take the actions. First, we are going to create a client script. So I'm going to check that create new. Here in the name, I'm going to put the name called, um, let's say that date validation one. And here the table name will be the change request table. So on which table we are trying to implement that. So we are going to implement that under change request table. And then UI type will be all I'm selecting and then type what type of client script I should use that. So let's understand that when somebody is trying to select, I, I, you can do that on submit. So depending on your use cases, okay. So you can check in the on submit or maybe a uh, client script. So let's say that somebody putting that value and you want to restrict, that's the one thing. Or maybe uh, when somebody tried to submit that, that time you want to show the error, you can also do that. So I am doing based on this use case called on change because somebody put the planned, uh, let's say the planned start date. Immediately I should validate that the planned start date that they have provided is correctly or not. So that's the reason I selected the planned start date. And here I'll get the planned start date and I'll call to the script include, um, call one of the script include, and then the script include will give me that, um, the actual validation from the backend side. And then um, 
give you the response. So I'm going to create a script include here. And this is in the script include, I'm going to use the Glide Ajax. So earlier also I use, I'll explain you also the Glide Ajax here also. So the script include name, I'm going to call that change. So this is my script include. And if you see at that moment, we have a client callable checkbox because this script include is going to be called from the uh, client set. So I'll select, select the client callable. Once I select the client callable, you can see the predefined code is getting changed based on my selection. So I'll select that client callable. And here I'm going to check the uh, particular uh, call, let's say that task start date validation, okay? And then here I'm going to put create a function and in this function, what I'm going to return, I'm just returning that, let's say I'm returning testing hello, something like that. So now we, um, we are going to do the format code. What we have to do from the client script, we have to call this function and then uh, we have to mention that, let say that for which role it is accessible. So I'll select that ideal role. So this client uh, script include is created and let's first validate that, that from the client script, we are able to successfully call this script include or not. Then later we'll do the dead validation. To call this uh, from the client script, what we have to do, we have to use the uh, g, any variable var gx equal to new and then glide ajax, okay. Under this glide ajax, we need to pass the script include name. So I'm going to pass this script include name. And then after that, we have to use the gx dot add param. And then under this param, what param we have to post that sys param. underscore name and in bracket what we have to do we have to pass the function name so this is my function name so we are going to pass this function name the function name is that a uh, start date validation so i'll put the function name. and then after that we have to use the gx dot get xml and under this get xml we have to if you see the pop-up is coming called callback function, so we need to be passed the callback function name. So let's say that I am putting that uh, data or maybe function, anything you you put any any anything. Okay, so this is my function name. Maybe this function I am going to call here. So I am going to de declare a function called function, and then this is the function. And after that, I in bracket I will put the response. So this is my response and then this will be my function name. And let's say I'm going to store the answer equal to response. And then I'll put alert. So although our main focus is not script include or glide ajax but still i am just showing you that um, how we can write the code all right so what we are uh, at that moment what we are doing we created a client script and from the client script we are doing glide ajax to call a script include and then script include is simply returning a value called testing hello and then uh, whenever we are going to call that this the message will be just show a pop-up let's first see that we are able to successfully call the script include or not now we are going to select any date and then once we click OK and you can see I am getting the message called testing hello. It means that I am able to call from client script to the server script. Fine. Now what we have to do, we have to pass this value, the plan start date, whatever I am selecting that value we have to pass from client side to the server side here, right? To do that, what we are going to do, we are going to put another parameter called gx dot add param in bracket. We are pushing that sys param underscore start date, something like that, okay? And then in bracket, we are going to do that g underscore form dot get value. We know that using that g underscore form dot get value, we can get any particular field value. 
so what is the field value the start date the field backend name is the start date so we are just passing the start date using that um, c param start okay now under the script include also we have to receive the value so let's say that uh, um, i'm receiving that value here called var is date and then i'm putting that this dot get parameter in bracket grid parameter i need to uh, put this parameter name so that i am i'm sure that i should receive that date now i'll copy this variable name and then i will just um, you know combine this and make sure that uh, whatever date i am passing that i am receiving successfully or not instead of that maybe i can put the start underscore date something like that okay and then i'll just save that this one and then i'll just put same thing okay just save that so let's refresh one more time here our change request and see that we are whatever date we are passing actually that date is thirty or not all right so here i'm going to select that seventh and whatever date i am passing that date is returning it means that i was successfully passing the date i mean i am able to successfully pass the date now the point the main point here is that how do we validate that date using the glide date time right so i'll go back to the first background script and then i will show you that how we can validate that and then later i will um, um, show you that first i'll say that d1 equal to new glide date and time so what do we know gs.info using that we can get current date so let's first print our current date or not so we are going to print the current date so this is our current date right and current date is this is my date and time now let's print that where d2 so this is another variable here i will say that glide date time and then this time i should set this date whatever plan date there someone is passing so what is the plan date they are passing this is the plan date they are passing right so what i'll do d2 dot here you will get that set once you click the set and then you will get that lot of um set method so what we are trying to do we are trying to set the value so we we'll select the set value in bracket this is the value we are trying to set that and then i will print that d2 so what we'll get that in the in the print i'll get the whatever date i have set so let's see that so all right so first i get the current date and then i would get the second date whatever i have selected the seventh which is the second date i have selected basically the user have selected now we need to check the compare that both the date is three days or more than three days or not to validate that i am going to declare a d3 at that moment glide date dot subtract in bracket d1 comma d2 and then i will print that d3 okay and just run that so what you can see first i get a d1 using the d1 what we get we get current time then second d2 we set the time and then if we subtract that it is giving you that some uh, you know 1970 some date now what we will do i will say that d3 dot get display value so if we run this one what will be happen it will give you that two days 13 hours 48 minutes so the difference they are getting calculated by this one so two days 16 hour 48 minutes so this way we can get that um you know the date okay now gs dot info and here we can put the d3 dot get day part this method will give you only day not the hour part okay so this will give you the only day so if we run that so it is giving me two days so once we get the day we know that it is a two days difference now let's say that somebody put that eight it means that what is that 
it means that three days 16 hours 46 minutes right so it means that it is three days or maybe more than three days right in that way we can select that we can we can give you them or we can um, give instruction that they can select also someone asked me that uh, to show you that uh, dead difference so if you are trying to use the dead difference uh, or if you your code is already exist and you are trying to use the dead difference uh, then you can use that but i'll before i'll talk to that point i'll go to this high um, one is this high recommendation so this is the high where they are saying that gs dot dead difference uh, return invalid results and if you see that the correct way is not the dead difference the correct way is the subtract so if you see this is the subtract method which is the correct um, you know uh, the process but uh, if you are trying to use that i mean in an incorrect way is that this is the incorrect way but if you are trying to use the dead difference then you should have that use the get display value so i'll just quickly show you the dead difference also so let's say that you declare a var uh, i'm just trying to declare another variable called var d4 and here i'll just say that gs dot dead difference and in bracket i'm i'm passing the d1 then uh, d2 so we do have the variable and maybe uh, if we are passing the false earlier it was used to return the in a millisecond so if you are trying to you know, print that so let's say i'm trying to print this d4 and let's see first what is happening so if we run that uh, you know it will give you that uh, the same way that 3 hours uh, 16 i mean this is the one instead of that service now if you see here uh, uh, i'm doing the same thing right so this is the one and this is the one i'm doing the same thing the service now recommendation is that use the get display value and then get display value instead of uh, this one directly like instead of doing this called d1 comma d2 you, you try to use a get display value so that's the service now um, a recommendation so you can use that so use the get display value and run that so you'll get that exact value and later you can do the split but this gs dot dead difference does not exist in our um, scope application for that you need to use the subtract so what we do i'll copy this code here and then go back to this here and then I will paste this code and then just do a formatting and then what we will do in this will be our current date so there is no issue so I will remove that and this will be our uh, D2 I will remove the info part and instead of this date I will copy and paste this date okay now what we will do we are going to return this part okay so we are going to return this value whatever date we are getting this date i am going to return i'll just save that now let's refresh our change module one more time now this time let's say that i am selecting at that moment six and click ok and it is giving me the one day now if i am selecting seven it is giving me two days so it is two days and then if i select that eight it is giving me the three days and let's go back and select any back date and once we are going to back, and let's see, you are getting that any back date, it is giving you that um, in a minus, right? So what we can do here under this, if answer equal to three or answer greater than three, we will do, we will allow, okay? else will give an error so i'm giving you the alert that you have to have select a day more than three days that's the alert we are giving and here we are doing nothing okay we are going to clear maybe the start date or we we can uh, you know do whatever we, we want we can just make this field mandatory and then we can clear this value so that nobody can submit that so let's try one more time so let's say somebody at that moment uh, my date is uh, this date so i'll select that seven and click ok and it is giving me that error and once we select eight 
there is no error so if we go back to the previous date also it will give me an error and yeah so if we go back to any other future date it will not give me error so that way you can do a date validation so that's it for today thank you very much have a great day create a ui action on task table called attach attachment to the ritm record so let's understand the requirement what somebody is asking in this requirement so so if i go to the ritm table so screq item table under this ritm table we have a task right so if i open this is the ritm and normally ritm have a task right so this is the task so in the task they want a button so and you can see in this task i have a attachment so what they are looking for they are looking for a button call any kind of button call copy attachment or something like that once i click that this attachment uh, whatever is attached to the task will be automatically copied to the ritm so this logic uh, for this logic i am going to use that client attachment api uh, which is provided by service now using that we can copy the attachment from any table to the any table like we have we can uh, copy the attachment from incident to problem incident to change um, request to problem any table from any table to the any table so their requirement is to copy the attachment from the task to the ritm using a button and also these things can be done through the business rule through depending on your use cases right so what they are looking for they are looking for a uh, uh, you know uh, kind of uh, we can say that button but you can um, implement through the business tool if your condition is whenever the task will be created if there are any attachment copy that so depending on a use case you can implement that so our case what we are going to do uh, we are going to use that as an object call we are using that ui action right so so we are going to use that ui action as an object and then here under the method we are going to use that client attachment glides sys attachment api so glide sys attachment api so let's uh, implement that to implement that first i am going to create a ui action so i'll go to the ui underscore action table and i'm going to create a button Call copy attachment and this will be implemented on SC task table. So if you see the requirement sheet, they mention that it should be implemented under SC task. So uh, based on that, their requirement, I'm going to implement that is under the SC task. So I'll select that. It will be a server side. I'm not putting any condition and then I'm clicking that form link. So the button should be form link. Now here we need to use the, our code, right? So let's start writing the code. First, we are going to declare a variable called var attach. So this is a simple variable. And here I am going to call that new client sys attachment API. So this is my method and then this sys s will be in capital. So glide sys attachment, this is the API name. Now, once we call that API, it will be create an object with this attachment. Now we have a function called attach dot copy. And these function have four parameters. So let's understand. First, we have created a uh, variable called var attach, and then we are going to call a new and then glide sys attachment API. And then after that, we are calling this attach dot copy the function. The function name is a copy, and this function have a four parameter. Let's first understand the first parameter. The first parameter is the source table name. Source table name means that from where I want to copy, right? So I want to copy from the SC task table. So source table name is the SC underscore task table. Now we need to be give that source sys ID. What should be the source sys ID? The button will be present under SC task table. The source to get the source sys ID, we can simply use the current dot sys ID. So this will give us the source sys ID. Now we have to give the target 
table. What should be the target table? So when I click that button called copy attachment, it should attach to the RITM table, right? So the target table name is that SCREQ item table. And then we have to be put the target table uh, CSID, like this RITM CSID. How do we get the RITM CSID from this task? So we have a direct field called requested item field. So we'll say that current dot requested item dot CSID. So this way we'll, if we do the current dot requested item, we'll directly, uh, you know, dot work to, through this requested item and we'll reach to this RITM. And from the RITM, we can access any kind of field like number, catalog item, any field. So we'll do that, uh, you know, sys underscore id now here we can put anything like it will be just if we do this one it will just copy that now if we want we can declare another variable called where it uh, something some variable st or something i'm just putting that and then after that we can put some information like attachment is copied or something like that in this case we can put some uh, message called gs dot add info message and then here we can define some kind of message called attachment copy and then we can just put this variable name okay so this is the simple code uh, we just have to be remember that glide sys attachment api have ability to copy the attachment from one table to the another table so our button is ready now if we refresh here so now this is the catalog task and if I scroll down there is a related list called copy attachment and if we simply and if I refresh this RITM so this is the task and this task have a RITM called 1004 if we refresh that in this RITM there is no attachment and our expectation should be like whenever somebody click that button the attachment should be copied from the SC task to the RITM right so this is my our requirement. So to do that what we will do we will simply click the copy attachment. And you can see there is a one uh, pop-up message came up called attachment copied. And if we refresh that, the RITM, the attachment is copied to the RITM you can see. And if I scroll down, it is showing under the notes right now. So this way, we can copy the attachment from this task to the RITM or from any table to the any table if we want. So what is happening? We're using this copy, I mean this glide, sys attachment api and then copy method we can copy the attachment so that's it for today if you have any question let me know my comment section thank you very much have a great day so in this video we have a requirement called create a new ui action called cancel request on ritm so basically on the ritm so this is the ritm and in this ritm we don't have any kind of um, button called cancel um, you know cancel request or something like that and if you see these, we have a task. So what we are looking for, we are looking for when somebody, you know, uh, we have a button called cancel request or something like that. When somebody click that, the request should be canceled. And there is a running workflow that workflow should be canceled, right? So this workflow is right now running. We want to cancel this workflow as well as this task. This task state should be automatically canceled. So this is our requirement. Let's assume that. So let's see how we can implement that. So this task, if I uh, add that, the state also should be cancelled. So this is kind of our requirement. So what we are going to do that first, step by step. First, we'll create a UI action. Under the UI action, when somebody click that cancel request button, the state we will set that close incomplete. Okay. And then after that, the running workflow, whatever is running, will cancel that. And then um, we'll check that that after cancelling the workflow that um, task state is automatically getting cancelled or not. If not, then we'll manually update the state equal to cancel. So this is our requirement. So let's build that. First, we'll go to the UI action module again. Under this UI action, we are going to create a button called cancel request. I'll click new and then here I'll say the cancel request. The table name will be under SC request table because this button should be visible under SC request. So we'll select that SC underscore request. First, what we'll do under the script, we are going to write a script so that we can first cancel the workflow 
and then we can set the state equal to three or not like four or not okay to cancel the workload this is the workload which is running so to cancel the workload again this code can be implemented anywhere in a different different situation like you want to cancel through the business rule or any kind of thing you can use this code but in this scenario uh, we are going to use this uh, workflow cancellation method so first we are going to cancel the workflow to canceling the workflow first we are going to use the var then wf maybe for workflow and then we are going to call the workflow api so to call the workflow api we are going to use the new then workflow so this is the workflow api after that what we will do we will use the wf dot cancel method so using this wf underscore dot cancel function or method we can cancel any particular workflow now in bracket we have to define that which workflow we want to cancel let's say that we want to cancel the change workflow we want to cancel that uh, uh, any kind of workflow which workflow we want to cancel so we'll pass that current object so this is current means that the glide object method so right now this ui action will be run to the ritm so and if we pass the parameter equal to current any workflow attached to this ritm let's say the four or five workflow any attached any kind of workflow attached to this ritm all this workflow will be cancelled simply by workflow.cancel method now we can if we want we can put some info message like uh, add info the way we do here we can say that workflow cancel something like that we have to select that form link or form button anything i am just selecting the form link at that moment the table will be a c r e q item i select the c request so table will be a c r e q item so it, it should be under requested item let's save that one more time and here we go you can see this cancel request button is available right now and if we cancel that this running workflow whatever is workflow is running should be cancelled and then what we want we want to set the state right we want to set the state equal to 4 so let's do that so that part i have not done there so we will say that current dot state equal to 4 then current dot update let's save again all right let's refresh that rit one more time and if we cancel this button right now this workload should be cancelled so you can see the state is cancel close incomplete and if we click the show workload this workload got cancelled through my uh, ui action so that's it for today if you have any question let me know in my comment section thank you very much have a great day populate list type of fields in service now in incident form so let's understand the requirement today's so what they are trying to understand, um, what they are trying to uh, give the requirement, let's understand. So in the incident form, we have a field called the list. The type of the field is called list. So let me open one of the example incident. So this is an incident. And in this incident, we have a various kind of uh, type of uh, field. So one of the type called in uh, watch list. And this is type of list. Okay. So from the script, they want to populate some value in this list. And this could be a different condition. Let's say that, for example, I am saying that if the incident type is a phone, the list will be some other, like this value will be some different. And if that is the email, the value will be some different. So let's understand correctly. Depending on this uh, channel type or the type, this value will be different. Like watch list value will be different. Now question is that how we can set this value. Because in today's session, we'll discuss that how we can set the value. We are not going to talk about that, um, the best practice or maybe uh, what mechanism we should use, but the or what are the opportunity we have to set that. But instead of that, we are saying that how we can set this value of the watch list, depending on this value called contact type. To, to, to implement that, there are various um, options we have. So like we can implement through the client script we can implement through the business rule depending on what type of things you need it so if we implement through the client script 
it will be on change like somebody changed this value it will automatically update that value if we do the business rule whenever we will update after update we'll see these changes so depending on what we are building or what we what is the expectation based on that we can set that okay so in our requirement i am going to implement through the business rule so depending on your use case you can implement again so what business rule what things we are going to implement we are going to implement through the business rule so we'll say that business rule and definitely it's a before and then method we are going to use the current method let's implement through the business rule so first the point i am trying to make here that we would should know that how we can set this value of this watch list or maybe the list type of field value to do that i am going to create a, a new business rule under this business rule module i'm going to create a new business rule click new now here we can put the name let's say that i'm going to put that this is the name here we should put the table name so we can put the table equal to incident so i'm going to select the table equal to incident when should run it should run on the update and then i'm selecting the advanced option so that i can write the script here i'll go to the advanced option and start writing the code let's write the code first thing first we should decide that on which type we want to populate what value so let's say that if the contact right so this contact type is phone we want to populate some value so i'll copy and then say that if current dot contact type equal to equal to phone so this value is the phone so we put that phone okay and then if that is satisfied we want to do some perform the action so current means this business tool is running so we can use the current object and using that any field name so this is the field name to contact type so current dot contact type equal to equal to phone in this case we want to set some value right what value we want to set we want to set the watch list value okay so we'll say that current dot watch list and then we should set some value so we need to be pass some value now we have to understand before we pass the value we have to understand that this is a list it means that we can select multiple value and this is a reference kind of thing so we it is referencing to the another table called cc user table so it means that um it is holding the c side basically right so what we'll do we'll go to the cc user table for that so it is pointing to the cc user table so we are going to uh, open the cc user table and let's say that if somebody select the phone we want to sell the help text so we'll copy this cc id of that and set here and then we want to set as a end user so these two value we want to set okay so we'll put the comma and then put the value so let's say that help desk and end user so what i am saying that let's understand one more time so what i am saying that if contact type is phone so current dot contact type equal to phone i want to set value current dot watch list equal to now i have to pass the c id of the user table because this is pointing to the user table so i want to pass the c id whatever value i want to set now if we want to set multiple value we need to pass by comma one by one so this is one cc id this is another cc id so this way we can set as many as cc id we want let's say else if it is not phone i want to clear this value okay so i want to say that current dot watch list equal to equal to black so this might be my condition i am putting that and let's save that and see it is working or not i'll simply save that and remember that i am writing in this on before business rule and that's the reason i don't need to use the current dot update basically in the business rule you should not or it is not advisable to use the current dot update either in before business rule or maybe in after after business rule. so it is not recommended to use current dot update so for before business rule you do not need to be uh use the current dot update at all let's go back to that incident list and find out any um any in progress uh, incident maybe a not closed incident so i'll open any 
incident which is maybe in progress so let's see this one so this is the incident which is in uh, new state and if i go back right now watch list is empty if i change this to phone and save that there should be to value into this watch list i'll just right click and save and you can see as per uh, the c side it is set user one and end user maybe this two c side that i have copied wrong c id so let's check that i'll copy this uh, c id and go back and search here i probably pick different one c id is one of and then put this c id and run yes so end user and help desk and you can see actually their user id is end underscore user and help desk you uh, the back end name is user one that's the reason it is showing that user one so this sys id user id is help desk but the name is user one so it is set correctly now if i just change to the email and it should clear the value right now let's see and you can see this watch list cleared so this way we can depending on what we are expecting like if we select the phone again it will be update and set as a this two value right so this way you can set any list kind of a uh, field value if i right click and then click the show and you can see that type is the client list and here we can set that so remember that for reference we need the sys id for list we can pass multiple sys id by comma separated so that's it for today. If you have any question, let me know in my comment section. Thank you very much. Have a great day. So let's understand today's requirement. Catalog task could not be able to uh, close from list edit. And then uh, the table name is the catalog task. So let's understand that requirement first. Today's. First, if I go to this SCRQ item table. So this is the request item table or the request uh, item where we have various catalog tasks. If I open that, that would have catalog tasks. So let me scroll down. So you have a catalog task and people click that state and directly close that from here to close complete or close incomplete. But before closing that, if I open this catalog task, under the catalog task, there are various multiple information. Um, important information is there like assigned to uh, uh, assignment groups there could be some other portion those are the important factor right so what they are trying to say that people right now they can click here from the list and then close complete without filling those mandatory uh, data what they are looking for that that nobody should be able to allow to update directly uh, state to close complete state uh, from the list edit so that is the requirement so how do we implement this requirement? To implement the requirement, we need to build a client script and that is on cell edit client script. The on cell edit client script will run whenever you update anything from the list layout. So let's go back to the client script module. Under this client script, I'm going to create a client script called on cell edit client script. So I'm going to click that new. And here I will put that client script name called prevent uh, list update here we need to select the table so we are going to select that catalog task table so sc task table and then the type should be on cell edit once you select the on cell edit and here we need to select the type equal to all now if you see that once we select the on cell edit by default various information populated there are a few parameter called sys id table old value new value and then callback and here we have options called save and close equal to true callback save and close value so what it does it mean by that within this parameter we can make many kind of things okay first thing understand what are the uh, parameter are so sys id is return me the current sys id for example if i update this record it will give me that record sys id now we have a table that will return the current table name old value return will be returned me the old value like from open to close if i update that it will old value will be open and new value will be the close so this is how it structure look like that now let's understand what we are looking for or what we are um, uh, what we want basically 
we want that nobody should be update the state from um, any state to directly close complete. We need to know that what is the value of this close complete, right, for the state field. So I, if I open this task in a new tab, you can see the field name is a state and then close complete value is the three, close incomplete four or close keep is three, seven, right. So what I want from the list, nobody should be able to select three, four, seven, any of this, okay. So let's do that. What we will do here, we need to select the field name. So when we are running that on sale edit client script like on change client script, so it is pretty much similar to the on change client script. If you see there are parameter also pretty much similar. So we need to select the field. So we are going to select the state field. Okay. So it means that whenever state field value we are going to change from the list, we should be able to run this script. Okay. Here we'll write a script, right? What we'll write if new value equal to equal to seven or new value equal to equal to three or new value equal to equal to four. We don't want to be update them, right? So we'll say that save and close equal to false so this is the variable where if we set whatever value will set if we set true it will allow you to set the value if you set false it will allow you it will stop um, updating that okay so we'll format that and if we want to show some message like we say that alert and say you can say that cannot like we can say that cannot update from list so this is done. Let's test that. This is the R idea, and then you can see that we have a task which is open state. If we try to uh, from the open state, if we try to work in progress, it is working perfectly fine. If but if we try to update from work in progress to close complete, let's see, and it is showing an error. Cannot update from the list, and you can see it's go back to the earlier state. So you cannot select the list from list. You cannot select this value. So whenever you will uh, change that value, your system will throw an error and it does not, does not allow you to save that. So that's it for today. If you have any question, let me know in my comment section. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Directly P1 incident cannot be created. So let's understand today's requirement. Um, so somebody is saying that if somebody trying to create an incident which is P1, right? In that case, we don't want to create that incident. Okay, so let's do implement that. So if I go back to that incident module, under this incident module, we have a, a priority and priority calculate based on impact and urgency, right? So this is the priority and this priority is uh, calculated based on that impact and urgency. So if you see that impact is one and then urgency is one, then priority is one, right? So what they are trying to say that if the priority is one, we should not allow them to create the incident into the system directly. To implement that, um, um, what we can do, we can write the business rule. So let's do that. First, we'll go to the business rule module. So the objective is that if somebody trying to create that, we, we won't uh, let you create that, okay? So we'll go to that uh, business rule module here under the system definition i'm going to create a new business rule and this business rule will be on before business rule because before creating that we are going to stop um, allow them or uh, before creating this incident we will validate and stop creating them right so that it will be during the insert uh, table will be incident we'll put some name let's do that one by one and then advance it will be before Let's put the name called okay. Now here we can directly uh, uh, let's first select the table. Then. All right. So this is the P one. Now uh, we can directly put the filter condition here. Uh, for example, you can select the priority equal to uh, one. Else, we can write this directly in the code. 
under the action we have a checkbox called award action we can directly implement that and using that we can implement whatever requirement they are looking for but as it is a scripting class i am going to write in the script first requirement or first things they are saying that if the priority is one right so how do we check that priority is one we'll say that if current dot what is the field name of the priority the priority field name is that backend name is also priority if current priority equal to equal to one then we are going to stop restricting or stop creating them before that if we want to put some message called gs dot add error message we can put that we can show some message like you cannot create p1 incident directly okay so this way we can actually uh, check that whether uh, i mean this, this way we can show the message and then how we can stop them right to stop them we can simply write one line of code called current dot set about action in bracket we can just mention the true so if we push that current dot set about action equal to in bracket we, if we pass that true system won't let them create any uh, incident so let's save that so let's understand one more time in the script we are validating that if current dot priority equal to equal to one will show a message and will will not them create the incident the similar functionality can be done by condition and then action under that we have a about action and we have a message we can do that but i am not doing as part of the scripting class now let's refresh that and try to implement or uh, try to create an incident with the p1 and let's see what is happening so we are going to select the caller call system administrator and impact is high urgency is high priority is one and let's put some short description and try to save that and you can see simply it is showing that you cannot create p1 incident directly and invalid insert and if we refresh that it's actually or if you see in the top it actually did not generate any c side it means that system simply ignored to database submission okay and it did not create any kind of incident in the back end so that's it for today if you have any question let me know in my comment section thank you very much have a great day in this scripting class if you are looking for this excel and you are not able to find out this uh, how to get this excel you can just go and visit my website called snowexpertroid.com under this you will get all the topics under that there will be a uh, section called service now scripting here you have a service now scripting and all these details if you click the requirement sheet you will directly get that link uh, to for this excel sheet so if you are looking for the excel visit my website snow expert rohit and there you will get that um, uh, docs and if you have any requirement you can definitely mention in this uh, requirement sheet and if you have not like share and subscribe please like share and subscribe so let's see today's requirement so today's requirement is pretty much similar to the last requirement like directly p1 incident cannot be created it is pretty much similar what they are saying that uh, from p3 and p4 user cannot directly set p1 but from p2 they can set as a p2 p1 so basically what they are trying to say that let's say that a incident got created and first of all incident cannot be created by p1 so that's the one case right so incident cannot be created by p1 so we are st strictly uh, prohibiting that Let, now let's say that somebody go and create a incident called p3 or p4 and they are trying to directly upgrade this p3 or p4 incident to the pre one we don't allow them we'll simply allow them p1 if somebody have a p2 incident they can select that uh, p1 so let's understand that so let's say i have an incident in this incident module uh, we have a incident so this is the incident right so priority three i can this p1 uh, this p3 incident i can go and uh, mark as a p1 right previously it was p3 and i can do that right simply put work notes and simply upgrade that that they want to restrict so you cannot directly upgrade your incident from 
P3 or P4 to P1. First you have to upgrade as a P2 and then from their P2 you should upgrade as a P1. So that is the condition. Right? How we can implement that requirement? Let's understand that. So last in last video, you have not watched my last video. I would recommend that watch my last video. Uh, the last in the last video, what we uh, do actually, we created a, a business rule called prevent P1 incident. So this is the business rule. In this business rule, this is a before business rule which is running on the insert. And whenever you are going to create a incident with priority one, we are stop or we are are restricting, restricting you directly that you cannot create that P1 incident. This business rule we are going to modify today. Um, so recommendation will be if you have not watched my past video, go and watch the past video. Otherwise it is a simple script. You can just check that. We are checking that current or priority equal to one. And if it is one, then we are stopped by, this is the message we are showing. And then we are showing that current dot set about action equal to true to restrict that creation. Now in this business rule, we are going to little modify. The first thing is that instead of insert, we are going to select the insta insert and update. So both the cases during the insert and update, this business rule will run. Now what we are going to do here, we are going to check or divide at that. Okay. So we are not going to create separate, separate business rule. We are combining those two cases together. So first case is that if this is insert, then they cannot directly create P1 incident, right? how we are going to check that this is a insert or the operation is insert, right? So first question will come that how we can validate that this operation is insert. To check that operation is insert, I'm going to declare a variable v r equal to op or operation. So current, then operation. And this is a function. So using this current dot operation, you can get the current um, uh, operation. Like is it insert or is it update? So first, if op equal to equal to insert, right? So if it is insert, we are going to do this condition. Okay. So I'll do a format else or maybe else if whatever we can say that op equal to equal to update then we are going to do separate functionality so in the same business rule we are going to update that the first thing we say that if it is insert we are validating that the current dot priority equal to one then we'll simply throw an error else if it is update what we are going to check that if first we'll check that the priority is one or not right so current priority is one or not if current, current priority is one and the previous priority, we should know that what is the previous priority. So to know the previous priority, we'll say that we'll use this previous parameter and say that previous priority is three or previous priority is four, we will stop allowing them, okay? And then simply in this bracket, we'll uh, put the same uh, thing. Maybe we can update the message. Okay, I'll do and format that. Let's understand the code one more time. So we have a two parameter when you create a business rule, current and previous. So first we'll say that current dot operation, using that operation, we'll get this operation. Now we'll check that what is the operation? Is this operation is insert? Yes. If it is operation is insert, we'll simply allow them if that priority is P1. So during the creation, you cannot directly set P1. Else, if you are trying to update that and your current priority is one and the previous priority was three or four, we will simply uh, restrict them that you cannot uh, create P1 from and then I will say that previous priority, like it will show that from P3 or P4. Okay. So let's uh, do that. So what we are saying that if your previous priority is P3 or P4 and current priority is P1, we will not allow them. Else we will allow them. So for allowing, we don't need to write anything. So we are just leaving as it is. All right. So this is our uh, case first. So let's check that so in this case if we refresh that in this case 
I have a priority. Uh, this incident is at that moment. Uh, first, we'll downgrade that. So there should not be any issues during the downgradation. From P1, we can downgrade to P4, right? So we'll select low and low. And then it's become P3, right? So we'll save that. So this is our P3 incident or P5 incident. So we'll include P5 also. Let's put that P5 also. P3, P4 or P5. So we cannot update from 3, 4, 5 to directly P1. So we'll say that P5 also. Okay, so let's refresh one more time. So this is our P5 incident and if we try to upgrade uh, P5 to P1, right, so let's say that I'm trying to upgrade that P5 to P1, it should give me an error. Let's save that. So I'll put and try to save that. And you can see I'm getting an error that you cannot create or uh, maybe we can put that uh, operation name. So we, you cannot create P1 incident from P5. So you cannot update or upgrade yourself from P1 or P5 to P1, right? Similarly, uh, if we want to, if I refresh that, you can see the planning value is right now 5, right? So if we update uh, to, let's say, we are going to set the value is, priority is P4. Directly from P4, we cannot upgrade to P1 again. So right now we can update from P5 to P4, but if we try to upgrade P4 to P1, we should get an error. So let's see that we are getting error or not. And here we are getting that error, right? So you cannot update P1 incident from the P4, right? So if I refresh that, the it did not actually save that. So you can see. So what we'll do, we'll first set that P2 and let's see that it is allowing for P2. So let's save that. So right now this priority is P2 and from P2 we should be allowed to set as a P1, right? So that's our criteria. So if we set and save that and you can see there is no error and it is allowing them to set as a P1. So that's it for today. If you have any question, let me know my comment section. Thank you very much. Have a great day. So in this video, we'll talk about that Sarivistov inbuilt functionality called Syntax Editor Macro. So in this session, or in this series, last few days we are talking about that how we can write the code, various example, real-time scenario we are discussing. But in today's session, we will talk about that syntax editor. So it is very important that um, um, side by side you are you know that how to write the code, how to implement that which object uh, in the service now, but also you should know the service now uh, features, right? So if I go back to, for example, if I go back to the business rule, for example, and I'm going to create a new business rule. So what I'll do, I'll go to the business rule and click the new, and I will be able to create a new business rule. Now here, if we click the advance and under that, we can write the code. And now using the help of the syntax editor macro, we can pre-populate or we can uh, you know, generate some code which is related to the service now. For example, we need to query certain table. For example, we need to query to the incident table or change table. And based on that, we need to uh, get the input and we can populate something like that, right? To, to do that, what we normally do, we write that var gr equal to new glider record, all those stuffs. Instead of that, if we simply type var gr, right? Normally what we do, we do the var space gr, that new glider record, all those stuff. Instead of that, if we just type var gr, and press only tap. So once we press the tap, you can see by default service now can generate this code for you. So it will generate that here you need to push the table name, you need to give that field name and then value and you will get the result here. So service now have the functionality using the macro or syntax editor macro. Service now have a functionality that regenerate or auto generate some predefined code that is defined under the service now. Similarly, let's say this is the query we can do, right? So what we can do, or uh, let's say that we can just type doc and then press tab. 
it will generate some predefined code like description parameter result so this way we can generate our automatically code okay now let's say that we want to do a or query for that what we do we will say that var gr or right and then press tab you can see automatically it will generate a or query like light record particular table this is that uh, field first field and our condition second field and then here it is while loop and it will generate a or query for me so i don't need to write or remember all these stuffs in my, my memory service now inbuilt have a functionality um you know from here you can uh, just type couple of shortcuts and then once you do that it automatically help you to generate your code now question is that how this is coming or how if we want to modify or if we want to create our own code which is very reusable which is very mostly frequently used how we can do that ourselves or where these things are controlling right to get these details you simply go to this uh, syntax editor you have a call syntax editor macro in service now if you open the syntax editor macro you will have this uh, all six out of box functionality you can see and if you want to create your own you can definitely create your own right so for example we are using the var gr using the var gr we can automatically system will generate this code if we are using that var gr or system will automatically generate this code right so we can create our own uh, code or own syntax also for example i am going to build a new uh, syntax editor let's say that i will type that var gr get and press tab right what will be happen it will generate a particular table and then once we, it will generate the particular table after that you will be able to query to particular field or maybe it will be able to query to that uh, c side right to do that what we will do i'll click the new and then here i should put the name of this shortcut so what i'll do var gr get so this is my name and here under this text i should define that which text should automatically populate it for my case we are gr equal to new glide so g will be capital glide record and here i should populate some table name i don't know at that moment but i should populate some table name right so in the single quotes i'll put dollar and zero so it will be my table name next gr dot get so maybe more specific if gr dot get here i will pass the value and after that here i will get actually the value right so i will say that dollar and then one and here i'll get that my code okay or here i'll get or maybe um return something called gr dot name something any kind of code i have stored example for example this dollar zero dollar one will be a a placeholder where i can put some value okay fine i have created this syntax editor macro here now if i reflex uh, refresh this business rule and type this keyword called var gr get so let's do that so under advance if i type that var gr get and simply press tab button it will automatically pre-generate some of the code and you can see these are the code it's generate here i can pass the cis id here i can pass the table name and it will return some name so if you are using or frequently some code you are using you can define under this syntax editor macro and then you can simply press that shortcut and press tab button it will automatically generate that code with some uh, if you want you can put some you know uh, predefined uh, you know sample text or any kind of uh, message if you want to pre-populate you can define and it will automatically generate your code so you don't need to remember whole code it will automatically service now can automatically generate that code. Uh, again i will recommend you not to try this because if you keep practicing keep trying your code by in your hand it will um, 
easy to remember um, as many as time you are frequently using that code. But if you want to use this functionality, you should use this syntax editor macro. So that's it for today. If you have any question, let me in my comment section. Thank you very much. Have a great day. So let's understand today's requirement. Only admin should be able to see resolution information tab. The table name is the problem. So let's understand one more time. So what they are saying is that we do have a problem table into that service now. So if we go back to the problem table and open any problem record, we have a tab called uh, resolution information tab, right? So if I click here, we have a resolution information tab. So what they are saying that only admin should be able to see. So um, others should not be able to see. This could be a different requirement in your set. Maybe problem manager only should be see this tab or maybe for specific role, this uh, tab should be visible, right? So in our uh, class, in today's sessions, we learned that how we can fetch the user role into the client side and how we can hide the particular section to uh, from the client side. To implement that, first thing that what object we need, right? To hide and show what normally we use, we use the client object, like client script. And uh, we are going to use the method called g user and then g underscore form to hide and show, okay? So let's do that. So the method will be client script. When we should check that, whenever the form is loaded, so the type will be onload. And then we are using the g underscore form and g underscore user method. So this method, these two method you are going to use to validate this one, okay? So let's implement that. First, I am going to client script module and in this client script, I'm going to create a new client script onto the problem table. So name will be table will be problem table. Type will be on load, UI type will be all. Here, first we are going to validate that user have the proper role or not. So user have admin role or not. To check that, what we'll do, where is role, I'm declaring any variable. And then you can see, uh, I'm going to use that G underscore user. Using the G underscore user, we can get various information, right? So we'll check that has role and then put enter and bracket we need to be provide the role name so we'll say that admin and if you see right now it's a gray color means this variable is not used anywhere right so i'll say that if is role true then g underscore form dot section set section display here we have a two parameter you can see the first parameter is the section name second parameter is the display so if you want to hide the display we should pause if you want to hide if you want to show then we set true so let's put that what is the section name we should know that so let's find out that uh, section name. what is the backend name of these sections let's find out that so what i'll do i will uh, open that sys ui form table in that case uh, the table name is the problem the view is a default view so we'll open that one under that we have a various section the third section is the resolution information we'll open that one and then this is the resolution section if i open that resolution section we have a caption. See, this is the caption. This is the table. And here we have a field. So we'll copy this name resolution information. Simply I copy this uh, information. And here I will, I'll put this bracket. And you can see the first parameter is the section name. And second parameter is the display. And type is a boolean, right? We should pass that true or false. True means it should be visible, false means it should not be visible, something like that. So in the first parameter, we'll pass this section then called resolution information. Now here is the thing, how we can pass this section name, that service now uh, have a different structure. You cannot put like this as a section name. 
and definitely not as a space. If I uh, uh, open this a uh, problem ticket, so this is a KV article that is provided by service now that some um, some frequent user are getting issue to setting that uh, set section display and here the resolution is that if your section name is called section 4 is here something like that first thing the section will be in a small letter then that after that we should put the underscore and then after that we should put uh, the second thing in a small letter but if you have more than that like more there is any space i mean more than uh, this then you can put that all in a single letter like here four is here and is there any special character all will be strike out if there is any special character so in our case what we'll do we will put that r in a small and then here i'll put underscore and then i in a small and then after that i'll say that false and then here I will put not required. So it means that if you are not admin, so this is written true or false. If it is a not admin, I am putting not, then do not show. If it is admin, I am not doing anything and then it by default it will be shown. Let's save that. And if I refresh this section as an admin, this section should be visible. And if I scroll down, you can see this section is visible. Now if I impersonate some uh, user called problem coordinator and refresh that so they don't have admin access and they are supposed to uh, not see the resolution information let's see and if I scroll down you can see they are unable to see this resolution information anymore so that way you can hide and show this uh, section so that's it for today if you have any question let me know in my comment section thank you very much have a great day for critical priority font will be bold and background will be red the table is problem so let's understand today's requirement the so today's requirement is somebody asking that whenever your priority of this problem ticket will be critical um, then in that case the the font will be bold and then background color will be the red okay so let's implement this requirement so if i open this um, service now instance and if i open this problem record at that moment And there is a many uh, problem ticket right now. Now let's say that um, I will open the priority equal to critical. So priority is critical. Now if I open any of this priority which is a critical priority that uh, background color should be red and then uh, this priority font will be this priority font will be bold. So let's implement this one. To implement this one, I am using that onload client script. So object I am using that called client script onload. And then method I am using called uh, g underscore form method. So in the g underscore form, we have a various method. I will use the get control method. So let's do that. First, I'll go back here and then write a client script. Here, I'll create a new one. Then here, I should put the table name. So I'll put the table name equal to problem. And then here, I'll say that set back color. Type will be on load. And then this will be all. Now here, first thing first, we need to check that priority of this problem. So first, we'll check the g underscore form using the g underscore form dot get value. We can specifically get any particular field value, right? So we'll check that priority, right? So this backend name is the priority. We'll check that priority, and if priority equal to equal to one, then we'll make this background color equal to uh bold and then red color right first we'll check that it is going to this block or not so i'll put alert and say that hi and save that so we'll first check that this um, block is getting executed and going to that block only or not and you can see i'm getting a high message it means that it is going to that uh sections 
Now, how do we make this background color equal to red? And then how do we mark this font equal to bold? That we'll do that. First, we'll do that. We'll say that where we'll declare a object called where object. And then we'll use that g underscore form dot get control method. And in bracket, we'll pass the field name. Our case, the field name is the priority. So using the get control, we'll return or system will return us a HTML object. So if we put a alert in this object, you will see it will it will show as a HTML component. Let's save that. And if we refresh right now, you can see it is giving me that object HTML uh, select statement. It means that this is kind of um, you know that client script have a capability to get or select particular object like we do that called document dot get element id similar kind of thing we can do right now now to set the background color we'll say that object this is the object name then we'll do the style then we can use that background color so we'll say that background color and any color we want so let's say that i'll put the red one and let's save that i'll do a format and save that and if we refresh right now you can see this background color become the red one now how do we mark this is a bold to mark this bold, we can again say that obj dot style dot font font weight, and here we can say that bold. So if we do that, any kind of styling CSS styling, if we want, we can directly use that. So once it is done, let's refresh that. And you can see right now it is in bold and red color. Now, if I open any incident which is not in a critical state, let's say hi and run that. And if I open in a different tab, this should not have any red color. So you can see this is not a red color, but this one is a red color. So this way you can highlight or change any kind of style for any particular field for um, depending on your use case. So that's it for today. If you have any question, let me know my comment section. Thank you very much. Have a great day. If priority is critical, impact can be high and medium. For other priority, impact will be high, medium and low. And table name is the change request. So let's understand today's requirement. Somebody asking that if the priority is critical, impact can be high and medium. For other priority, impact can be high, medium, and low. And this has to be implemented on change request. So let's open that change request first. So if I go back to the service now and type the change and request and open all change, let's open any existing change one. So what uh, they are saying that if priority is critical, so if my priority is the critical, right? So if somebody selecting and creating a priority equal to critical, they cannot create impact as a low. For them, the impact will be show as a high and medium. But if the priority is not a critical, let's say that high, moderate, low, any of this case, in that case, their impact would be all high, medium, and low. So the point here trying they are trying to say that in something if somebody is selecting a critical priority they should not uh, this low options the low drop down option has to be removed or hide and for other other critical this has to be visible as per uh, the system so let's implement that for this one i am going to implement a on change client script so i'll say that client script type will be on change And then I will 
use the g underscore form method again a g underscore form a different method so let's implement that to do that what i'll do i'll go back to the client script module and create a client script table will be change underscore request name should be anything you can put that okay so we'll say that um, set impact option type will be on change and ui will uh, ui will be all now here is the thing so if new value equal to equal to what they are saying uh, and again, we have to select the field name, so we'll select that priority. So if priority equal to one, so we if the priority equal to one, it will go to this block, else it will go to this block. Okay, we'll put some alert here, so alert call else block. Here also we'll put the alert call if block. Let's see our things is working or not first. We do format. Let's save that and see this is working first. Fine or not. So if I refresh this case, so right now, uh, so this is on on load and this function um, is not going to work as on load because this is on change client script but let's see that so if we change this priority to two so it should go to the else block but if we select the priority equal to one it should go to the if block and this is working as per our expectation so if i select this one it is going to else block any of these other value it is going to the else block but whenever i am moving that to this one it is going to the if block right so what we want actually if somebody select the priority equal to uh, critical right at that moment we should hide these low options right how do we hide that low option to hide this low option here what we will use that g underscore form remove options you can see this is the remove option and using the remove option we can directly remove particular um, you know choice value okay so first parameter is the field name and second parameter is the choice value so what is the first parameter of the field name the first parameter is the impact so we want to remove from the impact and then what value we want to remove we want to remove the low value which is backend value is the three so we want to remove the three value so we'll say three let's save that and save that if we refresh here at that moment so right now um, our priority is low and in that case we have impact equal to low but let's say that somebody select that priority equal to high and it is going to the else block and still is showing the three option but let's say that i select the practically critical and once i select critical you can see that low option is removed so low option is no more available you can see there is no low option anymore now if somebody revert back to the high and it's go to the else block but this still high up uh, the low option is not available we still want to show the low options if somebody change that value right to show this low option again what we can do we can write another method called g underscore form dot add options and here we'll say that the first parameter is the field name and second parameter is the value and third parameter is the level right so first parameter is a field name second parameter is the value and third parameter is the level so we'll copy this one and during the adding we should pass the label so let's see what is the level of that. So I'll refresh that. And label is three, then space, then dash, then low. Let's put that. 
3 space dash space low. So this is the A will be in capital. So this is the label. Okay, let's save that and that's it. So let's refresh that. And if we see right now, um, we have a high, medium and low. And if we select that critical, you can see high and medium. So if we select that high, now it have a three value called high, medium and low. If we select three, and you can see still we have a high, medium and low. Once we go back to the critical, and again, you can see high and only medium and if we revert back again to the critically prioritical to low we have a high medium and low so three options are available so let's save that and save right now so this way we can uh, you know it is working as per expected right so you can see it is working per expected now let's go back and set critical and we don't have high and medium right let's save that Once we save that, you will notice that you select that priority equal to critical and then impact equal to high. But this time during the on load, this um, this three value is coming still. This three is still showing. Why? Because this client script is on change client script. Whenever you are changing the value at that moment, it is working. But for on load, I mean, this is the on load. We have not changed the priority value and that's the reason it is not able to remove this impact. To work with that in on load also, what we can do, we can do like that. G underscore, here we can check that call where PR priority if, and then we can put the g underscore form dot get value here we will get that priority value directly we will say that priority all right and these will be little bottom after that so it has to be bought here so here we will check that if pr equal to equal to one so then we should be able to remove this option so this block, I'll do a format. So this block will work as a on load whenever the form is loaded first time. So this is work as a on load. So what we are trying to say, if the priority is a one, then remove that option. If the priority is two or I mean other options, so we should not add anymore because it's already there, right? So I'll just save that. It might be a little confusing. If you have any question, let me know in the comment section. But if you see right now, during the onload, it was not working. Like once we save that, after that, if we uh, see this drop down, the low option was still there. So if we refresh right now, let's refresh that. Priority is critical and then impact is high and medium. Low is not available anymore because we hide from there. Let's say I select that priority equal to high, then low and medium, high, everything is available. We save that. And once we save that onload, client script will run. But again, we have a low, high, medium, but if we select that critical and save that, this time low should not be available and this low is not available. So that's it for today. If you have any question, let me know in my comment section. Thank you very much. Have a great day.